So, the chairperson. Oh, chair of chairs. Yeah. How are you, my brother? I'm missing my brother so much. My brother has been committed from school work. Being good. No, I'm okay. No, I'm okay, my leader, man. I can't complain. Good to have you. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you. That honorable member has already briefed you uh, uh, about the committee that you've just uh, att attended now. Yes, 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 yes. I was worried, but I'm happy if you started at 8 o'clock. Thanks, thanks, George. Yeah, but on, it, on this committee, judging by members who said on the on the other committee, I'm not expecting uh, any other members who must still come from that other committee. Because it's myself and Honorable Mayor who sits in this one and that one. So can 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 we not take too much time in rounding uh, uh, around members who are not yet present? So like Honorable Khatebe and Honorable Deputy Chief, those are the two left. Yes, because Honorable both of them were not part of the previous committee. So I, I don't think we are waiting for them to connect and reconnect. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, but you can check them, it's fine. Just give them maybe five minutes. So that, uh, you know, it's Friday. Uh, there is a burden of responsibilities. Let's arise here, finally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, even saw, I even saw on the WhatsApp that she, she wants to go home today. She was asking Shelly there that day. <laughs> so... Let's not keep it. Uh, uh, everybody, good morning, Kabel Tabo, good morning, Chief Whip, good morning, Chief Chess, good morning, everybody who's there. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, 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 leadership. Morning, Sarki. And the only time, the only time you volunteer to switch on your camera, that's when you have dressed to kill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I don't think. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Uh, can I say that? Thank you, sir. Thank you. But time to meet you. Hi. Oh yes. Oh yes. But you must be careful, Mr. You saw the statistics. I have gone to 300 and something in Malubi. Really, oh, something much. Chairperson, I just am in the car. I just think I am going straight in the house. Yeah. I get a manga ganga. Kitaruma ba turban kela sitting. I get a sitting the car then. Yeah, yeah. You're not even gonna greet all my kilo and heaven. No, I'm giving them over the, the fence. Hello, hello, Muruti. Also, I'm next to the church. Hello, Muruti. Hello, Charlie. Yeah. Hey, don't, don't even go to church, Miss Sarah. They're saying it's eight no, they're, hours. They're my neighbors. I'm giving them over the fence. Oh, okay, leadership. <laughs> The new okay. yeah, developments are, are saying that uh, it stays for eight hours in the air in closed areas. Ah, come Eight hours in the air in that's why I give a brief in general. The 20 minutes in the sun is true and it helps because if I have vitamin C, it makes the body to be hot and fight this virus. Sometimes, if you are lucky, just when it was entering and the body is hot through ginger, lemon, you can be able to fight it. This is what the experts are saying. Now, the ginger, the office, eight hours in the air. It means partly it is airborne. That's where our worry is. That's why I'm going to happen in your bedroom. Or your sitting room you must open one window. Yeah. Mm. 
Now the danger is that uh, tear of chest. You still have uh, people going to work. You still have kids going to. That's why there's so much pressure in the social mm. media that mm. the schools must be closed. It is as a result of this development because mm. people now the anxiety is going very high. Or why then? But as you yeah, know, I... difficult issue for leadership. There must be a balance between uh, life and livelihood. Economy. People must still eat. Otherwise, they will die from hunger. Difficult Best conditions, misery hey. upon us. Hey, very difficult. start uh, can we start so that uh, we then rush for to complete our work today uh, let me take this opportunity once more to greet everyone uh, uh, <clears throat> and request that uh, honorable members we we have the prayers and meditation how is the number uh, may I request that all of us we we switch off our cameras and our mm, mics uh, so that we we mourn for those who uh, passed on due to this pandemic, uh, the bereaved families. We pray for them uh, as we heard that uh, this morning so many people have lost their lives. One of the people that we know is Conway uh, Dadabiel uh, Mukoto, who has passed on. We just heard that yesterday. Uh, we, we also want to pass my heart deepest condolences to the family. Uh, the brother of MEC Interpretate, also the people we know. And others that might have not been, that we might not have heard of them. So may we all bow our heads for a minute. Honorable Khatebe, can you switch off your mic? And welcome, thank you. Thank you, honorable members. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, let me welcome all the members, uh, uh, especially the honorable MEC uh, from the Department of Agriculture, honorable uh, Buluani. Uh, we share the same name, is William and William. So we normally call each other Brahma Willis, but in this instance, we must call each other by our positions. 
so that we show respect to the wealthy. Welcome, Honorable. Let me see. <clears throat> Uh, the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development uh, and his uh, officials and Taraj. Let, let me also welcome the AGSA. They've always been with us. Uh, also the Provincial Treasury. Uh, uh, my only worry was just yesterday. I never had a Provincial Treasury engage in National Treasury. I thought maybe we only trying to fight them alone. Uh, I don't know why Treasurer yesterday, or maybe they were happy with uh, some of the other items, uh, but it's fine. Let me also welcome all the officials present, our committee coordinators, Ntatem Rometsi, Mubakin, the legal advisor, uh, and her manager. My colleagues, Gabe Ramatiba, and Tate John Gay, Tate Sylvester is also with us, and other important officials who are here. Bongani, uh, also noted. I know uh, that uh, Meshe is not feeling well. Uh, today, we will also pray for him. More other hundred. This committee is working so hard. I'm sure all of us we know it is just the pressure, the pressure of workload. Unfortunately, it's one committee that is handling two, uh, uh, should I say, portfolios your finance and also your public account. So that's why we end up running. Honorable Khatere says, "Hey, committee, na gemuja It's not us. It's just the workload." Uh, Maybe I must also welcome Honorable Chair of Chairs. Uh, he has Honorable Wood, who is still uh, attending his school work and, and is one of the universities. He was writing a few days ago. Uh, uh, that's very important. Uh, members, maybe let me uh, remind <coughs> the, the committee once more. Uh, I always want us to reflect this tracking template, especially when MECs are here. Good morning, Honorable MEC. Are you here? Good morning, Chairperson and Honorable Members. The MEC is trying to connect. I just talk with him now. Oh, I wanted as I open this. Had, uh, he must be here, maybe listening. I don't know how long is he going to take. I HOD that the doctor, are you here with your staff? Yeah, yes, we are, we are here, Honorable Chair. The MEC is trying to connect. I just sent him the link again. <coughs> okay. Okay, HOD, thank you. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe let, let's then move straight to attendance in the meantime. Do we have any apologies in that term, Rometsi? Okay, good morning. Uh, good morning, honorable members. Good morning, colleagues. Okay, for now, we have not yet received any apologies uh, in, 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 with regard to ASEP. Okay. But, Sorry? Indicate if there are any. Thank you. Can I also check with the Auditor General's office? Do we have Matthew here with us? Matthew? Good morning, Chair. Um, let me just, ah, oh, there I am. I am here. Good morning, Good honorable members, and everybody present. Good to hear you. Um, uh, the Treasury, the Delmone, the Stephen, uh, do we have you in the house? Good morning, Chair. We are here. Thank you very much. Uh, you, were you here yesterday? I was part of the meeting, Chair, and I why had was, your... Why, why were you afraid of National Treasury whilst we are here? 
not, not really, Chair. We, we, we thought we'd give you space to, to give your, 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 raise your concern. We've been discussing these issues with them. Remember, even the issue of the initial 30 billion in our, in our meeting, we, we, we pushed back and we ended up with the 20 billion. But we, 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 not really, uh, we are really in agreement with the issues that you raised yesterday. So even in our other forum, we'll, we'll keep going on talking these issues. I think this issue of uh, with having the equitable share, we really need to talk about it uh, because, in my understanding, I don't know in terms of the constitution uh, because once they don't give out equitable shares on the due time, it has to be something that uh, I, I think we really need to engage around it because uh, everybody does as they wish at the national level and they make municipalities and other departments to suffer. I think it's one area that we we need, we really need to, to, to talk about it. Yes, I agree, Chair. We'll also uh, pass the message uh, to our AJOD. It's, it's one thing that we need to to really engage the national department, including our, our, our colleagues from the side of MFMA within Treasury. I think yeah. it, it needs to be discussed further. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Right. Chair, let me agree with you. Honorable Mayor. Honorable Mayor, we must be ready to mount a consistent uh, battle. Uh, yes, sir. 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 Yes, we have been constantly raising the issue, but it looks like it's not, it's not receiving a fatal crowd. Mm, mm. Now, the sense I'm getting is that it is as if it's a matter of the law. And that's why you, you, you find that officials of National Treasury, mm. they, are, they are unable to say much every time when we raise this question, including yesterday or day before yesterday. Yeah. So it looks like a, one of the... I'm gonna, some of the platforms that we we get an opportunity at national we've got to raise it and 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 fight mm. but you see the province must also be united mm. okay, so that in all the fronts we're able to fire all cylinders mm. the entirety of the national of the provincial treasure the mec when it goes to minimac he must be able to reinforce this battle by, by, by the committee, or the committee must reinforce it. Yeah. And that's where the battle has got to be taken to, at the minister level, including national NCOPs. Our NCOP representative must also provide to business and APC, so that all of us are then united and we launch battle from all the fronts. And then uh, I think only through that, that I believe that uh, we'll, we'll be able to uh, uh, win the battle or scratch the face or make an impression that indeed, for the state, including to lobby other provinces, Chair. Yeah. Uh, because every time we refer to the law, treasuries, the custodian of finances, they've got to pro protect finances. But our argument is that find a way to punish these officials, but don't disadvantage and victimize the beneficiaries who are supposed to be the people and the poor who mm. these things are intended for. Why people must suffer? What type of political leadership do we become? That people suffer because of officials. And I'm telling you, Chair, even if consequence management can be can be can be implemented to the lot, the situation is unlikely to change. Mm. Treasury will always have many other reasons why they want to withdraw uh, or withhold or redirect these finances. And they're doing nothing except to disadvantage uh, small, rural, uh, financially depressed, economically depressed provinces and municipalities. So I agree with you that committee has got to take a decision, and this program, we must agree about it and roll it out. Including that you at your level, Chair, you'll even lobby other chairpersons of portfolio committees in small provinces, because bigger provinces are not going to agree with you. They have capacity. If money is withdrawn, they can still be able to operate because they've got own revenue. I mean, how they, for instance, KZN, Western Cape, they're not going to agree. I'll tell you about the law. But small provinces, Yolimpopo, Northwest, Northern Cape, can, can be sympathetic to our call 
and this particular battle. Only in that concerted and systematic way, I think we can we can make an impact chair in terms of this battle because I know that we're raising it at every meeting and we look like we 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 you know we we, we are crying kids as opposed to rolling out a, a systematic political program and finally everybody should know the minister should know that I know that the state is bringing this irritation I know they are lobbying I know they are mounting an attack against uh, these pieces of the legislation to the extent that the national parliament uh, must reconsider it yeah no thank you honorable Fantire. <clears throat> Thank you, Honourable uh, Chairperson. Uh, my request is, Chair, that this discussion we're having now is a discussion for the committee. Uh, personally, I think we must start. Every morning we start almost 50 minutes after uh, 9 o'clock. And I think we can actually push this meeting a bit faster if we... I know I, Honourable Meek is getting cold and he wants to talk a lot to get warm up a bit, I know. But if we're going to leave him, he's going to talk the whole day. Please, please, please help us. Uh, these, these are important issues of the committee. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay, uh, we were just waiting for the MEC. That's why I was uh, asking. I, I think we are still relevant, honorable members. I know it's Friday, and all of us have got commitments, and uh, uh, we, will, we will push, we will push. Whilst you are you are stopping me not to go further with other things, I'm also going to do the same today. If members are asking too of too many of questions, then I will have that authority to say I'm I'm cutting you. So that that will be the, the order of the day. Uh, <coughs> Sorry to interject. Yes, I like your proposal. Uh, you remember the the meetings that we had with National? They actually give somebody two minutes or three minutes to so ask the question, two minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think we should also stick to that and have the, uh, that same uh, rule with us. Thank you, Chair. Okay, but that rule doesn't make us to cough out and say many things. That is why we have been defeated at national. I, I also want to challenge it personally, because we have so much to put on the table. Some of us, we can't you know, preamble correctly. You need to find a way how to put your fag. We are not the same as human beings. Others, they've got sharp way of raising points. Others, they take time. So I think personally, look, looking at the time, I respect that, Honorable Fontyren, but honestly, sometimes you must make a certain point so that people and members could hear. But I agree with you that we need to control it within stipulated time unless maybe we rotate two times three times give each two minutes then you are able to cough out every important issues thank you uh, i think it's important that we must all allocate time for for speaking uh honorable Tate Bulwani, MEC, are you here with us remember honorable members the MEC must 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 give us an opening remark if then the MEC is not here, then I'm going to request that we then move straight to the process of a legal advisor to then administer the rituals uh, so that when the MEC comes, at least we would have done other things. Uh, Mayor, Connie, or <clears throat> are you here? Good morning. Good morning, Chairperson. Um, Mayor Puseleso will be taking over for today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Mabu Seleto, good morning. Good morning, Chair. How are you? I'm good, and you? Good to have you again. Uh, can you take us along, Mayor Ramotiva? Uh, this is your platform. Uh, you will then talk to HOD, Kindade, Dr. Masite. Then we will then take you through. Thank you. Thank you. HOD. Good morning, HOD. Good morning, HOD, please guide me as to who will be taking an oath or affirmation today. Just check with him first how you are going to be part of. Yes. Who's part of your delegation, HOD? 
But the the, but the, the, of the, the delegation would be Mefrida, uh, the acting CFO, but I'm also with me, I have the IT uh, technical team. HOD, will you be taking an oath or affirmation? I cannot Senator, see. Senator, I know it's Friday, my daughter. <laughs> can you can you please ask the HOD who are the the part of the officials who are going to form part of presentations and discussions so that you take them? Chair, I asked him, and he said it would be himself and Mefrida. Now, I'm, I have a challenge. I cannot see him clearly. Now I can see him. Okay. Sorry, Chair. It's better. Thank you. Thank you. That's better. HOD, will it be an oath? Or an affirmation. It will be an oath. Please state your full names for the record. Do you swear that you will tell the committee the truth and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say so. Help me, God. So help me, God. Thank you, HOD. Mefrida. Morning. Good morning. Will it be an oath or an affirmation? An oath. Please state your full names for the record. Frederica Maria Dawson. Do you swear that you will tell the committee the truth and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say so. Help me, God. Help me, God. Thank you, Mayor Frida. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, honorable members, I think we must then proceed straight. Uh, HOD, can I just get indication if MEC is trying to connect? Is it wind or not as yet? Not as yet. No, 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 not yet, Chairperson. Um, we are also trying to check with him. He's still trying. No, no, it's fine. It's okay. I think uh, all members are aware that the MEC is trying to connect. Uh, <clears throat> then we can then shoot straight to you and uh, whoever is going to give us a presentation. May I request in the of our IT guru to flash it on the screen, or maybe if it's going to be you, that site, you can do that. The floor is yours, uh, Dr. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and honorable members. Um, this is this one. Yes. Uh, Chairperson, we will share from this side the, the presentation and I will uh, do the presentation, and the CFO will come in, uh, Chairperson, uh, with your permission. Uh, the first slide, Chairperson, simply deals with um, the, the presentation itself. Uh, that is um, the appropriation bill 2020-2021, Chairperson. Uh, and then the second slide of the presentation it begins to talk with um, the table of contents. I'm not going to talk too much about that. Okay. Then Just the third. Okay. The third. The third slide, Chair. It is. Oh, so, 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 sorry, Doctor. Sorry, HOD. Uh, Honourable Mesara. Sorry for disturbing you, Chairperson. I saw the HOD did not put mask and uh, he's not alone in that room. Uh, I and the social you. distance. The social distance is fine. The social distance is fine. But, but, Chair? 
appreciate that uh, HOD and the people are trying to be creative, but uh, it, it will be wrong that as a committee, we will allow them to proceed with this type of arrangement when there are inherent dangers. I remember the last presentation, the last address by the president. The HOD is not even listening. HOD, you are not even listening, and this is an important advice. Remember, Chair, that uh, when the last time when the president addressed the nation, he spoke about the probability of airborne in closed areas. Now, we, we must heed these advices and instructions. Uh, that may, maybe maybe we must allow the meeting to proceed, but caution the HOD and the department that uh, they must retrieve back to their offices with their respective gad gadgets, uh, because the danger now is that we have been warned or it can the virus can stay eight hours in closed areas. Uh, and that's why I was saying, Chair, it's just a small advice for them to reconsider. Honorable Sarah is correct. I'm talking about what the president has raised, not my understanding. Uh, thank you, Chair. All right. Uh, doctor? And we have made sure that there is enough ventilation. I have best advice that put in the mask and the, the, the screen face. Uh, so there is enough ventilation in the boardroom that can take uh, about uh, that can take about 16 people. <laughs> As long as you have complied uh, with the advices, uh, we I think we, 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 we can definitely proceed. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and honorable members. Uh, Chairperson, the first part um, uh, uh, that part deals with the opening remarks. I'm not going to talk too much about it because it's based on the history that led us to the subsequent um, uh, uh, request for the provinces to make a contribution. And as it, uh, as it is uh, clearly indicated, uh, as a result of national uh, treasury indicating that part of the funding for a package of 130 billion will be sourced from the baseline of the national departments and provinces. Therefore, individual departments were approached by the provincial treasury to make uh, the contribution to, to, the, to the request made. Chairperson, the, the other part that I think it will be important just to talk to is the, the fact that for the 2021 financial year, the departmental final uh, allocation was decreased by 5.8% on equitable share uh, allocation from the initial allocation. And as such, Chairperson, the department has received a budget allocation of uh, 712 uh, million in 2021, uh, 854 million, uh, uh, 903 uh, in 2021-22 and uh, 22-23 financial years, respectively. Uh, overall decrease uh, to the departmental fiscal allocation is 2.1 percent for the 2021 financial year compared to the adjusted allocation for 2019-2020. The, 
the decrease can be uh, attributed to the following chairperson. Uh, that is the 5.8 percent decrease in 2021 uh, uh, for equitable share, and the 8.9 percent decrease um, uh, uh, for the national conditional grants, 1.8 percent decrease for the provincial own uh, revenue, no allocation for the revenue enhancement uh, allocation share, and then the 66.1 percent decrease in the infrastructure. Uh, enhancement allocation. Jefferson, the, the, the other slide deals basically with uh, the, the summary. Move to the second slide. Are we seeing, are we seeing that, uh, that presentation is not showing pro properly? No, uh, I'm speaking to the IT guy. Okay. He's saying the presentation. Just ask the chair if they can the see. Chair, chair, let me just check because I've just received a message that the presentation is not uh, uh, clearly uh, visible. I, I think they can, just, they can just enlarge. I don't know if they can enlarge it uh, or zoom the screen. So good. Is it fine now, Chairperson? It's fine now. It's fine. Now. Go to the slide number five. Slide number five, uh, a chairperson gives us an indication in terms of uh, the cards uh, per, um, program. For instance, uh, for administration, uh, there is a cut of about 6% uh, from the original uh, allocation. And so it goes to sustainable resource, which we have encountered a cut of 6%. Um, pharma support uh, only one percent, and veterinary services only one percent. These are the main uh, programs, uh, chairperson, that uh, we are relying on, particularly when we do the implementation. So we could only do um, a minor cut on those uh, programs. I think, chair, it is also important to indicate that um, in as far as earmark funding, uh, there was a proposal to make a cut of. Um, from the disaster management, but however, we did not have the card. We have received uh, the whole six million for the disaster management, uh, but we also received the COVID-19 uh, 500,000 uh, from the provincial uh, treasury chairperson. Uh, the rest chairperson, there has been a card on the Momamogu and other uh, programs as such, but suffice to indicate that on the conditional grant as uh, indicated earlier, the original allocation was um, 176 million. There has been a cut of 19%, um, uh, and ultimately we only received the final allocation of 143 million. Uh, under Idima Nitzima uh, Chaperson, the original allocation was 68 million. Uh, there has been a cut of 25%, and ultimately we only received uh, 51 million. Uh, under EPWP, there has the, we, we didn't um, uh, encounter any cuts, and the same applies with land care. So those alloc allocations remain the same, uh, Chairperson. Now moving on to the to slide number six. Slide number six just gives us an indication uh, in terms of the uh, the graphical the graphs uh, on each uh, uh, program how the cuts uh, uh, um, uh, reflect uh, uh, Chairperson. Chairperson, moving on to another slide, slide, that is just an indication in terms of uh, when you make a comparison between the original budget and the uh, available budget. Uh, this is just, uh, we are just trying to elaborate further and demonstrate the, the cuts versus the, the original uh, budget, Chairperson. Uh, this, uh, this gives us an indication in terms of the conditional grants. As indicated, the EPWP and the land care were not affected at all. 
but the other conditional grants, the cash and the illuminism were definitely affected. Then, uh, we are now uh, moving on to 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 the to, to give an indication in terms of uh, the equitable share. Move on. Yes, next slide. In chapter seven, we look at the, the, the total budget of the department. The total budget is now 712 million, and the compensation of the employees is uh, 427 million, while the goods and services is 93 million uh, chairperson. And uh, below is just the demonstration in terms of uh, 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 the compensation of the employee, which consumes about 60% as well as the goods and services, which is about 13%, and the transfer and subsidies, which is about 25%, while the payments for the capital assets, it's about uh, 2%. When it comes to the program number one, which is administration, chairperson, this program uh, consists of the office of the MEC, the senior management of the department, the financial management, the corporate services, the communication services and the communication services. And in as far as that is concerned, Chairperson, uh, there is a total allocation of 161 to administration. And uh, also, when it comes to the compensation of the employees, uh, there is an allocation of 112 million. And when it comes to the goods and services, there is an allocation of uh, 27 million. Chairperson, when you look at the, 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 the amounts that we received from the provincial treasury, we have put it under administration. That is the COVID-19 for COVID-19 measures, the 500,000. But also for the infrastructure enhancement allocation, we have the 3.3 uh, million allocated chairperson. Now moving on to the second program, which is sustainable resource management, uh, with a total budget of uh, 50 million. Uh, and this program consists of uh, engineering services, land care, land use management, and disaster uh, risk management, uh, percent The total allocation then uh, is uh, it's, uh, it's 50 million. But when you look at the equitable share, we have the equitable share of uh, 33 million allocated to the program itself. Uh, and when it comes to the compensation of the employee, 30 million uh, is allocated as such chair, and the same applies to goods and services. But there is a breakdown that we have indicated. The pink one, the pink one is the, the equitable share, while the, the, the one below only demonstrates the, the conditional grants. And then under land care, as I've indicated earlier, we have uh, allocated the 8.3 million and then under EPWP, we have allocated uh, 2 million. The 6 million for disaster, uh, we have put it under this program. And the same applies to the infrastructure enhancement allocation of 916 uh, uh, chairperson. Moving on to the, the, the main program, which is farmer support and development. Uh, this program, chairperson, um, uh, it has got an allocation of uh, 317 million uh, uh, chairperson, but um, when it comes to the equitable share, we have uh, allocated 808. The, the, the 317 is inclusive also of the, the conditional grants. Most of the conditional grants reside under this uh, program. Uh, chairperson, when you look at the for the for the, for the comprehensive agricultural support uh, program uh, grant. Uh, there is an allocation of uh, 22 uh, uh, million chairperson. This is a combination of, uh, because under the conditional grants, National has allowed the department to, to, to use the pillar there. There's a pillar called the extension recovery plan, which reside under the comprehensive uh, agricultural support program. And uh, as such, the compensation of employees is actually informed by, by, that, that, by that pillar. And also there is an allocation chairperson of um, um, under Ipima Litzema of about 4.7 million. 
and, and also there is a, an allocation under infrastructure enhancement of about 13.7 million percent. Moving on to the terminal services, uh, this, this program we have indicated that we only um, make the cut of 1% uh, compared to other programs. The program uh, consists of um, animal health, export control, uh, veterinary public health, veterinary laboratory services, uh, Chairperson. And there is a total allocation of 77 million, of which um, uh, the, uh, under the, the compensation of employees uh, is 72 uh, million per person, and the goods and services is 3 million. There is also an allocation to this program from the Comprehensive uh, Agricultural Support Program, which is the cost uh, per person of about 2.2 uh, uh, million. Under techno uh, uh, technology research and development services, uh, there is a total budget of 47 million, which has been un, uh, uh, allocated to the program itself. And this program consists of uh, the research as well as the infrastructure support uh, services. Uh, person, uh, under the compensation of employees, we have uh, allocated 39 million, uh, and under goods and services, we have allocated 1.9. And uh, as such, under infrastructure enhancement, we have allocated for the, uh, 435,000. Moving on to agricultural economics uh, budget uh, uh, allocation uh, for 2021, uh, we have allocated 12.8 million. And this uh, program uh, consists of uh, agribusiness development and macroeconomics and statistics. Under the compensation of uh, employee chairperson from the total allocation, we have allocated 12 million, and under goods and services, it's 695,000. Chairperson, moving on to the structured uh, agricultural training budget, we have allocated 30 million. This uh, uh, program consists of the tertiary education and further education and training. Uh, this is where uh, the Glen Agricultural uh, College uh, actually reside, Chairperson. Uh, under this uh, program, uh, Chairperson, we have um, uh, allocated uh, under uh, compensation of employees uh, 23 million, and uh, goods and services, we have allocated uh, 3.2 uh, million, Chairperson. But also, uh, let me indicate to the Honorable House that. Um, under cast, we have allocated 2.3. This has been reduced from uh, 9 million, which was originally allocated to 2.3 uh, million per percent. Uh, then moving on to rural development, we have allocated 9.8 uh, million, and this program consists of the development planning and monitoring and social facilitation. Uh, Chairperson, this fund under compensation, we have um, actually allocated 9.4 uh, million, and the goods and services we have allocated 408 uh, million. Uh, Chairperson, uh, in closing, uh, 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 the department uh, recommends that the committee supports the 2021 uh, allocated budget of uh, 712 million as was discussed in the in the presentation, Chairperson. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, HOD. Thank you. Uh, I think we'll have to take this opportunity then to request members to uh, ask clarity seeking questions, or uh, may I? May I note, uh, honorable members, who wants to come in? Honorable members, are you covered? I will come in, sir. Honorable Khatebe. Oh, sorry, there was there was a hand of honorable Fanfiren first. 
Honorable Conference, it will be you, it will be Honorable Khatebe, it will be Honorable Majake, and then it will be Honorable Chair of Chairs, Honorable Buti. Uh, I'll just note now, uh, I see one other hand, uh, Honorable Mepo. Those are the few hands I see now. Uh, members will just indicate as and when they want to raise issues. Uh, thank you, Honorable Confirm. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I've only got one or two questions. Uh, of its concerns, that's I think has been on the table year in and year out. The first one is Freda Dairy Project. I see there's another 20 million being um, budgeted for that. Uh, we've been to that project last year. Um, it's it's they, we still don't see any return for the investment. It's still not uh, um, a feasible project or self-sustaining actually, and that was the aim of the project. And still, the beneficiaries doesn't get any advantage out of this. How long are we still going to keep up with this? And uh, what is the purpose of just throwing money into a pit that's not returning anything? Then, Chair, the disaster relief is only 6 million rand. I did raise this with the MEC of Finance also. It's far too little money, seeing that we don't get any support from National uh, Treasury regarding um, especially drought relief. And we, if, if you look at the technology research budget, which is 47 million, and the structured training budgets, that's 23 million, I'm sure, I mean, it is important. But there's a lot of money that can be reprioritized toward disaster management. I mean, it, they, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, especially in agriculture. And I do not believe that the, uh, the, the, the reprioritization of money um, is done correctly. It actually should have been more focused on, on helping farmers as well. Uh, that's my input. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Confirm. Honorable uh, Khatebe. No, thank you, Carlo. I'm very. Uh, I'm going to be uh, quick and straight to the point. So. I like. I like your color today. Your colors and Mesara do match. Uh, you are. You are. You are. You have joined the uh, Honorable Majaki. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, uh, I'm just taking uh, what is called precedence from your tide. Uh. Yes, that, that, that's not the minion we are here. No. It's only the, no, the, the, the clothes that we bought. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Dr. That was not the light note. That was not the light note. No, thanks. Uh, Dr. Masiteng, in your opening remarks, you indicated that there are reductions to your fiscal allocation. Now, which are those specific strategic objectives that has been affected by the reduction? Are you able to briefly uh, give a detail of some sort uh, in relation to your annual performance activities that of the department that will never be met this time around as a result of your depressed fiscal uh, deduction. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it will be Honorable Majake. <clears throat> Thank, thank you very much, uh, we, uh, I want to join the uh, uh, Honorable Khatebe uh, to be short and precise. From, uh, from slide 10 to 18, oh, let's, let's say good morning, good morning to uh, HOD and the entire. From slide 10 to 18, you're basically noting today's committee that you spent more on people than you do in any other economic classification. More than 70% of your budget is spent on compensation of, uh, of employees. 
Can you explain why? And then lastly, Chair, I'm not sure whether uh, I should have asked this question uh, when uh, it was Department of Premier or, or should I ask this question on this department? I, 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 I heard of something like there's going to be a land distribution and all of that. If it is the agriculture, uh, what, what is going to be criteria? But if it is not the agriculture, we can just uh, avoid answering me. I, I will find a way. I, I just that I, I just remembered that thing now, so I'm no longer sure whether it's a premier's office or Department of Agriculture that will distribute land uh, from the budget presented by uh, MEC Brown. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable <coughs> Majake, and then it will be Honorable Chair of Chairs, <coughs> Honorable Muti. No, thanks very much, Chairperson, and thank you, Doctor, for a very clear presentation. Uh, I will only raise a few questions. Uh, the, the first one is re with regard to uh, small emerging uh, farmers uh, who are Africans and, and, and Blacks in general. Uh, what are the interventions in so far as the budget? Because now I, I could see there is a budget cut there, uh, and clearly there will have to be a, a reprioritization. So can can it reflect directly and speak to our own black people without mincing words? Our own African people who are in Kwakwa, in Mutsabelo, and elsewhere in the province, who, are, who have suffered se severely out of this COVID because of uh, uh, economic dynamics that are brought by the COVID-19. What is the direct intervention in that particular regard, some were, 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 were even studying um, to, to run their farms and so on and so forth. What, 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 the budget, let, can the budget speak clearly around that particular question? Because these are the majority, uh, these are the masses that myself and the rest of honorable members in this committee are representing. So we need to know about them, uh, what is it there for them, so that we are able to communicate clearly and be properly accountable to them. And also the other question that I wanted to raise, uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, the department has complained about the 66% reduction on uh, the infrastructure enhancement uh, allocation. Now, my question is that uh, uh, how much related revenue will the province lose as a result of this reduction. And also, Chairperson, is there someone speaking? Oh, maybe it's the, just the frequency. Uh, I also need to check with the HOD whether uh, is he able uh, to detail the effect on the provincial GDP growth uh, caused by the uh, this reduction. And he must also speak to uh, the question of the uh, service uh, potential lost due to this reduction. Uh, that, that is a direct question, Chair, around that particular matter. But I also want to, 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 to check with regard to the disaster relief. Uh, remember, certain areas, there are certain farms that has not recovered uh, since the, that a disaster, that drought uh, era. Some were not uh, afforded an intervention at that particular time, even before this COVID. COVID is a, it's a new pandemic altogether. Uh, before the COVID, there was a drought, uh, and there were uh, farms that could not get uh, that uh, incentive as an intervention. So I need to know how far is the department in that regard? Are you still continuing to identify those uh, uh, casualties and, and trying to assist in that particular regard, particularly in the district of Lejuelpuzo here and Mufuzanyan? Uh, I've, I've, I've noticed, even if you are, you are just driving 
uh, traversing through these farms and the land, length and breadth of, of this district, you will see that not many farms have uh, harvested. Most of the farms there, you just pass by the uh, dry uh, grass and uh, dry land. Because under normal circumstances, you would know there are certain areas that you, where you would know already. by this time, uh, they should have been ready now to harvest. So many farmers were not able to plant as a result of this challenge of a, of a, 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 a national a, a drought uh, that they faced. So I also need clarity in that particular regard. And also on the question of uh, empowerment of, of young people, especially uh, the 30% that uh, as government uh, we have committed uh, how far are we in this regard what is our readiness in terms of allocation around this particular budget uh, in, in addressing that particular question because these are the burning questions that uh, are, are being uh, raised all over uh, Chepese in the province the, the clarion call by young people throughout the province it's very sound and alarming. Uh, we seem not to have been doing much. It's only now that they were appreciating what uh, MEC Makalo has attempted to do, even though it's not sufficient. So we are relying on the Department of Agriculture. You know, that's where the food basket of the country uh, is derived. So it is through this department that we're expecting really, Chepese, uh, that an economic impact uh, will be uh, 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 demonstrated. So I, I really want to, to hear the department speaking much. It's a pity that the, the, the MEC uh, did not manage to log in because some of these questions could, would have received a clear uh, perspective and context through his opening remarks as a politician, as a, a political uh, 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 figurehead of the department. Uh, and a person who's responsible to also ensure that the manifesto of the ruling party finds expression in the department. So unfortunately, we could not uh, be able to connect him. But uh, I have confidence in the HOD as a person who's well conversant and, and well informed about these realities. So I would really need to get clarity in that regard, because for now, farming and agriculture brought in the province, it, it, it still reflects the outlook of a, a racial question. When you speak of agriculture in our province, even in the minds of many people, you still speak of white uh, farmers, you still, still speak of a, a, a sector that is fully dominated uh, by, by white farmers. And I'm not being, <clears throat> I'm not speaking out of context, I'm speaking in the context of the, the social transformation we seek to see, to, to advance in this province. Can, can the budget speak not only in figures, but it must also inform, uh, uh, reflect this uh, 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 transformation that we, we want to achieve. The budget must speak to the transformation. It must be clear, because figures are, are rhetoric, rhetoric and abstract. But if it could speak directly to say certain millions of rands are dedicated to young African emerging farmers, then we would know where, where uh, the budget stands insofar as the social transformation is concerned. That, that's the answers that I need to, to know. That's why <clears throat> other honorable members would speak with confidence to say, can you ensure that you rescue uh, the white farmers on a particular challenge? It's because they are clear. They, uh, there is no political orientation that exists in vacuum. It always has uh, a particular context. So can the budget at least be elevated to that particular context? It must speak to the, to, to, to the, race, the, the race question it must speak to the demographics because the young people who happen to be the majority who are now unemployed and loitering in the street uh, must see themselves in that particular budget. 
So can can we get at least that particular spirit and and and, and form, uh, Chairperson? It's my uh, it's my humble plea. I appreciate what has been presented thus far, but can we now then speak to the reality? On whose interest is this budget? We must speak to the question of class interest. Uh, obviously, the the capitalist. Uh, 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 will always see themselves in the budget. It will always speak to, the, to their continued uh, welfare uh, and, and privilege. But now we want to raise a question 26 years later into democracy. On whose interest is this budget? Is it speaking to uh, the ordinary farm workers there who, who can't even access uh, the simple essential uh, the PPEs, who don't have all these things, the masks, the sanitizers, uh, the incentives, uh, they can't even access the uh, uh, health services. It's difficult to even go to, to, to town. These are the exploited people who are there in the, in, in, in the farms. So I'm saying, can the budget, so that as we speak about this budget, because we want to have to debate about this budget later on in the House, we must speak with, with confidence. So can, can we be assisted in this regard? Can the, can the budget now be clear in terms of identity? What does it represent? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Churches. Uh, Honorable Meku. And I see also Honorable Jackson. I see your hand. You've come after Honorable Meku. I, I, I suspected that Honorable Jekyllson will be provoked. <laughs> and that Honorable Messara has been taken from you. Um, Chair on a lighter note. You come yeah, after Dr. Jekyllson on a let, 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 let me. Sorry, Chair. Can I start? Yes. Um, I'm giving a question here. Yeah, let me ask it. Uh, the, the department is noting a reduction of, of, of 13 million in their equitable share, of which 8 million share of that 13 million is from administration program. The provincial treasury told us as a committee uh, that the reductions were reduction made were specifically from non-core items uh, and largely were non-essential travelings. Our question, Chair, is what makes up the reduction of these one million in the administration program? Um, and are there critical, is there critical spending that has been affected? That, that would be number one question, Chair, as prepared directly on the technical issues of the, of the uh, budget. Issue number two, Chair, I think that we, so, so, that, so that we lay the, this matter to rest, we, we must ask the HOD to comprehensively unpack all matters relating to uh, the disaster fund. Uh, beyond the technical process of the application, on their behalf, Chair, the committee has taken both the provincial and national treasury to task about the matter. Uh, but I think it will suffice that the department gives us their perspective of the issue. All factors that uh, characterizes this matter from beginning till the end. Uh, because my, my fear is that without this clarity, we are continuing to interpret it 
different depending where you stand, which side of the fence you stand. And I think it 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 does not have to be like that. There ought to be clarity, which uh, must then guide the committee and the province chair. What happened to the issues of drought, uh, the issues of a, a, a pandemic is also a disaster. Uh, what is the understanding? I hear Honorable Buti says the allocated money is very small, or Honorable Evan Firen, it's, it's very small. So maybe a broad perspective will, will help us, so that emerging out of this interaction, Chair, there's clarity which is going to guide all of us in how we must engage the matter. The department would be briefed, or the information that they're giving us at the level of this committee and probably many other committees becomes the basis and our instrument to engage national becomes our weapon. Now, it is important that information must be comprehensive, must be sufficient so that we're empowered, uh, other than just to understand issues. Of course, it is our responsibility and role to understand why certain things are being done in the manner that they've been done and, 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 and how, what is the role of the department on that. That's number two. Number three, Chair. Honorable Boot is correct about the location of agriculture in the economy of the forest state. Historically, and I think even now, it remains the mainstay, the lifeblood of the forest state economy, Chair. For this economy to move, historically, it has been mining and agriculture. Now, with the decline of gold, uh, surely the, the, the role and the contribution of the mining sector has gradually become minimal. Uh, and, and agriculture, and of course other tertiary sectors also contribute a lot, but agriculture remains the mainstay. If we are to get this economy correct of the province, our focus must be agriculture. I don't want to provoke Honorable Jekyllson further. Honorable Putti did that to talk about uh, the political economy of uh, agriculture. I don't want to go there, Chair. I think uh, uh, the matter has been sufficiently raised. My, my annual, Chair, is that as government, we have a program to consciously and deliberately develop uh, black commercial farmers. We are doing so for reasons that Honorable Booty has unpacked, and I don't want to waste time. Um, now, we know, Chair, that uh, COVID has exacerbated and exposed the structural challenges of the economy in the province, including from the point of view of agriculture. And we also know that during COVID-19, agriculture was a critical sector which was not in, in lockdown because of its uh, uh, responsibility of providing food. But we want to understand, Chair, how has COVID-19 uh, economy, in terms of how we understand it, has impacted on this program? the development of black commercial farmers. To what an extent have they been affected in a positive and negative way? The fact that uh, agriculture was not closed, did they benefit? Or it was a continuation of the structural challenges that we know about the market politics or no? The big fish continue to, to dominate the market, took advantage that the country was desperate for food. Uh, and part of our response strategy had to elevate that uh, risk stop job. Food must not be curtailed in terms of your shop right and so on, which are obviously sourcing these products from agriculture. Have the black commercial farmers, which is our delivery program, to what an extent have they been infected? And what, where in this budget are we talking to that? My passion, Chair, has always been a, a bonta deva masaki. Forgot 
how, how do you call it in English? They will help me. Or as part of, as, as an area of black commercial farmers, uh, what has been the issue there? Remember now, Chair, that uh, funerals are limited to 50 people. And I'm just making a far-fetched example. And as a result, my observation is that many families are discouraged from buying cows for funeral. Uh, I don't want to argue issue of the culture, but I'm just saying, surely it could go a long way to disadvantage because I think that's where your your King, your communal farmers are able to do their trade in the May. They don't make it the chair go the auctioning. President specifically spoke about the auctions. And I think to a large extent there, our black commercial farmers would have been salvaged to welcome, but the communal farmers. Or if they can't sell to their direct consumers, which is a, a your majority of the cultural activities, because no board chair buys a cow for a price, but we buy a cow for in the main, you know, your cultural activities. How have they been affected, and where does the budget uh, locate this particular issue? If indeed the effect and the impact has been negative uh, in terms of uh, the, the the black uh, uh, commercial farmers, Chair, th those will be my questions. Thank you very much. Uh, honourable members, uh, I'm getting an indication from other members that. Uh, let, let's keep to time. Uh, I don't want to cut members because my belief is that this, this, these interactions are, are, are very important. Uh, and, and, and I must also remind, remind honorable members that uh, uh, we are here for two things. One is to make sure that we change the lives of our people to and make sure that everybody accounts to his or her own work. I think it's important that we must remember those uh, information. Uh, Honorable Dr. Jacobson. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I'm not going to react to the provocations, which it seems people deliberately put out there and even <laughs> mention it. But I do know the difference. I do know the difference, Chair, between a political economy and ideologically and racially loaded rhetoric, so I'm not going to respond to that. Yeah, I just have a very simple question, a very simple question which is very similar to the questions of Honourable Miko and Honourable Buti. Can they perhaps just tell us on the whole budget, what percentage is allocated to, to um, subsistence farmer, farming, what percentage is allocated to emerging farmers and what per, what percentage of the budget is allocated to commercial farmers that we can put this um, discussion to rest. Thank you, Chair. Uh, honorable Chair, uh, uh, sorry, I, I wanted to say, Honorable Dr. Jacobson, you, you said it, it's subsistence farming, imaging farming and what? And commercial farming. Okay. So it's subsistence, emerging, and commercial, those three sectors. All right, thank you. Honorable Nessana. Chairperson, I to indicate to, uh, one thing. Uh, I wanted to understand it clearly from the department, uh, from the HOG or not. Is it really true that uh, the department did not budget for the draft uh, relief? Uh, because uh, the, the treasury nationally treasured uh, uh, provincially that he so we want to be very clear uh, from him. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And uh, now I really support the, the, the budget. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we will then be considering the, the will then be considering the, the, the appropriation bill. Uh, before I give over, let me also just uh, ask one or two questions very quick. Uh, HOD, I have, I have phoned the MEC and he is still struggling, but I've requested the MEC because we can't deal with these processes when the political principles are not here. 
I've spoken to the MEC and I've requested the MEC that your IT must at least connect him through the phone because this process needs the political principles. Uh, we can't allow uh, the political principle not to, not to, this is a compliance matter. It is not an issue where we are interrogating. The, this is a, a compliance matter that deals with the budget process. So, so I have I've just requested that uh, at least uh, assist the MEC to connect him through a phone so that he, he, he inputs uh, and says something. Otherwise, we won't do justice to, the, to, to this compliance. Uh, <clears throat> the issue of the free the day. HOD, we went there as a committee. And what I know is that on the matter of beneficiaries, there was no meeting that continued between the committee of an oversight, which is PROPEC, the department and the community and the beneficiaries thereof. We really have to deal with this matter of free dairy once and for all. Two, free dairy is a possible vehicle to turn the economy of the free state. And the more the department is delaying in um, implementing and making sure that these facilities or whatever that are there in the farm works, because we were told that there is a company which has been appointed to do the, the, the mentorship or something. Can I humbly request, is that, that the MEC is not here? Maybe he's listening. He will assist us. Can you speed up the process of the freight? Freight daily, from my own view as a person of South Africa, it's a better solution to assist our own emerging farmers to get a footing in the industry of farming. So it's important that the department must deal with this matter so that we are not being viewed as a committee which does not do its oversight. We have made recommendations when we were on site, and I was hoping by now the department should have at least given us a written response to all the issues which were raised when we were at Friede. Because return in investment is very key and important for the economy of the province and South Africa. Now, the beneficiaries thereof, they have been crying to us, and I'm appealing to the department once more. We can't be spending more money into these facilities when we don't have a vision of making sure that this a pro a project does run efficiently as it is expected. And that is why that is why always always provoke members committee members would want to see that project moving, but I am not a guru in the industry or in this field of farming. We only rely to honorable members who knows the farming sector very well. But I am humbly, humbly requesting the HOD and the MEC to ensure that uh, they bring the report back to us as a committee because this matter has now reached the level of commission and we have been cited there as a committee that we must one day will be called, we don't know when, but we must be able to do our work as stipulated by the Constitution in ensuring that we play our oversight, we come up with the recommendations thereof. It's either a recommendation that says the, 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 the work was not being correctly done or the work has been correctly done. Those who might have misused the time we really need to deal with this matter of daily. We want and we support that project. We want to see it running and being able to help our own. As Honorable, Khatib, uh, Honorable Chairs of Chairs was saying, 
African blacks in particular, as we call them, the emerging. So, so it's important that I must just illustrate on that one, so that when we give us answers, you are able to tap on that. And the issue of this subsistence, emerging and commercial, it's very key and important. The province must really look into these three spheres or categories. We can't be calling our people emerging, emerging forever. We've got people that are emerging forever and ever and amen. It can't happen that way. We want to see young farmers. We don't have young farmers that are really being supported in the free state. Unless HOD is going to give us names. And even if it's not now, we really need those names of those farms that have been supported and been supported with money, not imagine those that might be, I don't know at which level, because there are three levels that I was told now. But we can't, Honorable uh, uh, MEC, to have imagine, imagine, imagine. We also want uh, women, women farm, farmers. Who are they? are they? Are they really getting market out there? And who is dealing with this issue of market in the department? So it's important that all those factors we deal with them once and for all because the committee have agreed that we are not going to allow any department to keep on taking money to support these programs whereas we don't get or we don't see any return in investment. That on its own will propel us as a committee to come in and investigate the monies that have been spent into this project and what they have done. Do we see these things on the ground or we don't see them? And if we don't see them, why? So, so we are going to take a turn. And that is why I'm appealing to, to, to you, HOD, and your officials to try and work hard so that we have good results for the province, as we know that we are a hub of, of the agriculture in, in the country. Thank you, HOD. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, and thank you very much, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, uh, Chairperson, let me start first with um, the, the issues uh, Honorable Padabe raised uh, about the, the, the issue of uh, the reductions. Uh, and uh, the impact as such. Yes, uh, indeed, um, uh, as a result of the reduction, we have uh, to go back, we are actually compelled to go back, uh, also reprioritized, and uh, we were compelled to come to the conclusion that there will be no new infrastructure project uh, for this financial year. And the focus will be mainly on the production. We will focus mainly on the, the initiatives that deals with, uh, with production. And also we were compelled to go back to our APP and look at the targets that as a um, uh, I think uh, from the conditional uh, grants that we have received, what we did was then to say, remove the infrastructure, but make sure that you don't affect the products that are dealing with production. So the allocation which was made to the infrastructure projects, we then ensured that we don't affect the projects that are... Um, that are due to be operationalized and uh, the, the production in general, the farmers that are going to plow and plant and the farmers that are going to, to be supported with um, the livestock. That was the take. Then ultimately, we managed to ensure that um, no farmer who was um, expecting support on production is affected as a result of a uh, um, a card that uh, we encountered. That was uh, the, the position that we took um, uh, as the department. But yes, indeed, there has been a serious uh, impact and some of um, the target that uh, we set for ourselves 
were definitely um, uh, affected uh, Chairperson. Chairperson, let me put it like this. Um, as it stands now, we are mindful of the fact that the court has ruled that the project um, is now uh, under the, 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 the management, under the Department of Agriculture. And uh, we were just making the calculations now, the free dairy project. And uh, per annum, it is now generating a 2.2 million. That is the money that is generated from the dairy itself. Uh, but however, Chair, you will recall that the, the court ruled that we must make sure that we operationalize the project and we make sure that it benefits or it achieves the intended objectives. And therefore, there were certain things which were uh, sort of highlighted, appoint the, the mentor to look at the issue of the feasibility, to look at other commodities that, uh, that will make sure that uh, the project actually benefits the intended um, a, a, a community. In fact, it talks about the community of the free MML and what Sorry, just to interject, let's welcome Honorable MEC. I can see that uh, he has just joined us now. You, you are welcome, uh, Honorable MEC. <coughs> you can continue. Oh. Thank you very much, Shuki. Thank my you. Apology, my gadget were not willing to cooperate with me today, but my apologies. Thank you. Thank you, MEC. I had the same problem yesterday. You are welcome. Uh, you can continue, HOD. Thank you. Okay. Now, thank you very much, Chair. Chair, uh, as, as I was saying, now what we did as the department, we then went out um, uh, in an attempt to implement the court order. We went out on tender to test uh, um, uh, any uh, willing company or uh, firm and so on to assist us to ensure that um, we develop the feasibility study as directed and also implement the commodities that would make sure that the community uh, benefit. Chairperson, that happened just before the lockdown. We did receive, there was a clear cut, a closing date, but when we, did, we then analyzed, we could tell that the, 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 the tender was non-responsive. We have only three I therefore requested that, look, we have to re-advertise because as it stands, it is non-responsive uh, 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 chapter set for the appointment of a, of a, of a firm or an individual who will independently look at the, the whole issue of uh, the feasibility chapter set. We want to do it correct. We don't want uh, to take any shortcuts chapter set. We are not in the business of farming. So it is also our intention to make sure that it goes to the intended benefit, uh, beneficiaries. And as you have rightfully uh, indicated, it also benefits not only the people around, but also the farmers um, who are in the milking uh, 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 industry. Chairperson. So that is the, the position. Remember, the other thing that the MEC did was to go there physically himself after the committee and met with them. Uh, uh, let's call them the, 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 the intended beneficiaries. And also, Chairperson, you would recall that we have been clear in saying the process that led to that was not a uh, procedural. However, it is not the intention of the department to say, no, beneficiary X, you are out, beneficiary A, you are in. Therefore, what we did was to say, we have to set up a meeting, they have a committee, they met with us. We also communicated with them two weeks back. Because of the lockdown, we couldn't meet. Our intention was to complete the process by now, but we were afraid because some of them are above uh, 60, and uh, we were conscious to say we can't have a, a meeting with them now. But we have discussed two weeks back. We will uh, also uh, check us and make sure that we finalize that process. It is uh, the intention of the department to finalize that process of the beneficiaries. It is the intention of the department to make sure that those that are already in the uh, daily industries are already benefiting from the project itself. So we are, we are, we are, we are working uh, very hard to make sure that we achieve the objectives 
Also, what has been recommended by the committee chairperson and also the board itself, we are that the allocation itself, it is precisely to deal with them. So that when we say, here is a, a, a business now that is running, that is operational, we have covered on all the things that have been identified. We don't see that, we don't, we don't leave a half big uh, sort of a project. That is the purpose of uh, the allocation. But like I have said, on average, currently as it stands, the project is, uh, is giving uh, a treasury a revenue of about 2.2 uh, million per annum uh, chairperson. Chairperson, yes, indeed, this has been a, a concern. The challenge that we are having when it comes to the compensation of the employees, when you do the cuts or you do whatever, you don't cut on the compensation on the, of employees. It affects your, your, your running costs. So always uh, you will have a situation, the percentage, uh, this is, I'm dealing with the, the issue that was raised by Honorable Majaki on the 70% of, um, of the compensation of, uh, of the employees. That is the challenge that we are having, uh, Chairperson. That is why at some stage I was saying, even if we can have maybe vacancies, but the, the, the ratio as it stands is such that you are not compelled to fill in. You must always reprioritize and check whether it is necessary or to move internally uh, the officials that you are already having. So the cars are eating more from your uh, running costs and they don't eat on the compensation of the employees. So the compensation of employees will always be high until we reach the stage where we are saying no more um, uh, uh, employment, but um, uh, if you, you lose a person, whether by resignation or whether by whatever means, you don't appoint. Therefore, the ratio will take you to 60, maybe 40 or, um, or, or 40, 60 percent, which will be a much more uh, normal uh, uh, ratio to person. But we are, we are mindful of that and uh, we are waiting on it. We are managing it uh, internally to say we need to reduce. There was a stage when we were talking more than 80%. It is not conducive. Because ultimately, you'll end up having officials who are only doing little uh, uh, person, but spend most of their time uh, in, in offices and so on. And we have conditional grants for that matter. The conditional grants do not come with the running. They are saying provinces must make their own contribution on the conditional grants and see to it that they implement. You have 200 million, you don't have money to, to implement uh, the 200 million. That is embarrassing. That is why we are trying to manage it. But yes, uh, 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 Honorable Majaki's observation is correct. As it stands now, the ratio is a little bit um, higher on the compensation of employees. And I believe it's a, it's a problem uh, almost all over the country, Chairperson. Another one, uh, 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 we raise uh, 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 fundamental issues, Chairperson, uh, that deals with um, the whole issue of, say, the budget. Now, I think uh, this issue, I would um, uh, combine it also with what um, uh, another one may raise on the issues of um, uh, where the budget uh, is going and so on, and whether it benefits and what is our position and so on. Chairperson, as like I've indicated, when it comes to the conditional grants, yes, we have encountered the, 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 the reduction, but what we did on the fundamental programs like the common age development, the 11 towns that we have identified to make sure that uh, the conditions there are such that uh, people can be able to farm, there is water, there is fence, and so on. That one, we have made it a point that we don't affect. So the way that that program stands and it will be implemented as such. We made the reductions on other uh, programs, but we didn't touch that one. That one deals with the 11 tons that um, uh, uh, the NEC has identified and said, let's tie on on this one. Let's make sure that... Um, we deal with the issue of the infrastructure so that people can be able to be in production. And also, let's, let's uh, um, check our veterinary services, focus on these areas to make sure that um, whatever uh, technical support that is given to those farmers, they also produce uh, uh, animals that are in good conditions.
that are not um, just eating plastics, that are not uh, being not not being vaccinated, and so on and so forth. So that is it's a comprehensive plan that will also deal with um, the animal health program and the production uh, program. Chairperson, the other thing that um, we did was to say already we have a mechanization program. Remember, if you affect the mechanization, but you are talking production, you won't be able to be in production. That program that deals with the mechanization uh, support to the to the to, to our farmers. We said, don't touch this one. Let us leave it as it is. Let us make sure that we continue to support our farmers with the mechanization. So those are, are some of the, the programs that we said you can't touch on this one when you are talking uh, support to the farmers and when you are talking. Uh, ensuring that our farmers are uh, remains in the production streams. So those are the key pr uh, programs that we said we are not going to touch. We uh, we also said don't touch on them uh, on the support that we are going to give to the farmers that are going to produce to the farmers that are going to receive livestock. So we didn't touch on those one chairperson despite the cut that has been uh, put in place. We only touch other. Uh, programs that are dealing with the, the, the infrastructure. And that was precisely to make sure that also on the food security element, uh, we, don't, we don't touch that much. Yes, we have uh, made uh, some cuts because the amount that was given to us compelled us to also touch where we don't want to touch. But we agreed that for food security, you can't touch uh, as it stands because you must make sure that there is food availability uh, there's food accessibility at all uh, 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 times, Chairperson. Uh, so the food security program, uh, we have touched, but we have made the point that uh, it remains. And also the program that I have um, uh, talked to. As it stands, Chairperson, if you look at the, the projections and so on and so forth, only the agricultural sector is showing the positive. Um, if you look at the production, the, 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 the the production chairperson. We are talking other sectors are now running at negative. And I think it's honorable people who are saying the mining is declining. It was showing a negative um, uh, uh, stance. Agriculture was showing a positive stance of about uh, 8%. And, and as it is now, it's showing a positive stance of about uh, 4%. The only sector that is showing that um, it can indeed uh, contribute and assist us um, in, in boosting our economy. So we, 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 that is why I think there was a decision to say, leave agriculture, because it is a, a, a essential service, leave it as an essential service. Uh, that has assisted a lot, because it happened, the lockdown happened at the time when our farmers were moving towards harvesting. So some of the disaster, uh, the COVID-19 disaster relief, it was meant actually to assist our farmers in ensuring that they don't get affected when it comes to their to, to the harvesting and so on and so forth, Chairperson. So 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 Chairperson, I think those are some of the reasons, and as such, we are making sure that um, uh, um, the sector remains um, uh, uh, positive and it contributes as such to the economy of our province and ultimately to the economy of uh, of, uh, of the country. Yes, indeed, um, uh, Chairperson, the drought has um, affected us seriously. And uh, um, what is interesting, some of the farmers uh, deviated a little bit and opted for the livestock instead of uh, 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 grain production. But some decided to say, look, I am I'm continuing with uh, uh, the production. And indeed, they have uh, I visited some of the, 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 the farmers, and the PC also visited some of the farmers. They did very well. They are going to, to harvest uh, even though we have uh, encountered some serious uh, drought, and uh, even though there was a fear that we might have a, a serious um, a, a drought. Chairperson. So there is that balance. Uh, our target was uh, 900 and and actually 9,111, uh, but we managed to achieve close to, to, to 7,000 uh, chairperson. When the hectare rate is that um, uh, we were targeting to, 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 to plow and plant uh, chairperson.
Chairperson, um, on the issue of, um, yes, I've talked to this one of the infrastructure enhancement, um, the empowerment, Chairperson, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the youth, the women, and the people with disabilities. Uh, this is what um, we have always been saying, and this is what we have always um, maintained within our SCM uh, uh, unit to say, look, whatever we are doing, there is always a 30% that um, uh, is sort of uh, being targeted to support mainly the youth, the women, and the people with uh, disabilities. And as such, we have uh, demonstrated in terms of the percentages within the 30%, how much must go to, to, to people with disabilities, how much must go to women. And as we are reporting, it's a, it's a sort of a compliance issue. We are also reporting uh, uh, in a, as uh, this type of So we are always... HOD? Yes, Can we get that list within three days? that is showing the empowerment of 30% on women, on youth, and on disability. Can we get that list uh, within three, I mean, three days? I'm sure the Secretariat will, 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 will make a follow-up on that. Thank you. Yes, Chairperson. No, thanks a lot, Chairperson. We will definitely do that. Um, uh, I've talked about the contraction, Chairperson, uh, in as far as uh, the GDP is concerned. Um, and also the decline and so on. Uh, Chairperson, uh, I think the issues also raised by uh, Honorable Mepo, I have tried to touch on some of the issues, but I think it is important to indicate that, yes, indeed, the province was affected by drought. And as such, we made an application. We developed a business plan, we submitted our, our business plan. We complied uh, in line with uh, the regulations in terms of what is expected and in line of the, uh, uh, with the Disaster Management Act of 2002, Chairperson. But what happened is that when uh, the, the assessment team uh, visited the province, it was around April, and it was at that time when we received uh, uh, rains. Therefore, they concluded, Chairperson, that the first thing, you have enough rates, and as such, they didn't um, uh, make any allocation uh, to the province. They said, we don't fall under that category. But we made an application. We also showed them. We even made a breakdown to indicate. And if we don't get the support, this will be affected and so on and so forth. The, the, report, the, the response that we received was very simple. And that was to say, you don't fall under the, the cloud uh, category. Therefore, nothing was allocated for us. It's not to say we didn't apply. We made an application. We followed the processes. We even submitted to COPTA. Because in terms of the, the disaster management, the, the custodian of the disaster and so on and so forth, it is COPTA. They even gave us a letter which was showing us that we have submitted your business plan we have submitted your request. It was not only agriculture. It was also other departments. Because of the game, this year made an application. Because there was drought, there was a challenge of now the wild animals end up going to the mud areas, uh, lack of water. So it also made an application. Education made an application. Um, uh, 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 I think was, uh, social development also made an application. Almost all departments, we combined our report and we submit as such a, a chairperson. Yes, um, a, a, a chairperson, indeed. Um, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, also, we made an application on them. And there was a disaster relief fund, uh, which was provincial, which were all provinces were, were requested to participate on. And uh, we have made a, a request on that one. Um, and as such, uh, 389 uh, farmers applied and they were approved as such. But that was not the only number that applied. There were, we had about more than 5,000 uh, applications which were made. But because it was a lockdown and some of the farmers are farming from the communal areas, 
the tribal uh, uh, areas of the Tabantu. The, um, the tribal uh, authorities and offices, they were closed. So they couldn't touch uh, other documents which were required, which is the argument that the ANC advanced to the minister and said, let's face it, it happened at the, at the time when we had a lockdown. Some municipalities were closed, letters were requested, and so on and so forth. So the process was reopened. And as such, we set aside from the Illimanetima a 5% from the allocation to say, we must address uh, these challenges. Because uh, quite frankly, some of the farmers, it is not because of their own making, but it is because of the circumstances that were prevailing at that time that um, uh, made them not to apply. So the process has been open. We have managed to assess 3,300 uh, forms a day, which we then identified as, um, as, uh, as possible. And uh, like the ones that we are saying, uh, most probably these ones they can be supported. I think by next week we'll have a clear indication uh, in terms of um, uh, supporting them uh, uh, chapter seven. Those 3,300 uh, plus the already approved 389 uh, chapter seven. And um, uh, uh, I think on the on the of uh, the, the categorization, uh, there is an issue that is raised by Honorable Dr. Jackson uh, on smallholder farmers. Um, the smallholder farmers, the subsistence, as well as uh, the commercial farmers. And um, I was just checking now with um, the CFO. I think this one, Chairperson, is another issue that one can maybe uh, just go back to the to the to, um, uh, to the allocations and provide this percentage. But the one thing for sure, uh, Chairperson, more than 60 percent is uh, going to the subsistence and the smallholder farmers. Only little percentage is, is actually going to the commercial sector. Because the commercial sectors, in most cases, what they need is more technical. Uh, on the issues of the export, the export certificates, on the issues of the veterinary services advice, it's more technical advice than uh, the actual financial uh, uh, advice chapters. We have not moved away from the uh, program of uh, black uh, commercialization. We have, um, we have engaged other uh, stakeholders. In this case, I'm talking about uh, Bank Chairperson, if you allow me. We have also engaged the University of Free State. We are now talking with the Central University of uh, Technology. We have entered into a memorandum of uh, 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 the memorandum of agreement with them. Precisely to say, this is a program uh, of government of making sure that we commercialize black farmers. But the commercialization side of it, it is not only financial. There are other elements that we are looking at. It deals with the issues of the research. It deals with the, uh, the, the other uh, the social issues and social aspects. And uh, we have begun to realize when we were working closely with the standard because they are assisting us with the training and the University of the Free State to then say, look, these are other elements that one must actually take into consideration when we are dealing with the issue of commercialization. But yes, indeed, we are still continuing. Uh, they are taking 25 uh, per annum, uh, the, the program itself. Uh, we are giving them 25 per farmers. They go through um, a training uh, a program uh, what the department is prioritizing uh, dealing with uh, their issues of uh, uh, support uh, chairperson. So we are still into that program. There are those that um, you are excited. There are those that we are beginning to calculate them as uh, graduates. But unfortunately, the unfortunate thing of the sector, you can be commercial today. Tomorrow, you are a smallholder again. You have been hit by the trout. You have been hit by the outbreaks of the diseases. And uh, it is something that is um, not understandable. But it's a reality within the sector itself. So there is always that up, down, up, down. But we are pushing them. Uh, there was a category of saying um, we have uh, the, the, the commercial and uh, the entrance and so on. We said, no, we cannot talk. Uh, 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 we cannot have categories like that. That's what I have um, 
uh, a category of commercial, but we will be able to classify them accordingly. This is brought about by the realities out there of farming. Uh, because it, it, it's something that we cannot control, but also nature uh, plays its part and uh, takes its course. Up. Listen, uh, I've dealt with um, the issue of um, uh, this uh, subsistence, smallholder, and uh, commercial chairperson. Uh, uh, chairperson, I must indicate now, I want to say the issue, which was raised by Honorable Sir. I missed that part. There was an echo. I could not hear it clearly, Chairperson. Uh, I thought that even asked uh, my colleague here what was the issue about, but we couldn't, um, we couldn't hear clearly what was about. But yes, Chairperson, in your remarks, then we have the Agricultural Economics uh, Unit, um, uh, and the MEC talked uh, about it to say, look, we need within the unit the graduate that we are having. We must also, also see to it that this unit, the agricultural economics, really deals with the issue of marketing. Even if they can have to put other things aside, but focus on the marketing. Because, Chairperson, what happened is that I think this also talks to what Honorable Mego raised. Some of our farmers were affected because now, more especially the vegetable farmers, you have down here. Nobody is going to the fruits and veg uh, markets. You have a farmer who has produced um, a number of uh, uh, heads of cabbage, spinach, beetroot, and so on, which is ready for harvest. Those farmers were affected by uh, um, the, the farmers were in grain. They, 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 they were not that much uh, affected. Because remember, those ones, they are also smart in keeping and then wait for the price to be good and then sell. But the vegetable ones, they were indeed uh, uh, affected. And that calls for an element of what? An element of apropocracy. Uh, because if our infrastructure was such that um, it enables them to, if we have produced and um, uh, there is no market, then we can process. And when the market is available, then you go for it. So those are the things, Chairperson, that um, uh, we were discussing with the MEC and say we need to make sure that um, this marketing unit completes the chain. Um, uh, that is why we are also looking at uh, uh, this uh, Blue Point uh, Market Center to say this center must actually assist the farmers that um, support it and take the produce from there. And the whole issue of uh, uh, our processing value lady must also uh, must must now begin to take its course, and we must begin to make sure that um, we realize that um, uh, that uh, target, that objective, which is also um, found in our growth and development strategy. Mm -hmm. person, um, uh, I'm, I'm still uh, worried about the issue that I've not dealt with, which came from uh, Honourable uh, uh, Sir. I didn't catch it at all, Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Messara, can you maybe reflect it back and then so that I give over to Honorable Fanfiran? Chairperson, I was just referring to the issue of that to refer to the question they apply or not. Because the treasury national treasury provincial they are taking different stories. And um, provincially they said yes, uh, the inspector did apply, but the national uh, it did not apply. So can you clarify that to us, please? Okay. Uh, she was relating to the application, the application that was made on, on the drought relief. I think you, you did touch on it, probably. Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, thank Chairperson. We, we did indeed uh, apply and we followed all the processes. Unfortunately, the committee that was uh, making an assessment decided that uh, we don't fall uh, uh, within the, the, the category as such. 
there was no allocation which was uh, made to us. But I think, Jefferson, I can also highlight that despite that, the NEC has written a letter to to to, to the Honorable Minister, uh, Dr. Sisulu, uh, requesting uh, uh, to say, look, we have developed a business plan. We have met with um, uh, the municipalities, the farmers who are still struggling, uh, and the municipalities transporting water to them. There are farmers who are in need uh, of water. Let's look at it and uh, we have also submitted the business plan to them. And I think yesterday we have received a confirmation that uh, what the minister, what the NEC has written to the minister uh, is receiving attention as such a person. It's not to say that because um, national did not approve, then we pulled our arms. No, there has been uh, other processes that um, we have followed and the NEC has followed in making sure that uh, we, we, we attend to the issues of drought in the province and Chairman. Okay. Honorable Van Furen, thank you, HOB. I just saw your hand. <clears throat> Chair, thank you, I'll cover. Thank you. Thank you. You're fine. Thank you. Uh, HOB, thank you very much. Uh, my, my only worry is that I, I don't know when uh, the department will, will come up with the methodology of addressing the problem you have raised is that uh, because of the natural phenomenon in terms of affecting the farmers who are still emerging, uh, you said sometimes they are affected by many things, droughts, uh, no water, sometimes no rain, and it affects them not to grow. But my worry is that the, the department must find a formal way of how to support these farmers, you know. They, they should find a way of putting more budget just for supporting a mechanism. For an example, if there, is, there should be more uh, uh, on, 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 on other ones that they do farming, in, you know, they only plant, they, they don't deal with livestock. There should be a form of a support, but how, I don't know. But I'm sure we'll, 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 we'll come in uh, as a committee to just to find out uh, uh, how that solution could, could be obtained. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if members also have follow-ups. If they don't have, I think uh, we... Okay, Honorable Chair of Chairs, Honorable Buti. Well, no, thanks, Chairperson. <clears throat> Chair... I'm one uh, frank and, and honest uh, uh, being. Our, the question regarding clear locations right from the imaging uh, up to the highest well-developed farmer, allocations in terms of finances, that question has not been responded to. Uh, I can ask you a, tip, a simple question. If your constituency can ask you today as to out of 800 uh, million, how much is it allocated for uh, emerging farmers? Uh, and so on and so forth, according to a variety of categories. You won't be in the position to respond to that. And the budget must be as simple as that. It must be directly, uh, as I've said to the demographics, uh, the youth must know out of these millions, how much is directed and dedicated to their own development. The budget doesn't say that. Uh, but it, it reaffirms the status quo. It simply speaks about uh, reassuring those who are currently developed, who are, are historically uh, developed, who are in the main regarded as the productive farmers. Yes, they will be productive because historically they have been resourced and supported even before 1994. And it does not speak about new entrants into the market, which is the, the, the revolution we are waiting. The reason for you and I and everybody there, uh, for us to be here. It doesn't tell us or give hope to say, uh, despite these natural phenomena that are faced by uh, emerging farmers, what is it that we are doing to introduce more new entrants into the market. 
What are we doing? You know, Honorable Meko even went to town in, in, in citing very pragmatic examples to say uh, people who are living there, uh, who are dealing uh, with these young commercial farmers, uh, who, I don't know what do they call that thing, uh, but it's a small scale uh, livestock uh, breeding. I'm not good with those terminologies. It's not my field of discipline. But who relies on our own people buying these cows for ritual purposes? There's no clear, there's no clear intervention. You are only told about 11 towns out of a very a budget of that magnitude. What are we saying about the rest of other areas where our people are experiencing a challenge where due to COVID today, and you have noticed that funerals are no longer slaughtering cows today. But those who are still participating in that market, the one that we normally call fantis, are continuing to thrive. Business is, is, is doing, is, is blossoming there. They are still able to go and compete and trade and do all that because they, they, uh, they meet, the market for meat is in high demand. Mar these ordinary people in the townships are not able to compete at that particular level. With five cows, what would you do there? And also even we coming to the question of free the day. I don't think the uh, directive of court was saying undermine or turn a blind eye on the readily available feasibility study that was done. Remember mm -hmm. the issue of Friday was at an advanced stage. Mm -hmm. Basic things were done, beneficiaries were identified, all the necessary fundamental work was done there. And the verdict doesn't say, come with a new feasibility study afresh there. I, 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 I don't think that is the interpretation there. You know how many millions will be spent in that process? Just to, that's why there are no bidders who are coming uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the front. But let's, let's reserve that issue for another day. The ProPEG will still have to make its own inquest on that matter and all that. Because my fear is that we are, we are giving an impression that what was done there so far, it's absolutely corruption. Even even where there were concepts that were workable, where there were lists that were right, and so on and so forth. I don't understand this thing of a new feasibility study that must be done there, a service provider that must be appointed to do that thing there. Uh, Chairperson, it's my concern. Let's re let's re shelve this match. But I, I, I maintain the point that I raised earlier on. We are not getting a clear answer as to Whose, whose interest is this budget uh, uh, advancing? Where are our people in these figures, uh, Chairperson? Because even, even in the previous years, we were still dealing with a very small fraction there. Now, if we are told that they will still continue, when they speak of township, they only speak of 11 townships. Under a severe circumstance that our people find themselves within, I'm not quite content, Chairperson. I'm not happy. You and I, we don't have answers for the people of Kwakwa and Batsabe. If this is the, the budget that we must go and persuade them uh, uh, to rally behind Chairperson. The ordinary people in Harib, a, a dry area, even under normal circumstance, Harib remains dry. You, you can imagine what is their uh, situation under this current budget, Chairperson. I, I'm, not, I'm not happy. Um, can the budget speak to, uh, scientific, to, 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 to science, Chairperson? It must speak to, to about the people. We must know which area, how many people, what is the focus of the department in this financial year? Which area will be our, our, our pilot project under this particular budget, Chairperson? But for now, it speaks about those who are well off, those who are productive, people who have insurances, people who are affiliated in the associations, your service and other things, people who are secured for that particular reason. It speaks about them because they are, are part of the uh, uh, people who are, are productive and so on. What 
are we doing as government to activate those ones who can be productive, who can produce? Because the budget mustn't be in the interest of those who are who they, they have. And then it speaks nothing about the have not. It's government who must intervene for these ones to be in an in egalitarian uh, 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 society. We want that equity, Chairperson. And clearly the budget knows it speaks to people who are surviving. Why can't it tell us about statistics? How many people have made application in the department? How many are going to be assisted out of this, this budget? I'm, I'm really not happy because agriculture is the life of any nation. If you can plan whatever you like there, you can be as good uh, with whatever that you want. If you don't, you, if people driven, I'm telling you, we will be poor having been surrounded by all these farms, having our people being shepherds of all these, these livestock that are there. I'm, 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 I'm not convinced, Chairperson. Can, can, can the department not just assure us in, in abstract? It must be direct and be specific. Budget A will empower Raboman Chepese. But one Zimbabwe will empower you already. That is, that is a simple question that I wanted to raise there. And it's very sad when these things happen under the lead, our own leaders, the people that we entrust, uh, entrusted them with our support. We have went through hell supporting our leaders. You know how controversial this department is. How we've been slaughtered. That's why you will not hear opposition challenging this budget. And you and you you will know that Chairperson. Whenever a thing is not in the interest of the majority, it is in the interest of the minority. You will not get opposition on on that particular matter. It will go smoothly as it happens today, because it is not in the interest of the majority. Our people are looking up to to this department for survival, Chairperson. This day, I will not do anything. To only speak of tax shops and all those things. Uh, that's why in Botswana today, people are marching uh, that uh, foreign nationals must go out and so on. Even if they can go out and we can occupy those tax shops, if we are not in charge of of agriculture and its budget, if our people in the farms are not mm -hmm. benefiting, those who who are in the uh, livestock business are not getting their support. Uh, that thing of the tax shops is as good as nothing, Jefferson. So I'm not happy. This budget is not speaking to us, but it's maintaining the status quo. That is my concern, Jefferson. I'll be listening uh, for the response on this one. Thank you, Jefferson. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair of Chess. Honorable members, I'm just going to make a plea. You see, if we are going to treat our work as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, when it's Friday, every member must remind me that it's Friday. I am not going to succumb and agree to that. We are doing our constitutional mandate, and the Constitution doesn't tell us when it's Friday, we must not do our work. So I am trying by all means to give each and every honorable member to raise this matter. The Department of Agriculture, honorable members, it's the heartbeat of the free state. That is, when we talk about different types of commodities in every province, we pride ourselves with agriculture. That is why I wanted to give enough time to members to raise these matters so that we, we write down our recommendations to the treasury of the province that more budget must be set aside for this department. Now, members are phoning, members are phoning, WhatsApping me to remind me that it's Friday. Honorable members, I am not going to allow that because members have decided that we must make meetings on Friday. If members think Friday is important, let's not have sittings on Friday for committees. And, and that will be, that will, so now I feel bad because it's like, I'm allowing other members more time. I'm not allowing other members more time. And I don't know how to chair my meetings now. Can I be, can I, can I be, 
given that responsibility, whatever mistakes I'm doing, because I'm still in the process of learning. This is my first time in the parliament, and I'm trying my level best to acquaint myself with the proceedings. So I am humbly begging members, please don't, don't kill me. I'm just a messenger. Honorable Van Piren. Thank, thank you, Chair. Now, I agree with you. You must let the members talk and express their concerns. Uh, the problem I've got with this is that you, this is becoming a political uh, uh, meeting now. Uh, the honourable members and the, 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 the honourable Booty said the opposition is not talking about this. Now, let's talk about this. It was very clear. Perhaps you should just listen to what the HOD said. The HOD was very clear when he said that uh, emerging farmers and subsistence farmers get more than 60%. So it was clear. Maybe he didn't hear that part or he left the room for that minute or two. But it is very clear that this budget... Listen, I didn't, focus, I didn't know, know, interrupt him when he was speaking. Uh, he can speak uh, afterwards. Uh, 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 interrupt him. Allow me the opportunity to speak without him interfering me. I've been listening here. I spoke about Honorable Booty, I will give you a chance to speak. I'll give you a chance to speak, Honorable Booty. My chair of chairs, I'll give you a chance. Can we allow Honorable Van Piren? Thank you, Chair. We've been listening to his political jargons and political statements the whole morning. He was repeating himself over and over and over the whole time. That's where I ask you to just intervene. If he, if he wants to ask something, let him ask it. But it's becoming a political thing now. It's becoming a black and white and uh, certain sectors and things. It's very clear that this budget focus in improving and enhancing emerging and subsistent farmers. And who's the subsistence and emerging farmers? We all know. So the commercial farmers, the guys that's currently putting food on our table, the money doesn't go to them. So I don't know why he's keeping on, maybe it's because of, if we're on Facebook, maybe because we're on YouTube. Now he wants to, to grandstand before people and we all know what's happening. Yes, all the departments must get, must get more money. We must fight for that. We must do it. But let's focus on uh, where the money should be spent and that it's not uh, that we get value for money. But what he's doing and what Honorable Mirko did, it's all just grandstanding and he just wants to make a point and, and we hear you. Uh, but that's why I ask you, Jay, let him not repeat himself over and over. It, it took him 20 minutes just to say the same thing. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Honorable Booty? Yes, Chairperson, let me correct two things. Yeah, first of all, uh, Honorable Junkerson, uh, I mean, Van Fieren, doesn't have a monopoly of, of wisdom. He's not the one who has authority to, to define uh, what, I've been, what I've said uh, as to whether I should have uh, said it this way or not that way. To start with, I spoke about figures. He is now telling me that we were told about percentages. And this is not what I, I, I've asked out of the HOD. So let him not impose these views on me. I know what I've said and I've listened. I've been listening attentively uh, uh, in, in the response that we received from the HOD. He did not speak about figures. That's why I said it will appear as rhetoric. If you, if you speak of percentages, you have not spoke about, about figures. And issues of demographics were not touched. He himself, uh, uh, Honorable Van Fieren, he can't tell as to whether how much has been allocated to, to young people. He's generalizing that we all know that who are the sub emerging and subsistence farmers there. We, it's, not a, it's not a general knowledge. Here we are speaking under oath we, we are addressing the plight of the people. We must be clear and be vivid when it comes to figures and the demographics. That's what I've been raising. And as to, as to whether, uh, Chairperson, I, I, I raise issues that will directly or indirectly affect the issue of, of race. Yes, the issue of race is a national question. It's the core of our struggle. The reason we are fighting here is because there is, one race, uh, uh, there is a racial domination insofar as the economic rights of the economy are concerned. The issue of the agriculture, the issue of farming, it's dominated by race. So I won't be apologetic for, for raising 
a, a question of race as we speak about the budget of the people. So I'm not apologetic on that one. So uh, we need figures. Let's speak of figures. Let's speak of demographics. Let's speak of, of the issue of geography. The people should know which area has been targeted here. And these are not answers that are coming forth. So for a member to come here and try to, to co-chair with you, it, it's unacceptable. Hence, I raise a point of order. You just questioned us on the question of time, of members who are impatient, impatient and pushing you to, to, speak, to, to, to fast track meetings. He is doing exactly the same thing. Since when he's the one who must tell us uh, uh, what, what should be the time allocation on each and every member here? He must just uh, 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 resist from that particular temptation, Chairperson. I only need those specific answers. Then that's it. Honorable Churches, I am not going to allow you and Honorable Van Fieren to attack yourself personally. Can we respect the parliament and the people of South Africa and everyone that we might, let's not attack each other as we speak. Can we confine ourselves in the meeting? If members are out of order, I will definitely raise an issue of the political grandstanding. And, but so far, I have never had such instances unless we then don't want to describe the monopoly, whether it's black or whether it's white. And that is another issue at another level. But once members are raising the concern of the budget that is affecting the minority of the free status, and we know the minority of the free status, but in this instance, let us not be uh, 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 confine ourselves into politics. We are a committee of the legislature, irrespective of our political affiliation. We must fight for our people out there. Every person in this committee has got his own constituency that he or she must fight for. If we are now fighting for a budget that is going to affect our constituency, let's do that. Honorable members, please. Honorable uh, Majake. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Am I audible? Yes, you are. You are. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, you know, I'm sure this committee is the sixth committee that we are addressing. And in all the five committees that have passed, if my calculation is correct, I, 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 I for one, have avoided the temptation of being political. I've always tried my best to, to confine myself with the subject matter. But I think I can't uh, certain things go unchallenged uh, because that will create a unnecessary tension and all of that uh, in the public domain. I think I need to address two things. One, Chair, I, 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 I for one, I'm not one of the, in fact, three things. One, I'm, I'm sure I'm not one of the people who, 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 who wants to, to rush the meeting? I can still go home tomorrow. I'm not part of those people. In fact, the last time when I had uh, personal problems, I had to drive while I'm in, I'm in a meeting. So if I had anything to do in Papua today, I could have drive while, while I'm in a meeting. It's not a problem. It's not a desktop. This thing. It's, a, it's a tablet. You put it in the car, you drive, you go. So I did that last Friday. I'm not in hurry of anything. I can leave tomorrow. So I'm not part of that. I must clear that one first. Secondly, Chair, I was waiting for a moment where, where we will say we support the report or we don't support the report so that one express himself there. But now, now that it has taken, now that it has taken this turn, I can't, I can't uh, let this turn go without me saying what I want to say. Firstly, Chair, uh, we will not do anything, anything. And this is one of the th things that makes us to be a leftist, a Marxist, a, a Pannonian organization. Because we realize that uh, 
national democratic revolution will never will never be brought to its uh, logical conclusion if we go in a manner and fashion we are going. And I appreciate today that uh, I appreciate today that uh, my comrades, the honourable members, the are raising exactly issues that we were raising in the past, hence, hence we are in this position that we are. One, you will not do anything in agriculture if you don't address the issue of arable land. In free state, the arable land is so much, is so much. And uh, uh, if we don't address the issue of arable land, we will never address the issue of uh, massive production of food. You will never address that, and you will forever, uh, you will forever uh, uh, assist the status quo to remain as it is. That question will not be answered now and not uh, anytime soon. All figures that Honorable Wood is talking about and all of that, it, it is not going to be answered now and not anytime soon because. Uh, 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 the National Democratic Revolution itself, it has trapped itself in the what we call a uh, trapping corridor of soft power. Once people assume certain positions, they forget uh, why they are in that position. And then it's I to the we, we no, we no, 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 Chair, I, I don't oh, like to call a point of You can tell me what to say and not what to say. You are not talking to me. You have talked 30 minutes. You have talked 30 minutes. You have talked 30 minutes and we were quiet. We were quiet when you were talking 30 minutes. Who, who stopped you? You think everything that you were saying we were head of? We kept quiet. You must keep quiet even yourself. Honorable Mepu. Honorable Mepu, please don't 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 interject, please. Honorable Majake. And this, is, this is exactly trappings of power. We are getting on your nerves now because we are talking about trappings of power. You are one of those who are trapped in the trappings of power. You are you don't, you don't Chair, you this is a personal attack. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, 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 respect, I'm respecting your ruling. Honorable Mepu. Honorable Majake, Honorable Majake, if 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 this is how we are going to conduct ourselves, disrespect one another in the meetings and attack one another, I have ruled on that one, honorable members. May we not be personal. We are actually undermining the process of the budget. The people of the free state are going to ask us tomorrow when we do these things in this process. This is a serious process of dealing with our budget. May we avoid the preambling. Can we shoot straight to the issues? And Honorable Mayor, please don't interject. Honorable Majake. Chairperson, we, we can't hear him. Your mic, your mic, your mic, Honorable Majake. Okay, thank you, Chair. So the issue of Arab, Arab land, arable land is very important so that we are able to produce a, a food production in a massive way. So if the budget doesn't talk, it's a check on, on agro-processing. If we don't maximize ag uh, agricultural productivity and massively invest in agro processing, we will forever, uh, we, we will forever uh, 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 maintain the status quo. And my last issue on capitalization: if we don't establish a, 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 a and capitalize agricultural development node, node to increase the quantity and quality of agricultural production. We will continue, we will forever continue uh, to, 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 to keep the status quo as it is. 
and uh, the subsistence imaging and com and all of that jazz, it will remain a, 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 a rhetoric. It will never kick off. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Majake. Honorable uh, Dr. Jackson. Chairperson, I was. Chairperson, you will come after Mesara. The council is quiet. Uh, honorable members, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to be what honorable members want me to be, and I don't want to be like that. I would never be provoked, and I don't like to be provoked. I would never chair on the conditions of other people. May I treat every member equally in the committee and allow members to participate. But if members are going to throw tantrums on each other, I am not going to allow any other more hands. I'm just going to say, no, no, member. And that is where you are going to say I'm ruthless and I'm arrogant, as I've always been portrayed as an arrogant person. So I'm going to allow Honorable Doctor, Honorable Mesara, and Honorable Meku. And if you are going to respond, raise Honorable Meku, I'm not going to allow you. Can we just try to assist the meeting? Honorable Doctor. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I think um, amongst everyone on the meeting, there's consensus that we all want land reform and we want land reform in South Africa to, to work. We want to transform the agricultural sector. It's very important for the country as a whole. But there are some things which we must take into account and it also to a large degree affects the budget as well. I think firstly, what, what is very important for people to note, and I think it's a misconception that South Africa is an agricultural country and it's conducive to agriculture. We aren't. We're one of the 40 driest countries in the world. We have huge water scarcity. Our people in the towns experience it. And it's not that the agricultural sector doesn't experience it either. It is a factor there. The fact is that if one looks at South Africa at a whole, as a whole, only 3% of South Africa is highly fertile. 13% um, of South Africa's land is actually arable that you can plant on it. And 69% is for grazing alone. So South Africa isn't uh, actually a viable agricultural country. And in the past, um, far, commercial farmers and probably other farmers used to receive, and I'm talking about before 1994, agricultural subsidies. And that is why they were able to farm productively. Um, today, those agricultural subsidies have fallen away, and that's why the amount of farmers has reduced from about 1,000 commercial farmers. The only way you commercially and make a success of it is through the economy. People need large amounts of land to actually produce something and to, to make it viable. And that's also... Chairperson, why if we we can throw as much money as we like into into the emerging sector, but what we need to create is commercial farmers. There, I agree with some of the members and um, the department is stated. We need to agricultural projects projects can't work if a single commercial farmer struggles to survive without subsidies. How is a project with 20 beneficiaries or more going to survive? So we must look at a new model of agriculture and we must budget for a new model in agriculture. And I think we must start looking at um, if we're going to develop commercial farmers, you can't do it through projects or CPAs, which family farms. We need to do a generational thing to transform our agricultural sector. Um, we can we can put as much money as we like into it, and we do put a lot of money into agriculture. We know that land reform, to a large degree, has failed in the country. We've seen the Frieda project, where we continue to put 20 million around beneficiaries. And even if you put 80 beneficiaries on there, it might be very difficult for that that farm to to survive. Because my idea of a of a successful land project or any for, um, agricultural project, it becomes independent from government, government and it's able to serve as well as a possible um, reform 
an area of reform and um, put some money into that so that our, our people can benefit from agri-processing and allow, our, allow those people, black and white, who actually want to take those risks under very difficult natural conditions to take those risks and produce the food and let us transform the, the processing sector to make sure that that food gets onto the people's tables as cheaply as possible. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, that was very enlightening, Honorable Dr. Jackson. Th th these are the inputs, Honorable Members, we really want. Honorable Chair of Chairs was able to raise it, to say he is not acquainted to farming issues, and but he wants to fight for those farmers. And Honorable Chair is giving us an insight to say these are the issues we can do together and, and we must embrace that. And that is why I allow members to speak, and that's how I learn myself. And when I speak, I speak. I learn from the people who know I go out and do my own small research and find out the solutions. So that is why I was allowing members to speak. And it was, it was, a, it was a good, healthy discussion. We are all fighting for the budget. We are not fighting for political parties here. We are all fighting for a small budget, which the HOD does not have control on. And the MEC must also form part of the ESCO to decide and lobby the ESCO to decide and give a particular percentage on top of their, their budget. Honorable Van Fieren even said it that every department must get something. So it's, it's difficult. We don't have money. The land reform issue, we know. The issue of the transformation, we know. It takes time to transform. It takes time, irrespective of any category or field of any business industry. To transform, it, it, it needs all of us. The weakness, honorable members, of us as South African and the province, we are the, he's right, honorable uh, uh, Dr. Jackson, we are. I don't know we are number what in the in the in the in the category that are the trust province and country. We don't harvest water. Our weakness of South Africans, we don't harvest water. We allow water just to pass from Lesotho, come right through Bethlehem, come right through Sterfontein and other areas and go straight to Val from Val, it goes out. The South Africans don't realize the need to harvest water. And this is an area we must engage around. When you don't have water, you can't grow your farm, farm industry. You need more water more than other. You can have all sorts of chemicals. But at the end of the day, water is the most important uh, commodity, if I may put it that way. So, so I'm... I'm Question members, let, 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 let's wrap up. Honorable uh, Mesara and then Honorable Meko. Uh, Chairperson, I uh, was going, also going to talk about the issue of water. Water is a, a, a problem in the, in, the, in, in, in the country, and especially in the, in the certain uh, provinces. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the respect that the province can do, it's only national that they that can assist uh, uh, mm -hmm. provinces. Have, that's what they are talking about. Chairperson, when I was raising the issue of uh, draft to do, uh, I also make a, a, a indication of, of saying uh, I support the, the budget. The yes, appropriation, yes. The only thing I was uh, waiting is who, who seconds or. But it was not supposed to be the way it is, you know us to have uh, unnecessary arguments over over, over the, 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 the the virtual field virtual meeting that everybody is going to see what was happening in the meeting. I think uh, as the other members we must uh, try, to, try to control ourselves and, and make sure we focus on the uh, issue that is there on the table. Uh, that is uh, the issue of the budget of agriculture. The presentation was there. there. That's why I'm, I, I said uh, 
I want the clarity on the issue of drought. The other members have also contributed. Uh, the bit was never Jefferson, and it was not uh, ever happened. Uh, the analysis here and the, the SOD presented, I, I repeat myself again, I support the advisor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. Thank you, Mesara. Now, let, let me apologize to you. Um, it, it was not my intention to disrespect you. you. You, the chair of the meeting, and when you rule, we must respect that, even if we are not here. In fact, we, we, we have uh, other avenues, uh, even outside the community, to even engage you uh, on our issues. This is not uh, the first platform. This is not the last platform. Uh, we, we can persuade each other, including persuading you on your perspective of leadership. Uh, and, and that's why I want to apologize and withdraw. It, it was not my intention. And the reason why I'm saying that, Chair Corey, I think we need to remind each other that uh, uh, the political debates on the direction of our province is coming. And I think we, we must reserve that energy for there. Uh, mm -hmm. I also don't mind, Chair, to even apologize to Honorable Majaki, um, because I feel that these issues require the political platform. We are confronted with a budget there, and I think we, we need to engage it. And with energy, Chair, we must engage the budget uh, to, to, to understand it. Now, my, I've only have got three issues. That was number one. Number two, on the process. Uh, I agree, Honorable Sarah, uh, about the process. Uh, I also move, Chair, to support the budget. But uh, the department must give answers that have been raised. Uh, supporting the budget, second, Honorable Sarah, does not say the matter is completed. Uh, Chair, it means that uh, answers must be, responses must come, there must be follow ups, uh, and so on and so on. I know you to be one of the most generous chairpersons. Uh, you may be new in the legislature, but you've always been generous uh, to give all of us to ventilate on a number of issues. Some of them were not, are not even relevant to... Uh, so so the, the issues that, uh, in particular, Oramal Bute has asked, and all of us, if the department uh, does not have a, a ready-made answer, the, the culture is that we will then ask them to go and give us a report. If Honorable Good is not wrong to, to ask for it, no, no, no. It's patent, it's, don't only leave it at the level of percentages. I wish that uh, it will go down to concrete allocation. And I don't think the department will have a problem to do that, to say, you know, in terms of uh, the Anakin uh, Masaki, uh, uh, this year, in terms of Honorable Jekyll Sinudi Beante, subsistence Ravafauka, commercial farmers chair, there's nothing that we're giving because our assumption is the following. The department can simply say, we, we're not ready in terms of was more. They came to present figures, chair. Now, if we want to go deeper and understand some of the things, nothing wrong that uh, we ask them to provide those things through a report. The last element, chair, I don't want to waste your time. Uh, content issues as well that we have asked which would be responded and there were other responses. Chair, the, the approach of South Africa, I'm not talking about political organization, of the country, is that we are a mixed economy. It's adopted. We are a mixed economy. But that mixed economy has got a context and the context is that whilst we, we transform, and Honorable Jackson, and I'm happy, says nobody is opposed to land reform. While we transform, uh, whilst we transform, we must ensure that uh, commercial farmers are able to produce food for the country and the free state. Remember there's a narrative that we always, all of us, I think, are united around it and we always pursue sharing. 1990, 1991, 1992, Free State used to be regarded as a food 
basket of the country. We could feed the people of Free State and those of Sarafu. Today, we can't even feed the people of a, of a, of the Free State alone. And and we've always been saying the department must assist that we bring back that play. And and I think when the chase correct, it's not going to happen with a budget of a one financial year. We, we, the, then our analysis must appreciate it. last year you, you contributed this for emerging commercial farmers. Your support to commercial farmers may not be true money because these are established people, but it could be true other things, you know, your your exemptions uh, and so on and so on and so on. That I think Dr. Mastin can tell us about. Such that all of those efforts then are taking us to where we want to go. Every state mm-hmm. must be able to feed the whole country. And I think that's the context within which we must appreciate the budget. And there's nothing wrong, Chair, to say, but today, what does it say to contribute to us that? I don't agree, Chair Orlando Foreman has failed. And I don't want us to go there. Let it also go for political debates because I'm sure we'll differ, Chair Orlando. It has failed or not failed. What are the reasons? I can simply agree and say, it has failed because people were not willing. Remember the policy which was guiding government was willing buyer, willing seller. And the mm-hmm. country now is in, is in a process mm-hmm. where it wants to change. Honorable Jackson also deals with those issues that there's got to be a change in thinking. There must be a strategic shift in how we look at agriculture and so on and so on. No problem. These are good academic inputs. But, but what are the reasons why land reform is failed? It's because people were not willing. They established this, but we don't want to go there. We want to say to the department, uh, uh, these questions that you are asking, we want to understand your role in help, helping us by multiply effect, help the free state economy. Because who correct the honorable boots? Uh, agriculture has got that fundamental role in the provincial economy. You are also correct uh, to, to raise these specific issues around uh, but how are our people benefiting from this budget? Mar, let me throw you back, Chair. I know you, me and you are passionate about one thing. They are telling us that in 12, COD, okay, or now we'll be telling salary. 70 of the, yeah. COD, yeah, compensation. 70 of the salary. Only 30% remains. Chair, all the departments that appeared in front of you mm-hmm. as our chairperson, or how not anyone that has ever said, no, we think our budget is sufficient. Chair, we're happy. Uh, so we're dealing with two things. What mm-hmm. they've been given, and how do they try to achieve this difficult balance? Mm-hmm. And you are correct. There's no new money. We, <laughs> we, are, we are under depression as a country, as a world, as, as a province. Before COVID-19, already we were a technical recession. COVID-19 is exacerbating those problems. And that's why I go out there, all issues that honorable members have raised. We have been saying, how are you going to cope with all these cuts? Because agriculture is almost, my suspicion is that it has been cut more than any other department. And when we are raising issues with treasure, we are worried for it. We are targeting the steer and agriculture for cuts. Yes, it's true. They are not buying sanitizers. But we said food distribution and manufacturing must not be disrupted. To, we, we said we are opening up the lockdown for reasons of the economy. Now, it would not make sense, Chair, that we open the economy, yet our small businesses are not going to be assisted. They, they are relying on this... Uh, national uh, 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 relief fund and they must apply provinces also has got to come on board mm-hmm. with the difficulties that the chair of project knows I chair. so our engagement of them is that I just want I just don't want to make an example I'll make it to you chair privately and other members as we discuss there were certain monies chair which were given to certain departments and the general feeling of all of us was that but why this money? I mean, why, why are you giving for this money when you should go and, and prioritize this tier and agriculture? Passionately, I've been asking MEC Treasure. Really, part of the strategy is that people wash our hands with running water and soap. There's no water in Kwaku. Where is the budget for 
for quality of water? Now, now, now th th these are difficult questions, Chair, and, and I want to propose as I conclude, for a, maybe we need a session after engagement of all these departments, Yaro Namdula Stulo convene us, Rato Dula, and say, let's do a reconnection. How do we, because re-engage agriculture in isolation, how do we to engage as sports or relevant agriculture? In fact, there are other issues which are interrelated, which are overlapping to other departments that Propeg has got to appreciate and balance and say, Momar Propeg Memo has got to fall on a channel. There is no other control. And I'm correct. What I'm saying is that the MC of our ESCO, ESCO in that decision are a a relevant and rand. How about the class of the rand? Committee can't punish them. We're not going to achieve anything. But Honorable Boot is correct to say, 20 rand a year. Five rand a year is going to be for youth. Two rand a year is going to be going to be for women. A uh, rand a year is going to be going to be for the commercial farmers. That clarity we need to get here. Uh, but beyond that, uh, there's very little that uh, uh, can, can be done and can be said. But I want to fundamentally disagree that land reform is failed. Uh, we, we are dealing with issues piece by piece up until uh, the budget allows us in terms of its contribution annually to arrive at our at our at our objective thank you chair okay. uh, thank you honorable members may i allow the honorable mec to come uh, uh, he's going to be on the phone he's having difficulties uh, uh, mec if you can hear me i don't know can you still hear me You can continue. No, thanks very much, Chief. My apologies with my budget. Can we, uh, can we all hear the MEC? My apologies with my budget. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear him as well. Thank you. You can continue, MEC. I really want to apologize to you, Chief Minister, the chair, and the committee. It's not that I wanted to undermine the committee, but my budget forced me to be a part of the meeting. I don't know what was happening with my budget, but my apology. Okay, MEC. But the chair, there are two things that I want to comment from the presentation, when I was still part of the presentation. One is the issue of the budget. I've raised it in the EXCO to say that uh, the way we are doing things, we will ne never get our target and get our attack in a row. Precisely because the way we are planning and budgeting, I don't think we are prioritizing agriculture as one of the sectors that we have a stable economy and that we can create jobs. I think it, it, it needs to go back to the to the ruling party to say once you adopted the five priorities for your education, your health job creation, rural development, and fighting crime and corruption. I think as a need that we have implemented the last for the past 10 years. That's why our economy is not able to absorb the new graduates, because even if they are there, the skill is there, they are not able to absorb by the systems itself. So we find ourselves in that scenario. Unless we go back to the ruling party and reprioritize the job creation and the rural development so that both agriculture and the economy they can create jobs so that those children come back there, they are easily absorbed into these two economic uh, 
zones that we have, so that the challenge that we are having, do we always complain about the little resources that we get from the, from the treasury precisely because of the bigger chunk of our money in the province, 50 billion of it goes to education and 12 billion go to health. And then agriculture get 761 billion, Agri uh, economic affairs will get 664. It tells you that we are not going to get our targets correctly. We are trying as much as we can. We wanted to budget more on the on the on the on the emerging farmers so that they, they move from that stage to become the commercial farmers. But the, the resources are the impediment that you can't plan much with the little resources that we have. In the prestige, I don't want to talk about other provinces. We will never grow the emerging farmers precisely because these emerging farmers, I want to make example uh, the share about if you plow 217 hectares of maize meal, we are about, we are, we are, we are about when, 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 when you harvest, you harvest production, it will be close to 4.2 4 million. You take away 600 that you have used to, to that process. But our black farmers, as they plow, Somebody must plan for them. Obviously, it's a white commercial father who's having everything. He's preparing soil for them. He's planning for them. He's killing. He's maintaining the seed for them and it's another seed for them. And then after harvesting that, that father who has the mechanization and everything. We'll take 70% mm -hmm. of our left only. Aspiring farmers will take only 50%. So that's the dilemma we are sitting with. But until we get more money, and I'm not complaining, I'm just raising it so that you understand. When I say the budget is not enough to deal with the issues that we are going to deal with, of which is a challenge on our side. And we have, we have accepted that. I've, I've raised this matter in the, in the EXCO. The last issue that I wanted to raise, Chair, I've also raised it in the EXCO to say when this COVID 19 came, all our efforts went to the shops and to the township. None of the government resources have ever went to the rural people. Those people that you are going to converse for them to vote for any party, to be any party, but they are not the beneficiaries of the, of the benefits of government. When we plan for Georgia Tech, including the trap that takes water so that the people in the rural and in the, in the, in the, in the informal settlement can wash their hands. Sanitize your set everything to sanitize them, but in the past, we have never done anything. So that's why we have wrote a letter to the minister and we put up the proposal to send to the minister. We have forgotten about this community. As you are saying, it can be a private land or it can be a government land, but let's focus our energy in the past on the four holes. So that our people also, when we say, I've been in a number of activities and some business, and then every time I arrive there, I say, you must wash your hands if you don't have a sanitizer, I use water and soap. They said there's no water here. I don't know what to say. If there's no sanitizer, use water and soap, but there is no water. So I think it's called upon all of us as we are planning. I, I hope the department is listening and the department that I'm heading. As we are planning, we are going to plan more on mechanization so that we keep all the farmers 
that we push all the farmers that are in the city to go up to be commercial farmers and the commercial farmers to assist us to carry this one who are still uh, the nation so that they can also move from that stage to their commercial farmers. But if we are not going to address, and if we have addressed that also our terms and contracts to say and the municipality, I'm happy that the municipality responded positively, but how to say identify all hope that we can repair, that we can make in a farm with means and all those things that can bring water into a particular part so that the people in the front <laughs> they have access to water. Our people don't have an access to water. Of which is our concern as a department, but we are working on it. Last teacher, we have agreed as a department to say farmers have applied for 1.6 billion, which was It was the regime from national on issues of conduct to the emerging farmer. And I want to indicate to all of you that we have received in that one point we have received close to 17 million of each other and left a little money. We have gone to the minister, the minister to appeal to the minister to go and visit if there are farmers that didn't supply all the documents that are needed. But every department we are saying. Those who couldn't go through, we must carry them with the little budget that we have so that they are also benefiting from what the government wants to achieve. So those are the challenges that we have. I'm raising them, Chair. The, the other issue that I want to raise is that among all the students that we have taken outside, all of them they are looking for government to give them employment. And they can say we can't help directors or chief directors or DDG close to 120. We can't also absorb the in system. But we must find a way and mechanism to say how many of you and the Shihok came handy to say that I want to grow my school, I don't want to do anything from government, but I want support from government. Why can't we support? and initiate for the young person who is willing to say, I don't want your leadership, I don't want anything, but I want to go on my own. We'll be receiving close to 120, and then we are having a challenge of the present 120 that we see in the department of the form of leadership. And we are not just going to dismiss this one and take the new one. Mm -hmm. We must make it a plan that this one, if they exist, where do they go? And agriculture can, cannot absorb them, but they can be absorbed by private sector. Or some of them, they can create jobs on their own, but they must be somewhere so that at the end of the day, they are able to say the department is taking us very seriously. It's, well, it's not going to help us take this one and say your leadership has expired. Bring another 150 on the phone and to start your fire. We don't be a responsive government and see the way transformation and new development because the majority of them are young people. So those are the challenges that the department is facing with. But we are dealing with them, Chair, to say how best can we address all this and make sure that all the imbalances are balanced to favor. The department also has ensure everybody is taken care of. So I think those are the things that I wanted to raise here to highlight the challenges that the department is facing. There are a number of challenges that we are facing. I there through the presentation that there are still questions about the even though we are still trying to address it and come to a conclusion. We'll soon come to the committee and the portfolio committee and say that how we have finally addressed this issue and concluded it. To us, it's very important and it's paramount because it has been raised by public protector. The high court is 
these institutional departments that will protect and the year, such as the process of fresh. We are going to cooperate and make sure that everything, we get any advice about community dairy, and then we get it right. It was not right in the, in the beginning, but we must try to correct it and get it right as we move on chat. So those are the things that I wanted to raise in the chat. My apology again for my, my systems. Thank you very much, sir. No, th thank you very much, uh, Honorable MEC. Uh, uh, Honorable members, I think the, the MEC has actually summarized <coughs> our issues and the, the issues of the department. I think what is now left, uh, Honorable members, is to respect the inputs which were made by Honorable members. All of you, uh, Honorable members, I think Honorable Majake spoke about the issue of the capital agricultural node, uh, how he thinks this could be attained to the Arab, the Arab <clears throat> land, and uh, the issue of Dr. Jacobson to say, let's really look into our new model of subsidies. Th these are the issues that have been thrown in a basket for the department to look into them. And, 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 and be able to convince us also as a committee, because we also want to influence from, from our angle as a committee. We want to influence, we want to carry these issues to the level where the executive must re-look into how they do their planning. The MEC is saying now, the issue of planning vis-a-vis -vis budgeting needs to be reviewed. I think, I think that is very fundamental. That is very key. The manner in which we are planning must also be considered. The issue of how we do our budget must also be considered. Uh, the issue of agri-processing, this is what Honorable uh, Doctor is saying. The, the, for, for the way to go is agri-processing. Does our own Create Dairy talks to agri-processing in a real sense? And these are the issues we must talk about. That's, that, is the, that is what is meant by this committee of finance. We can't be a committee of finance of members who can't even interpret how the economy should look like. And that is why I was letting members to be able to speak, to be able to input. I, I'm not privileged as a chair because most of the time I'm chairing, uh, members must, must be able to, to, to input and, and, and raise issues. I mean, the issue of Honorable uh, uh, Chair of, I mean, Honorable uh, uh, Meku, MEC and HOD, this issue of COEs, here is a problem for each and every department. When Honorable Fun, uh, Doctor was saying, let's really look into the subsidies, let's look into other models, it means we need to really look into, do we really have to employ more people than what we have now? It's part of the discussions. The MEC is raising important factor of students who must be absorbed by the departments and other related departments. This is the time where we must look into how other countries are championing issue of entrepreneurial companies. The issue of triple P's, can it work for now? Can it work for now because we don't have money? What do we do with what we have? And these are the issues. And who will be part of, who will form part of those triple P? Are the very same students who've got capacity, who've got speciality into agriculture, and be the implementers of, for, for an example, your Friday daily issue that needs an implementing agency, as an example. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just saying it as such. So, Every department is having a crisis on this uh, compensation of employ employees. So much money goes to Basebezi than goods and services. So, so these are the issues we must we must call upon. Call upon the intergovernmental relations. The IGR must exist. It must not exist for the sake of meetings, but it must. The IGR must exist to be able to come up with a different way of doing things. Honorable Chair of Chairs has raised important issues. If we are budgeting, how much are we putting for imaging? How much are we putting for, 
for commercial and everything. Even doctor said to us, Honorable Dr. Jackson, as long as you still have the commercial HOD, you still need to have subsidy for them as government. So, so these are the issues I'm saying they are all important. And even Honorable Van Kuren has raised most crucial issues, even Honorable Nesara. And, and these are the factors we must talk about. The way the equitable share is being done, it's affecting all of us. Now it's 8.9% for communities, 41% point something for province, and the rest of the chunk goes to national. Where do we have people? Do people stay at national? Or do the people stay at local sphere of government? These are the issues we must advocate. We must lobby other departments, other provinces, as Honorable Mekwe has said, and engage as serious leaders who wants to see change in the lives of our people. India is one of the best models. I don't know now because I think I went with the Delhi Premier, uh, uh, I think 2013 or 14. If you go to a province called Madhya Pradesh, in a town called Hyderabad, Hyderabad is contributing immensely the GDP. And there, HOD, I don't know if you have went to Hyderabad in Madhya Pradesh. That place, Kimo Cholam Maraka, you know, in our olden days when we grow up, in your olden days, Nerelia Marake where every family will bring different types of potatoes from their own gardens and sell them those potatoes or whatever. You say this is the first grade, this is the second grade. That is what is happening in Madhya Pradesh. And that is why even today you can check the GDP thereof is being contributed by agriculture. So I'm saying these are the good practices we can learn from, learn from other countries. We need to change the way we have been planning. We reach such critical departments are the ones that are given first preference uh, to be able to address issues of a. Uh, and I like the example of MEC last year. The 270 hectares of maize, when after, after harvesting there, it is through, through MEC and how we want to hold Our people, that is where they are not able to grow as emerging farmers. That thing is very important, and we really need to look into it. And, and try to, to, to assist one another. So I want to say thank you, MEC, and I want to say thank you very much, HOD. Honorable Tabu Meku has also said we must be have time where we will come together as a committee with all the departments and try to speak to this issue of planning, uh, not really planning, we can't plan for you, you department, Uh, you, you must start afresh. You have been severely cutting. We can't hear you. Aditabu. You lost to how cut you did. Honorable members, I, I suspect the chair is cut. Because he was struggling with network, and the next thing is removed from the screen. Aditabu. Yes, it's true. It's true, Chairman Mego. Yeah. Honorable Mego. Can we help to bring the chair back? 
Honourable members, my apologies. Can I talk to the, the, the IT? I ran out of data. This is an embarrassment. Yes, I have to use my phone now. I'm using my phone to hotspot. <laughs> Honourable members, thank you very much. Let, let's release uh, MEC your last remarks. Can I use time now for members to raise so that uh, we, 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 we get enough adequate time? I'm going to allow uh, Mayor Mubake or to assist us on stopwatch now. We are going to give each and every member three minutes. Uh, uh, then we can allow you another two extra minutes when you you make a follow-up. So you have at least five minutes to raise whatever so that uh, we, we don't open up this thing of fighting one another. You know this exercise, honorable members, 
I don't know how you view it, but this is the most important part that touches the hearts of our people. We, if we can't get answers, we need to be told, we need to fight militantly to make sure that we influence. This is the only influence you can have to make change into the, the budget of the national. There's no way. You can't go to office of the MEC minister and tell the minister, hey, you must change here. This is the only platform we must utilize. And this is a constitutional structure. We can't be afraid to do our work. We can't always, again, undermine each other. So please, my leaders, uh, my honorable members, let's make use of this time. Let's contribute. Let's forget about the issue of WhatsApp and we are on Facebook. It's a must that we must be out there. It's a law. Public must know what we do. So it, it can't be an issue. The issue that we are on WhatsApp, we are on Facebook, it can't be an issue. Let, let's leave it. It is, it is the constitutional imperative that we, we must be transparent. Uh, this is part of being transparent to the community out there. So, so let, let's not fight over that issue. Let me welcome Honorable Nema Klein Hans, who has joined us. Sorry, you came during the battle. It was a long battle, so I even forgot to noti notice you, uh, uh, sorry, Nema Klein Hans. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let, let's have the Department of, uh, I think it was, oh, any other possible recommendations or resolutions? Yes. Members? Possible resolutions on the first, the budget vote that we were dealing with agriculture. Can we step out? Can we move? Thank you. So I think we can move. We've raised the issue. I, yeah, I, okay. I, I've never doubted the Secretariat of, of Profit, and I'm not yeah, saying I'm not they're accurate. No, I've they're never they're... doubted them. They're very accurate. I think they captured issues. That meeting, which uh, if the chair is buying it, then we will be allowed to come back and discuss yeah. all of these things combined. Yeah. It's part of our resolutions. Churches? Uh, on a... I, I fully concur with what he, he has raised. Let's, uh, let's, have, let's, keep that, let's keep that militancy of fighting for our people. We must never be en disencouraged. Uh, Honorable Khakhaou, welcome with your, red, with your red jacket. What is what is happening? It's a red Friday today. Yeah. Hi, Bo. Yeah. Hi, Bo. It's a red Friday today. <laughs> no, no, Honorable Majaki is getting some fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a red Friday today, not Black Friday. <laughs> so, thank you, honorable members. Uh, we have considered the appropriation bill. It must be noted, Secretariat. Members have alluded to it. Uh, may we welcome the MEC and his delegation, honorable MEC Tatema Are you alive? Are you here? Honorable Dr. Machinini, your mic, your mic is off. Yeah, I am here, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I can see, Chair, you, your skin is, is nice. You, what? Kilogdow, <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Honorable MEC, let me take this opportunity to allow the, the MEC to make the opening remark. Then after that, we'll allow the legal advisor, Mepusele, uh, to take us through our rituals. And uh, obviously, through you, MEC, you will let inform us who are the members of your officials who will be presenting and be taking questions. Uh, uh, and then, then after then, we'll then open the floor to members. So we'll stick to time. I know I want to apologize, honorable member, uh, MEC. It is out of our making. The more we get issues, the more members are being uh, tri triggered to, to ask more questions. It is out of our control. I know you expected to come at that time. You had to wait for a longer time. So we really want to apologize for that. It is in the best interest of our society. 
So hence members would want to say one or two issues. So Siabo Ababa, you can come in, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, let me also take this opportunity to uh, thank the committee in allowing us to to present our appropriation bill. Thank you very much. It is important, Chair, that these processes must be interrogated fully because I am moving from a point that says when you interrogate a program, or when you interrogate a process, you are not necessarily being negative, but you are trying to enrich that particular program. So I want to welcome wholeheartedly the opportunity given to us to present uh, our situation as the department. I want to indicate up front that we do have the HOD that is going to be the accounting together with the CFO that is here and the chief directors that is going to be part of this particular presentation. Uh, above that, I want to raise a few areas that we will be able to look at. Number one, Chair, is that as we navigate through this difficult times of COVID-19, this department uh, also experienced serious challenges with regard to its own targets uh, because funds have to be shifted from the department. And I want to uh, remind that this department is the department that is key in terms of the revenue collection in the once this department fails to collect, then it will have a direct impact on the other department. And, and I'm raising this particular point precisely with the issue of the revenue collection. As you know, in terms of all our testing stations, where our people, uh, our customers, our clients are able to pay their services uh, in those different stations. But as you move in this period, which I refer to as a difficult period, we are aware that some of the stations are then opened a few days with skeleton staff and then later closed again when some people have been detected to be positive with regard to the COVID-19. And again, it means that that particular station has to be stopped, uh, uh, sanitized, fumigated, so that uh, we are able to protect equally to the employees in that particular area. So this particular closing opening, closing opening, is surely affecting the revenue collection. But I can tell you, Chair, that as the department we are engaging the national department to come up with a particular mechanism. And that mechanism, Chair, it's a mechanism that we have not as yet concluded on with the national department. And that I refer to payment online. We are, for, we are looking at that as to whether it cannot be able to assist us. Because clearly, COVID-19 <laughs> something that is going to pass very soon. It's going to stay with us. So we are looking at that to say what's going to be the situation if we allow the people to uh, get the services through online. And we are looking at that. Here. And I want to believe that with engagement at national, we'll be able to conclude this matter as quickly as possible. Because this river that we are, uh, 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 intending to cross. It's a river that we have not crossed before. The issue of people having to be locked in their different homes impacts ne negatively on the <clears throat> revenue collection. It means that the department will not be able to reach, to achieve its target in terms of the revenue collection. But how do we use 
the fourth industrial revolution. And it is the point that I'm referring to of considering other avenues, like I've said, the issue of the uh, uh, payment online and rendering the services online. So as the department working together with national, we are looking at that because if we don't look at that, this is going to bring more accruals. This is going to bring more pressure in the next financial year. So that process, that debate, it's continuing right now. And we want to believe that once the National Treasury has looked into that particular matter and the provinces have looked into it, then we are able to move. We have actually stated this matter as the free state province to say we cannot just keep quiet when we know that our people cannot go to different centers and be able to get the services that they want. Why don't we use the fourth industrial revolution so that we can see how best we can. And then therefore, research was conducted to say how far this matter can go. And we are in that particular process because you will see in the process chair, the impact of the loss with regard to the revenue collection and what impact it have. And I'm sure it will have a serious implication to the rest of the department in the province, because this department is the department that is contributing immensely to the collection of the revenue in the province. So we are in that particular space, and I want to believe once the National Treasury has given a green light with regard, our people in the province will be able to get other systems uh, by using the online system. That's where we have to go to. That's the first point that I want to go towards too, because it's going to have direct, it is showing us that collection in the form that we are doing right now has got a serious implication with regard to re the revenue of the, of the province. Two chair that I want to upfront uh, indicate that it will appear in our presentation is the, the impact of the COVID-19 when it comes to the infrastructure project, we are using the PRMG that is a grant getting from national, but that grant has to be assisted by our own revenue enhancement. And when I, I differentiate between the two, the grant on its own cannot be able to answer the requirements by the people of the province, by all the departments. It has to be assisted by our own revenue enhancement. And this is directly linked to the point that I made earlier on. Under the circumstances, you can't collect in the manner that you are used to. What do you do? That's why the department has now began uh, 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 to look at using other avenues like the online payment that we are dealing with. This particular matter says, Chair, the infrastructure project as uh, by the PRMG, which is the national grant, will continue, but it is going to have a detrimental effect because we are not collecting in the manner that we used to collect and our own revenue enhancement, it's seriously affected. So we will have that particular deficiency in terms of achieving our own uh, targets because the, uh, 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 our own revenue enhancement, it's not going to be the own revenue enhancement as set out by our own target. But as the department, we are committed to ensure that those areas that we have uh, committed ourselves in terms of being uh, processed by the PRMG, which is the national grant, will proceed. But I think in the presentation, we will indicate where the effect is uh, uh, going to be. So in other words, where is this own revenue enhancement is going to affect us? Because in the main, the revenue enhancement has enabled us as the department to assist the different municipalities, Chair. Our own revenue enhancement enables the department to be able to assist the rural communities. And therefore, if the cut, because the direction says 
has said to the executive and all the provinces that there has to be cut, cutting in the own revenue enhancement, channeling the resources towards the COVID-19 project simply means that it's going to have a direct impact in the project that were done by our own, through our own revenue enhancement. So surely when our own revenue enhancement is then affected, those projects will surely be affected too. And which project am I referring to? I'm referring to the continuous support that we normally give to the districts in terms of the projects that are supposed to continue. Which are those projects? The issue of the graveling in the different areas will surely be affected because we do not have that particular funding that we used to have. And I, I have to indicate that this is going to have in moving towards the next financial uh, 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 statement. It will affect and it will create accruals. It will create a situation whereby there is a burden on the, on the, on the, on the department. Thirdly, the impact, it's huge on the economy. The impact, it's going to be huge on the economy. Chair, I'm raising this particular point on two scenarios. The first scenario is that, as you know, the volume and the amount of people in terms of the national grant cannot be the same people that are there. People have to be slowly moving in. So our targets in terms of job creations because of the COVID-19 are directly going to be affected. And that's the point that I want to elevate. That's the point that I want to raise in terms of the impact on the project that we will continue to do, but not with massively like we used to do because of ensuring that we are adhere to the process and the regulations of the COVID-19. That's the situation that I, 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 I want to raise to. And I'm sure you are all witness when you go to the different testing station, you would see that it is not the full blown uh, stuff that is there and precisely caused by one, that as you know, there are people that are moving, that are having the commodities, uh, comorbidities, and those people have to be taken care of. And we don't operate in a full staff complement that we used to do. That's the point that I want to make. That's number one. Number two is that even if you have to cons continue with the staff uh, uh, adhering to the regulations, but at some point you stop because you have to stop because one person has been detected uh, in so far as the COVID-19 is concerned and the department has to stop immediately and then ensure that the place is kept safe before you can say the next people have to come in. The challenge that we are facing, Chair, is that our people have continuously said, as we move and we want to get the economy back to normality, we must equally respect and ensure that the lives of our people are adhered to. That's why we had number of testing stations that had to be closed and later down the line, once everything tests and people that are affected have been uh, quarantined, and then it has to stay a particular days and then open again. That on its own affect the revenue collection. So I'm saying on the infrastructure, the same thing, number of people that are in the project, if one is detected with COVID-19, you can't say the entire workforce has to come back. You have to take uh, processes in place, have to test the rest of the employees there, and then after being given a commitment by the Department of Health, results by the Department of Health, that's when you can restart the process. So this is going to have that impact economically. And the number of people that we thought that we put ourselves as a target, that these people will then be employed is seriously and seriously going to be affected. The other challenge that we are having as our budget has then been cut, it's definitely going to, and I want to believe that even other departments are going to raise this matter. The issue of the compensation of employees, it's definitely going to get affected uh, in the process 
of us wanting to move forward. So I thought, Chair, I must raise quickly. And the last one is that despite this, as you know, there are people with comorbidities that are working from home. What do we do as a department? Because I don't believe from where I'm standing that we should just take the process of saying people are working at home without monitoring. And I can safely say to this committee that we are even monitoring the people that are at home to make sure that they actually do what they are supposed to do. So we are, despite the difficult period that we are in, taking in processes that will ensure that despite this black cloud, we are able to navigate and move through. Chair, those are the issues that I wanted to flout. Those are the issues that I wanted to raise above and before the presentation is done or the oath and uh, the affirmation is taken by the acting HOD, the CFO, and the chief director presented here or available here that can proceed with that. So I thought I must just raise those few areas, Chair, as a way of a precursor to our presentation. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable MEC. Uh, may I take over straight to uh, Thank you, Chair. HOD. Acting HOD, Chair. Sorry, Acting HOD. Good afternoon, Chair and House Member. Good, good afternoon. Dr. Tiki, so please guide me as to who will be taking an oath and affirmation. Uh, Chair, the CFO Mayor Deputies will be taking uh, the um, affirmation, as well as uh, Chief Director of Public Transport, Dr. Ovani. And lastly, it will be Mr. Koma representing uh, Public Transport Regulation as the Deputy Director. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Okay, Dr. Tiki, so let's start with you. Would it be an oath or affirmation? I'll take an I'll take an oath. Please state your full names. Robinson Tekiso. Do you swear what you're about to tell the committee is the truth and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say so help me God. So help me God. Thank you. CFO. Good morning, Mayor. Will it be an oath or an affirmation? We, we can't hear you. Maybe can't hear you ma Please open your... your Please state your full names. Do you swear what you're about to tell the committee is the truth and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say so. Help me, God. Sorry, I'll be God. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for that. I'm so sorry for that. And Dr. Tungwa, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon. Will it be an oath or an affirmation? It will be an oath. Do you swear that you will tell the committee the truth and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say so. Help me, God. 
So help me God. Thank you, Dadin Tungwa. Thank you, Chairperson. And let us now do the presentation. Can we run over the presentation? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. I will proceed on taking the presentation to honorable house members. Uh, Chair, my apology, I'm still waiting for uploading the, up, uh, the, the presentation on the screen. In fact, it's only be uploaded just a few minutes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, allow me to present the up of the Department of Police Roads and Transport uh, for 2021 financial year. Uh, I think the MEC has already alluded or, in fact, summarized the presentation. But with as it may, Chair, I will proceed to give more details in terms of uh, the challenges uh, and the reprioritization of the budget informed by the green. Can we move to slide number two, Chair? Uh, the presentation there out uh, will cover the purpose, the appropriation bill, uh, the allocations per source of funding, where are we getting the funding from, as well as where did we direct the MTF allocations per program from program one to five, as well as challenges and measures that we have put into place as the department to address those challenges. Uh, let me move to slide number three, Chair. Uh, Chair, I'm sure you'd agree with me that uh, we, we are faced with the national disasters declared by the Honorable President and Dr. Amaposa. And as a result, with the uh, challenges that are there, we as the, we as the department, we had to reprioritize and consider our status quo and the challenges that uh, we are going to experience for 20, 2021. And of course, uh, informed by the baseline of the budget that was uh, approved in the last financial year, and tabled by the Honorable MEC on behalf of the department. Uh, Chair, yesterday we had a presentation which was uh, done by National Treasury uh, on the entire province, uh, reflecting the entire challenges and the budget cuts. Uh, it should be brought to the attention of the Chair that out of the 1.1 billion, we as the Department of Police, Roads and Transport, that was cut from the entire, uh, from the entire province, we contributed 329.7 million, which equates to 33 percent uh, as a result of those cuts, Chair. And those, in fact, came with detrimental effect on a number of um, areas and programs. Uh, Chair, in the next slide, it's a reflection of the distribution of votes and main divisions. Uh, the total budget that we are having in this financial year is 2.6 billion. Out of that, uh, we have 800 salary of employees and on goods and services, which will be addressing maintenance of roads and other services, it's 1.2 billion. And transfers and subsidies is 309 million. Uh, payments and capital assets for refurbishment and upgrading uh, projects, 256 million. So out of that, uh, administration, which is program one, have been allocated 314 million which uh, equates to 206 million for compensation of employees and goods and services is 98 million. On, prov on provincial secretariat for police services, that is looking at oversight on our police um, stations entirely in the province, we have budgeted 24.1 million share, which uh, equates to 21.3, that will be going for salaries only, and uh, it will leave them with 2.4 uh, million for goods and services. Transport operations is 338 uh, million, and uh, compensation of employees is 26 uh, uh, billion. Uh, transport economies uh, is a unit that has been recently um, formulated in order for us to come up with research to understand 
uh, where we need to look at our transport sector in terms of uh, critical economy. Uh, we have directed 5.3 billion. On transport regulation, which is trans, uh, trans, um, traffic law enforcement, 473 million, of which uh, 409 million will be directed for compensation of employees, and then goods and services is 48 million. On transport infrastructure, chef, it's 1.5 billion in total. Uh, 215 million will be addressing compensation of employees. Uh, one, uh, 1 billion will then be addressing uh, farm, farm roads, uh, gravel roads, as well as ongoing maintenance projects. Um, and then lastly, in terms of the composition, 7.5 billion will still be directed from expanded public works program, which that uh, uh, budget will be directed to Trabanchu transport um, route. That is an ongoing project. And entirely from the provincial road maintenance grant nationally, we have been allocated 1.2 billion chip. Uh, in terms of own funding from the province, uh, we were allocated 299 million, of which 215 million will be directed to salaries. In the next slide, Chair, it's a reflection of um, the budget that will be uh, that we need to highlight that in terms of collection of revenue uh, with the contract that we have for cash in transit. We will be allocating 20.5 million uh, as part of revenue enhancement. And out of that, to assist uh, our officials in those registration authorities, we have invested 20 million for PPE and other related COVID matters. On transport operations, 297 from PTOF, which is the Public Transport Operations Grant, uh, earmarked for ferrying of commuters. commuters. Uh, it's 297. Uh, million, 297 million as a grant. However, uh, engagements are taking place with the National Department of Transport as well as RTMC uh, to see uh, other alternatives to look at ways of uh, earmarking 15% of that fund that should then be directed for assisting of taxi operators. And lastly, I think it's a component that I've talked to, which is 5.3 uh, million share for transport economies function. In the next slide, 3.6 million chair will be set aside for South African post offices, which is very much inadequate compared to the amount that we have spent in the last financial year. Uh, there we are, um, uh, uh, we are going to be experiencing indeed deficit budgets uh, as a result of the collection that we are getting from South African post offices. There's a contract that is in place and therefore there will be a need to uh, come up with additional budget. Upgrading of testing stations, we have allocated 10 million through revenue enhancement allocation, as well as redirecting the 5 million, uh, which was earmarked for firefighting from Copter. And that 5 million share will also be re-injected to registration authorities, uh, seeing that uh, we have prioritized them as one of the, uh, our most critical areas for ensuring that revenue in the entire province is collected. On transport infrastructure chain, 7.5 uh, um, million is, is the funding that comes from EPWP as compared to 11 million, which was funded uh, last, last financial year. So now there has been a reduction uh, from a base uh, line point of view. However, that funding will still be uh, assisting in the project in, uh, in, in, in Tabanchu. 1.2 billion uh, from provincial road maintenance grant chair, we will ensure that we, we will still continue with the commitments of the projects that we've had, uh, including uh, the new project. I think it's two projects that will be rolled out in this financial year. So we have been it fit to say, let's not cut any other project, uh, mainly informed by the budget vote of the MEC as a result of the APPs that are set. So safe to indicate, Chair, that all those ongoing contracts will still proceed with them. However, the COVID uh, impact will still be realized on the basis that uh, certain components had to change in terms of transporting of, uh, um, uh, of laborers on site, as well as social distancing. So there will be an element of uh, readjusting some of our contractual obligations as a result of time and variation orders uh, that might be incurred on the basis of extra and additional PPE required. 
So on that 1.2 billion change, we will also be redirecting 75 million on bank revenue uh, purposes to assist farming communities, then our transport home, as well as uh, municipal assistance. However, it's going to be limited. Uh, including that the project of uh, Glory Start to Green Street will still be unfolded in this financial year. And additionally, we have included the project of Glory Start Renema. Uh, Chair, on, on infrastructure announcement allocation, we have been allocated 299. However, 90% of that will be directed to salaries as opposed to infrastructure. Uh, that is the detrimental effect as a result of this uh, cut. Chair, in the next slide, it's a reflection of source of funding, uh, which, reflects, uh, which reflects the baseline. I think uh, on the last row, there's a reflection of 2.9 under 1920, which is the, the second column and the third uh, line item, 2.9 billion, uh, which we planned at least three, an increase of 2.4%. Uh, that would have equated to three billion. However, Chair, as a revised main allocation due to this COVID, we ended up having a, a cut of 329 as I alluded to. That leaves us with a budget of 2.6 uh, billion. In the next slide, Chair, it's a reflection of the areas where we uh, suffered the budget cut or areas we, we needed to reprioritize. Uh, from equitable share, there's been a 13% cut, of which 27% uh, comes from infrastructure enhancement allocation. That equated to 110 million, as well as uh, 110, uh, as well as 20 million, which was now redirected to COVID um, uh, areas. On conditional grant chair, I think it was allowed uh, by uh, by national treasury. That is the department we had experienced a 15.1% cut, which equates to 219 million. And that on its own affected uh, our programs going forward. Now the total budget cut um, experienced by the department is 349. However, on the equitable share, there was a redirection of uh, earmark funds for 20 million uh, to address COVID-19 PPE. So in total chair, we experienced a 11% cut that equates to, or that totals to 329 uh, million. In the next slide, Chair, it's the reflection of economic classification under transport infrastructure, because uh, that's the program that suffered the most. So that is the reflection of the 110 as a result, or as a result of cutting goods and services. And that on its own, the MEC has alluded to the fact that RPE uh, will, 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 will suffer a snowball effect as a result of uh, these issues uh, under goods and services, which is own funding. In the next slide is the allocations per program chair, uh, which I've already talked to this slide. Uh, administration will have 314, program two, 24 uh, million, program three, uh, 338 million, program four, transport regulation, 473 million, Transport infrastructure, 1.5 uh, 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 billion. In the next slide, it's the reflection of expenditure pressures on compensation of employees dating from 2017-18. Uh, in 17-18 chair, we had a budget of 728, which had a variance of 44 million. And the snowball effect happened up until 1920 where we had uh, a budget of 827 uh, million. Uh, the expenditure though was 950. That left us with an uh, over expenditure of 123, uh, 123 uh, million, uh, which equated to unauthorized expenditure. Now that unauthorized expenditure will have to be uh, budgeted for. So the effect uh, on 2021 is that we are projecting uh, an expenditure of 1 billion. Uh, in this coming financial, in this financial year, which will leave us with a budget deficit of 136. And that has been contributed immensely by the escalation of uh, security leadership, which we have from level two to level three, that equated to 74 million, uh, which will be experiencing this year. And of course, the compensation of employees for traffic personnel 
uh, that would then result in, uh, to 69 uh, billion shares. In the next slide is the impact that the MEC has needed to that the process is antici anticipating the loss of revenue in the form of motor, uh, motor vehicle licenses and renewals, uh, applications of planners license and drivers uh, licenses, applications for, norma, uh, for abnormal gains. However, Chair, we have measures in place uh, to, as, as, as we were discussing, to say we should not be increasing our terms so that we are able to uh, re-inject on the relief for, for, uh, for, for, for communities and uh, those that are going to suffer as a result of this downward economic spiral, uh, which will find themselves unemployed. And also that will uh, be able to put us on a better position so that uh, when we are compared with other provinces in relation to uh, annual increment of fees, uh, we can then be able to be competitive and find parity. Uh, parity. Because uh, in the last financial year, we were amongst those that were at least higher in terms of our tariff uh, charges for fees. In the next slide, uh, it's the reflection of uh, an under budgeting under um, the payment of protection of revenue. The contract that we, we, we have with SAPO in this year is for 22 million. However, we budgeted 3.6. That will also have a budget deficit of 18.4 million, which will have to be looked into when we are going to be dealing with adjustment budget. We will humbly and highly plead uh, with uh, the consideration of increasing that budget. And uh, Chair, uh, currently we are sitting with uh, the debt under fleet management to a total of 30 million. And as things are standing, we are going to create an overspending of about 60 million. However, we were able to look at other means and other alternatives to say, let's look at machines that are not going to be productive, so that we then engage with the uh, fleet, uh, though understanding that it might have an impact in terms of their own budget and their revenue. Uh, however, on fleet that is not productive, we will have to defer it back and uh, try to subsidize it with a PRMG. I think I've alluded to the fact that 75 million, uh, which equates to 15 million per district, We'll be looking to. Uh, Chair, safe to indicate that the 202 million will, uh, for, uh, will forever remain a challenge with dates from 1819 as a result of unauthorized expenditure that is perpetuated by the effect of under budgeting on compensation of employees, which the MEC has already alluded to. Uh, in the next slide, Chair, it's a reflection of challenges uh, as a result of these cuts. I think from 110 million, which we we have on infrastructure enhancement adaptation. There will be a reduction on procurement of materials uh, that seeks to attend the uh, patching of roads, traveling and subsistence and so forth, which uh, had a reduction of 20 million. Uh, the reduction of budget for fee, 20 million. However, Chair, we had um, as a measure to mitigate, uh, identified at least about 23 graders, uh, which, which currently we found that uh, there might not be realizing any productivity or high level or optimal productivity levels uh, so, that it's, so, so that it can then be able to assist us to reduce the debt uh, going forward. Uh, the supplementary uh, fund which uh, was earmarked to subsidize Tabanchu with 18 million will also have to be deferred uh, back. However, the same project Tabanchu is also addressed through EPWP and supplemented through PRMG. So we'll still have to continue with that project, but the element of infrastructure enhancement allocation in order to complete that road as soon as possible has suffered a reduction of 18 million from that. Uh, safe to indicate that district will still be supplemented with equipment under the hiring of plan, which is funded uh, through PRMG uh, chair. Uh, it's unfortunate that we won't be able to utilize provincial road maintenance grant to pay uh, fleet directly. Uh, on accruals, in the next slide, on accruals and mitigation uh, uh, measures, I think the MEC has uh, um, indicated that there will be limited municipal support uh, as well as farming communities. And taking note that uh, we are going for local elections in 2021, uh, then there will be a serious need to increase or better fund infrastructure enhancement allocation. In as far as uh, portal repairs, uh, we have uh, seen a need to supplement the internal capacity 
as a result of shortage of staff and general workers in general, uh, we have budgeted 33 million from provincial road maintenance grant. Uh, that is going to be one of the new projects, uh, Chair, so that we are able to roll out that program uh, within our province. Uh, and, and we also take note that the allocation of budget and the reduction must uh, be informed by the economy uh, within the province. And we cannot emphasize the fact that road infrastructure is very critical, so that we are able to create job opportunities and attract investors and also try to supplement our agricultural sector as one of the, uh, uh, as one of the most contributing uh, economy within the state. Uh, Chair, lastly, because we have noted that infrastructure enhancement allocation is not funded uh, rent to rent with PRMG, which is a condition as aligned in the Division of Revenue Act, uh, there is a need that uh, we have to fund infrastructure enhancement allocation rent for rent with PRMG. Uh, that is what uh, is being seen uh, throughout other provinces, uh, where if uh, national uh, national uh, Department of Transport is allocating one billion. Then from the very same revenue, uh, there will be an injection of one, uh, one billion equally so that we are able to focus and prioritize the road infrastructure as the heartbeat of the economy. In the next slide, Chair, this is the reflection of the measures to mitigate the, uh, the overspending. I think uh, we, we had engaged as the department and uh, uh, we are of the view that this cost containment measures will have to be implemented and not only that, however, to be monitored and uh, to be monitored on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, the following are the areas which we are not going to be spending. Uh, that is catering except for the Office of the MEC and HOD, as well as stationary, rotary and cutlery equipment and furniture. Uh, that we have taken a decision to say we need to minimize expenditure. And secondly, Chair, we are not going to be filling any post in this financial year, uh, except for that, uh, if it is critical, it would then be engaged upon by the accounting officer, MEC, as well as uh, uh, provincial treasurer. Uh, over time, it's not going to be uh, accepted, except for traffic officials during COVID-19, which is budgeted for, and as well as uh, in December holidays. That also includes security management. Chair, lastly, uh, the cost-cutting initiatives that uh, uh, we have realized and the budget cuts are going to have an impact on the annual performance. Then, therefore, we plead that uh, there should be a need to revise the targets as well as the APP for 2021, uh, mainly affected by this COVID. Uh, Chair, I think I have reached to the end of the presentation. Thank you very much, and thank you to the MC. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Acting H HOD, uh, Mr. Tekiso. Honorable members, can I note uh, any other members who would want to get the clarity questions from the appropriation bill of uh, <clears throat> vote 10? Uh, I see the hand of uh, uh, Honorable, okay. It will be Honorable McLean Hans. It will be Honorable Khachau. It will be Honorable Majake. Myself. Honorable Khatebe. Honorable Meku. Uh, these are the only hands I see now. Uh, I think maybe members will indicate. Uh, in that in that sequence, honorable members, it's honorable uh, Madeleine Hans, then honorable Hachau, then after. <coughs> oh, sorry, honorable, uh, after honorable Hachau, uh, will be honorable Panfiren. Sorry about that. OK. And then lastly, it will be chair of chairs, honorable Woody. If I did not see you, Honorable Deputy Chief, we will indicate. Thanks, Honorable Metina. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, I've only got two questions, and the one is on the Provincial Secretariat 
of the police, which I believe is program two, um, the expenditure or the budget for that in the last year was 30 million, and it's now 24 million. Uh, if I'm reading this correctly, I don't have this presentation in front of me, so I'm just taking notes from what's on the screen. Um, so this is a loss of 20%. Uh, or 6 million as a result of the adjustment. I also noted that program two is not losing its catering allocation. So if we can just have an explanation of that, please. Uh, what catering are we talking about? And then also uh, how this 20% uh, loss is going to affect the work of the provincial secretariat. My other question is just about the 20 million for the collection of, of cash from the, the uh, uh, license officers, cash in transit. So my question is just um, what, how much is the, the cash which is collected um, through the expenditure of the 20 million? So I just want to compare how much are we spending if we are spending 20 million to collect more or less how much money. If um, I can just get clarity on that one. That's all for me. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Honorable Chahau, thank you, Honorable Metlina. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, good afternoon, Chairperson, to you, colleagues, Majume Aatarete. I only have three things to speak to, Chairperson. The first one has to do with the road maintenance budget. Uh, a budget. The provision made reflects a 4% loss or decrease in, 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 in allocation. So given that, we know that the national lockdown started on the 26th of March this year. This is just four days away from the start of the new financial year. And even on that day, the department had a backlog of projects that they hadn't completed, um, that had been budgeted in the previous financial year, but they hadn't completed nonetheless. So with COVID, that backlog of projects that weren't completed in the previous financial year but were budgeted for now fall into this financial year. This financial year um, uh, 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 um, was also supposed to deal with its own backlog. So my clarity-seeking question to the department is, to, is, 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 would the department please give us a breakdown of which of the projects that were supposed to be completed in the financial in the previous financial year are now going to be scooted over for completion in this financial year? The, these are road 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 maintenance um, specific projects. So that's the first thing, chairperson. The second thing I have, the second clarity seeking question I have relates to the 30 million fleet debt that the department has incurred. Will the department please clarify what that debt comprises of, where and how they plan to pay it back? How so? So specifically, how was it incurred? Why do they? Uh, uh, um, how how do they? How do they plan to 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 pay that amount? Amount and the 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 framework of settlement that they have. So that's the second thing. The third thing, chairperson, in the presentation there is no indication of how much the department has planned or allocated, but budgeted, budgeted for um, for rape kits in the province. We know um, that the province's record of rape kits is, is, is ridiculously terrible. And, and so in the previous financial year, there wasn't an allocation of budgets there. Um, not even 10% of the police stations in this province have um, the right um, number of rape kits necessary. So would the department indicate how they intend how and how much they intend to budget for 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 rape kits in the province. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honourable Majaska. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you very much, Chair, and uh, good afternoon to the MEC and the Antelas. Uh, and I must also put it on record, even myself, that uh, 
I apologize, I apologize for the previous uh, alterations and accepted apology from uh, Honorable Mick. <clears throat> I think that will be fair, Chair. Thank you. Chair, three, three issues. The first one, the MEC, when he opens, uh, on his opening remarks, he talks about testing stations. Uh, that they are closing their opening and all of that. I would want to find out how many testing stations we are upgrading in the province. Uh, how many are they? That's one. Uh, two chair. Uh, on the mitigations, on mitigations uh, measures, uh, except that the, the department will not, uh, the department will not uh, employ people in this financial year. Uh, I don't see a major, <clears throat> a major mitigating circumstances like uh, asking, for instance, this committee to consider a possibility of uh, revoking the penalty that is uh, set to the department by the provincial treasurer. I'm asking this question on the basis of uh, uh, the fact that this budget is going to create a crisis. That that granted, so no doubt about it, it's going to create a crisis. And uh, from where I'm sitting, I, I've already noticed that on the presentation there is a 202 million unauthorized expenditure and all of that. So is there any reason that makes that in the mitigating measures, the issue of revoking penalty uh, uh, imposed by provincial treasury on this department, uh, is there any reason why it is not there? in terms of trying to pursue the committee, maybe to look at it in, in different ways. We may accept, we may not accept. But I'm just asking that question. Uh, last week, as I step off, uh, isn't it time? Isn't it time because I can see we are having 1.2 billion for provincial road maintenance. We are having 1.3 uh, for capital road project and all of that. Isn't it time that uh, we as the free state uh, legislature government create an uh, state, create capacity on states, on us, to implement some of these uh, projects and get rid of uh, uh, middlemen, tendering and all of that? Is it not about time that we have a labor absorbing constructions of quality roads for all communities? And uh, obviously, it will employ many people in those communities who will maintain and ensure that there is a standard time, of sustainability. Your time, your time oh. keep in time now. Okay. Sustainability of roads and all of that. Uh, <laughs> And can't we investigate ways of helping tax industry financial, uh, finding concrete ways of protecting and promoting it into an effect, efficient public transport? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Majake. Uh, it will be Honorable Khatebe. No, thank you, Chair. Uh, and I do accede to, to the measures that has been put in place of uh, controlling the meeting through the three minutes and two minutes follow-ups. And I thought, uh, 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 Chair, when it comes to this one, uh, we'll also be given the opportunity actually to, to go to town when we talk to the economics of transport. Nonetheless, uh, I've got two questions uh, on slide six and uh, 12. Uh, slide six, there's a line item there, transport economic function. I'm not sure what does it entail. Because to me, I can't just get, get a sense as to when we're talking transport economics uh, and uh, the allocation, then there's contrast, so unless you, you give me as to what does it entail. And uh, secondly, you also attend to the 73% uh, 
of, of, of uh, increase. What is it that was done before, which exacerbated the department to actually go an extra mile? That's my first question. Two. I'm sorry, Chair. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, question two. Uh, it, it talks to the 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 hard heat uh, and the, the the loss of uh, revenue. We've been uh, hearing this uh, uh, rhetoric. Uh, we are hard hit. Uh, there's economic slowdown and so on. Well, uh, I'm not sure in which context is the department raising the issue of revenue loss as a hard hit. When you're talking the hard hit, it should be a relation of the society and resources as well of its production. Then we'll be able to can talk the hard hit of economy. Uh, Chair, we cannot talk the hard hit when the department is not giving us a sense in terms of benefits of transport, the benefit of the users and non-users, uh, the, the, the productivity effects of economy to that effect, the induced investment impact, the regeneration impact of the economy in the transport sector. Those are the issues that you wanted to hear when you're talking at it. Nonetheless, uh, 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 I wanted to expand uh, on this transport economy, economics, but however, you, 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 you have put some restrictions. Let me go further to find a clarity on the construction side. Uh, 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 we have discussed that because I guess from where I'm standing that there is a more detailed uh, information that is expected from government, from the committee. And I think I'm happy that that particular request is then made. Maybe in the future we should have more time so that we can discuss and say this is what is the, the, the meaning of the the. the, 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 the information with regard to the transport economics. Two is that we don't mean that, and I heard that um, uh, Honorable Saram Leleki raised the issue of maintenance of the station. The budget cut because the issue of the uh, infrastructure, you know, not included into the PRMG, which is the national grant. Part of the assistance in terms of that, it is basically coming from our own revenue enhancement. Basically, what we are saying is that because there is a cut on our own revenue enhancement, as a result of reduction with regard to the collection, that will impact on the maintenance. But then suffice to say that we will not stop to engage or deal with the maintenance area. In particular, the issue of the toilet ablutions, that will be considered, the issue of the stationary will be considered. It doesn't mean everything is going to stop, no. What we are basically indicating here is that we have this constraint, but we will make sure that we navigate through and deal with the issues that members, honorable members have just basically made. Two, let me come to the issue of the the online payment. When we discuss the payment, and I know that the side of Honorable Chair of Chairs, Honorable Booty, is that what have you put in place as the uh, department in terms of meeting a uh, national uh, pound for pound or run for run, if you may say so? I indicated from the beginning that one of the issues that we have looked at because not only the province, free state, will encounter a shortfall in terms of the revenue collection when it comes to the testing station. Let me clarify that point, is that under normal circumstances, 
the station, if you look at the bigger station, may take a certain number of people. But because of the regulations and the time frames that is there, you may not necessarily have to process those applications that you normally process under normal circumstances. That is one. Two, it is on the basis of that that we then said from the department said people that during the lockdown that cannot go there. A three months period has been given as a leeway to them so that they must not be found wanted. And we are saying that period will from time to time be looked upon by the minister to say, how do we navigate through? But the truth of the matter is that people that you normally saw at the different test station under normal circumstances, you will not be able to see that. And at the end of the day, that is going to impact on the revenue collection. And now I bring over the issue of the online uh, uh, payment, because maybe members do not know that most of the banks, as we speak now, do not allow uh, the companies that are paying for their own license to make they are actually uh, refusing to do that, to make a guaranteed check of more than 20,000. So then it becomes a problem for those checks to be processed. And one of the issues that will be assisting uh, us when we go towards the root of the oil, it will basically help because people will then be dealing with that matter automatically. This specific point, that Honorable Booty is raising to say, how far have you budget? That point, it's seriously been looked at because most of the departments, I mean, say most of the provinces have indicated that they do not have funds to be able to deal with that matter. And the RTMC has actually given us a, a, a promise or a guarantee that this will not impact on the a, a, a cost of the province. And these are the matters that have been clarified between the RTMC and also the National Treasury. But I think from where I'm standing, all the provinces, I think we agreed that we need to look at the online, even during now and beyond COVID-19. That will make people that will not be able to travel. Guess what? Let me make a typical example. Mr. X or Mrs. X is supposed to be quarantined and not going out. And that particular person has to process a particular payment to the Department of Transport. That person, because he's, she is locked down, cannot move out. So the online system that is there will assist that even the person that cannot move, but can use the online system to be able to process his or her own payment. So from the national point of view, I think the national department indicated that they are meeting with the treasury. And once we get that, we will be able to have that. But this particular project with the discussions that we had will not be processed you know, fully as it is. It will be taken in uh, stages so that every department must then, or every province must then gel into that type of a situation. Two, the issue of counseling honorable booty of employees, and I know exactly what you're talking about, because many of the police stations, I mean, so many of the testing stations experience some people that tested positive. And I think we take the point because we are working together with Department of Social Development. We are working together with Department of Health which are having the social workers that can be able to deal with counseling of those people. And I think that point is a point loud made, and I think we should, we should be able to, to deal with that. When it comes to the rape kits, that matter in the, in the police department, there is a unit that deals with violence against women and children abuse and the budget is slotted there what is basically happening there they then get into that space whenever a case is being reported they get into that space and then deal with the there is dedicated people 
that are dealing with that in the SAPS. Deal with that matter. And once they have completed a process in dealing with that particular person or a kit for that matter, that particular kit or a person is then referred to the Department of Social Development. That's why there is a linkage between the department, I mean, say SAPS and social department, social development department to deal precisely with victims of gender-based violence, including this, this issue of the, the rape kits. And I think I should make that point to say, indeed, it is clear uh, on that particular matter. But I want to indicate that when we say that's going to be a negative impact on the maintenance, it doesn't mean that there won't be maintenance at all costs. No, there will be maintenance. But the point that we're raising here is that the budget cuts has impacted the maintenance area, but we will continue to make sure that we carry our responsibility and make sure even those testing stations, Honorable Saram Leleki, that you are saying, there is a huge or a big grass there. We will continue to make sure that, and that's why the acting HOD earlier on made a point of using the uh, the grant that we are having to make sure that we assist even those areas where we are uh, 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 going to have that challenges with regard to the way our testing stations are having the challenge as a result of e e e COVID-19. I want to assure the committee that when we get into the when we get into the payment online, and I want to believe that this matter is being prioritized by the national department to say provinces has to be assisted with regard to revenue collection because it was seen upfront that indeed this is going to be a huge a huge challenge to the provinces with regard to that. So chair. I thought that I need to indicate those other areas to the members of the committee uh, in so far as how the department is going to carry out its mandate in moving forward. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Elisi. Uh, we, we, we are very happy and we know that it's very tough. Uh, we have heard from the National Treasury that the, the provinces have to use their own revenue that they have. So it's, it's very difficult. And thank you very much, Honorable MEC. And I also want to thank your entourage, Acting HOD, uh, Siabonga. Uh, can we, I yes. say one last chair? Can I say one last thing? From the comments of the members of the committee, I do not subscribe to issues of waiting for the other meetings uh, to be to sit down. There are other issues that are not necessarily of the appropriation bill that we care. My office and the department is open. Any member who has anything that he begins to realize on the ground, please don't hesitate. Talk to. And I know many members have been able to talk to me. And at all times, we are available to come to the space. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mrs. Paula. Members, can we have a move for Sita? Honorable Mesada? Chairperson, uh, with those words of, of the MEC and the, the HOD and the Detective Wall, uh, I want to say to them, uh, they have answered both of our questions, and those who they did not answer, if by mistake they remember, they will just note it down and uh, send to us. But I want to support the uh, budget changes. Thank you. Honorable members. Chairperson, before the department concludes, Honorable Chaha, may I have your permission to address you, Chair? The department has considered uh, Honorable Kakao. I don't know if you want to. I've already released the MEC, but maybe you can you can you can come in. Yeah, no, it's fine, Chair. I think this can still be communicated even though they've left. Chair, this has to do with the breakdown yeah, report that by that yeah. Chair, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, Chair. So it has to do with the breakdown report 
relating to the road maintenance that the department said they would afford the committee. Chairperson, can we just make sure that within seven working days we follow up to ensure that we get that report? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, it's not seven days, it's three days. We are working under an abnormal situation. Uh, yeah, so, that's a three days. Yeah. Was that. Thank okay. you, Chair. Any possible resolutions or recommendations? Honorable Mayor? Uh, you 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 made you note me while I was about to lower my hand. Uh, similar to other departments, I think issues have been raised, and the secretariat has noted. On my side, chair, nothing uh, uh, over and above that. All right. This is one department uh, I thought, uh, but I think we have, we have we have actually received most because it's the only department with huge revenues. And we are actually banking on the department as a problem. Uh, but they are trying their almost best. Uh, thank you. Honorable Matthew Hans, are you fine? Um, thank you, Chairperson. I just again want to raise the issue of the budget for catering for Program 2. I think that needs to be clarified. Um, oh. I, I don't think, how can they be doing catering and public meetings and awareness campaigns in a pandemic? They must explain what they mean by that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, sir. Honorable Chief, um, can I request that we can give you a written report in this regard? Um, we did not finalize all these the small items on the various programs. So as we are finalizing the annual performance plan, we will also finalize the items on the um, various programs. So I'll make those responses raised by Honorable Khao. Okay. Uh, honorable members, it seems as if the chair is experiencing a load shedding. Can you hear me? Honorable members, can you hear me? I can hear you. I hear you, Chair. I hear you, Honorable uh, uh, It's fine. Uh, we, we, we are going to pray for five minutes. I'm sharing now. Honorable members, we're going to uh, break for five minutes. Uh, the committee will resume thereafter. Uh, thank you, Honorable MEC and the delegation. Whatever outstanding information, in fact, will gladly accept it in writing. We'll interact with you after having uh, 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 dealt with issues pertaining to your department. Thank you once more. You are released. Chairperson? Hello? Hello? Uh, on our what, what, which department is next on the agenda? Uh, 
Public works in that day, yes, in that Steve. Okay. Thank that you. Steve, public works. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kakao. Honorable Khatebe, are we on a forced break? No, it was a request from the chair. We'll be coming back uh, at half past. Oh, okay. It's not a forced break, uh, Dagamama. Oh, I guess I need a general thanks. Okay, Manam.
Uh, welcome back, honorable members. I'm sorry for that. I was affected by the log shading. Uh, we, I think we are all ready. We can all start without any waste of time, honorable members. We are now having department the second last yeah, this department vote uh, nine and then vote 13, human settlement. It's Department of Public Works. Uh, uh, honorable members, Dr. Uh, Rometsi. Do we have our, our guests with us? Honorable MEC and uh, HOD, uh, have they joined? I had, I had just found them. Uh, Earlier, just to check where they are, they were, they were saying that they were preparing themselves just to, to, to log in. But I said to them, they must try to log in as from half past one. I'm sure, but, but, but they, let me just check this one check. Let's check them. Uh, Honorable MEC or HOD Public Works, can I get an indication that you are present so that we can start? Your mic, your mic, Honorable MEC. Can they press your mic? Thank no, you. No, I've admitted it. Good afternoon, Chairperson and Honorable Members. Let me indicate to the house that I had locked in chain. Thank you very much. Uh, is your HOD here and uh, other officials? Yes, yes I, I was. was I was watching. I was speaking to them some few minutes ago when the Department of Police Rules was still busy. I am not Okay, okay. Oh, honorable members, uh, this is honorable uh, MEC from Public uh, Works. Uh, Honorable MEC, let, let me welcome you and uh, also welcome the HOD. Where are you, Honorable? Uh, the HOD. Sir, if it's okay with you, can can I read uh, who are the members of the delegation that they have sent for us to appear before the committee? Will it be fine? Yes. 
Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Members. Good afternoon, MEC. I'm just reading the list that we have forwarded to the committee. Oh. For those that will be appearing before the committee. Including your good self, MEC, and Mr. Ernest Mushasa, the H acting HOD, Ms. Neo Tati, acting F CFO, Mr. Mora, the, the, is the Chief Director, Works and Maintenance, then Mayor Masiho Chabalala, Chief Director, EPWP, Mr. Freddy Tokwe, Chief Director, PMU, Ms. Gladys Zake, Chief Director, Admin, Mr. Cesar Mtolo, Chief Director, Research and Monitoring and Evaluation, Ms. Lebo Kumalo, Responsible for Properties, Mr. Stan Diakos, Director, HRM. These are the officials together with the MEC that they gave us the list of them. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, I'm sure MEC you will also indicate because your department is in two folds, but for now we are focusing only on public works. Those who, are, who form part of the human settlement will not come now. Uh, I, I don't know where is the HOD. Honorable Chair, if I may assist. Honorable Chair. Yes, I, man, I'm, I managed to get hold of the HOD's office. They were still struggling with connection, but surely he will be with us very soon. He connected earlier. He was appearing here. Why now he's not appearing? He has been That's appearing. That's correct. Since... <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Why, when he's supposed to be here now, he disappears? Honorable MEC, maybe in light of waiting for your HOD, can we allow you to give us an opening remark and also greet on, on all honorable members because uh, they, they are here, uh, Honorable Madeleine Hans, Honorable Chacham, Honorable Mesara Muleleke, Deputy Chief Whip, Honorable Majake, Honorable Chair of Chairs, uh, Honorable Van Firen, uh, Honorable Meku, uh, and who else? Uh, I'm sure Honorable Diva Smith is also here, uh, uh, and all of us. Thank you, thank you, MEC. Uh, thank you very much, a person. Before I can start with the political overview, let me indicate that the HOD had just logged in. He managed to, to log in HOD and as the massage. Without any waste of time, let me acknowledge your presence as the chairperson and honorable members that are here, chairperson. And I would also love to welcome and acknowledge the invite that I submitted to the Department of Public Works today. Chairperson, let me indicate to the House that today the Department of Public Works will be presenting before the committee the budget of 2020-21, of which the budget will focus mainly on the payment of rates and taxes and services of the municipalities. But upfront also, it is quite very imperative, Chair, to indicate that the department had spent its hundred we had spent hundred percent of our budget. However, the department is faced with challenges of paying municipalities because the budget allocation that we receive from provincial treasury does not accommodate entirely the municipalities that we are owing. But uh, subsequent to that, Chairperson, 
I think and believe it is very imperative to report to the committee that the municipalities that the department is owing at the, at the moment is Mangawung, Malutiapofu, Machabeng, and the entity that is St. Lake. However, the department had committed itself on the payment plan. We had managed to come up with the payment plan that was even approved by the executive council. Furthermore, Chair, the budget will also focus on the refurbishment of the resort on behalf of the distillery around the pandemic pandemic that is COVID-19 that we all know we are faced with. Also around the security. The department is expected to ensure that it also pay the security. And again, the budget that will be tabulated before the committee will again focus around the TRPs. But there are challenges, Chair, on the TRPs. During this current financial year, the 2020-2021, the department will be only will only be able to can accommodate only five TRPs in the year 2020 and 2021. Now, this is the challenge that the department is faced with. And like I had indicated, the quarantine facilities on behalf of the department of the STIA, that is the, that is the results. The department had incurred most of its budget on such facilities. And I will therefore request Honorable Chair to allow the officials to present the budget of 2021, despite the fact, despite the fact and the challenges that one had just alluded to earlier on. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, MEC. Uh, we will then take this process to Mayor Ramotiba. Mayor uh, who is going to take us through our rituals. Uh, <clears throat> Mayor Ramotiba. Thank you, Chair. Legal advice? Okay. Thank you. I can hear me. Can I see you, please? Thank you. Please guide me as to who will be taking an oath and affirmation. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. Uh, my apologies for glitches with the login. Uh, I'm going to be taking an oath together with the acting CFO, Meneo Tlazi, and two other officials, which is Ntates uh, Ten Diakos, as well as Member Seho Chavala. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Let's start with you. Would it be an oath or an affirmation? An oath. Please state your names for the record. Do you swear what you're about to tell the committee is the truth and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you, Dr. Mishasha. Mesha Balala. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Will it be an oath or an affirmation? Oath. Please state your full names for the record. Maseho Benedicta Chabalala. Do you swear what you're about to tell the committee is the truth and nothing but the mm -hmm. truth? If so, please you raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you, Mayor. 
acting CFO? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Will it be an oath or an affirmation? An oath. Please state your full names for the record. Do you swear what you're about to tell the committee is the truth and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Chairperson. Are you not leaving the other person? Did I leave someone behind? It's, it, I think it's all the officials, uh, pardon me. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mep Salifo, thank you. Let's then take uh, straight to the HOD to give us the presentation. I'm sure they will share with us so that we see it on the screen. The mic is off, HOD. Sorry, sorry, Chairperson. I was saying the... You are, uh, you are not can... yourself today, HOD. HOD, you are not yourself today. Are you fine? <laughs> I, I am fine, Chairperson. Uh, I was just from another meeting of the Provincial Command Center on COVID, so I'm not feeling well because of the news that I get there. But uh, I will, I will, I will relax shortly. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. Uh, Meneo is going to present. Uh, Chairperson, thank you. CFO. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Um, can you just give me a couple of seconds, just that I load the document. Um, Chair, I'll just request for you to indicate if you can yeah. see the presentation for the screens. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Chair, uh, we'll be presenting the appropriation bill. Uh, for the sake of time, I'll just go straight to the slides that we need to highlight to the committee, and then we'll take the questions thereafter. Chair, I'll move to slide number four of the presentation. Chair, the slide is just basically to show um, the allocation for the department. Um, under 2021, the initial main allocation we got was 1.8 1 .8 billion. But after the revision that had to take place in terms of the budget, we, we were then uh, had to reduce, or our budget was reduced to uh, 1.7 billion. Um, but the next slide will basically be a breakdown of all the information that's on this slide, Chair. Um, then I'll move on to the next slide. The next slide basically shows the priorities of the department for the 2021 financial year. Um, Chair, if, I, if you allow, I can just go straight now to the slide six, which shows now budget per program. You'll okay, see, Chair. Uh, uh, sorry, acting CFO, I see a hand of the HOD. Yes, Chair. Yes. Um, a chairperson, I was just saying, Meneo, if she can just move the slides so that the members can follow. Thank you. From my side, it looks like it's moving. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's also moving on my side. I think I think it's fine. No, members will okay. just indicate. Uh, Chair? Mm -hmm. Honorable oh, I saw your hand, Honorable Kakao. Sorry. Hey, Chair, I think the slides are moving, but the PowerPoint is not in PowerPoint form. So, if so, I request that the the acting CFO just maximizes the 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 size of 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 the slide. So down there, next to the minuses and the minuses, there's something that looks like a cup. If she could just press on it, not the the cup. Yes, just press on the cup. Ah, man, how you are still young, man. You can see these things. 
No, Chair. It's, it's, I also still can't see with my young eyes. If you press this the cup, there's... No, no, press yeah. again. Slide show. There it Slide is. Show. Yeah. There it is. Is it, is it better now? Yeah, it's the one. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, CFO. You can continue. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. Thank you very much for that. Um, Chair, as I was saying that, um, I'll then be on slide number six, which is the budget now per split per, per, per program. You'll see, Chair, it's uh, in the first column there, it's for the 1920 financial year, and then the next one. Sorry? We want to see you, young CFO. We want to see you. Can I? Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Chair, is everything okay now? Do you see this presentation and do you see my face? We want to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Chair, as I was saying that um, the slide, slide number six is in the the budget split per program. Um, there's the column for 1920 and then 2021. You'll see for administration, we have 135 million. And then for the program number two, which is the public works infrastructure, it's 1.5 billion, which is the program that takes the bigger chunk of our budget. And then the third program is then the EPWP. Next slide, Chair, is the budget per sourcing of fund funding. You'll see on the 2021, under column 2021, the voted funds, we allocated 1.1 billion. And then for the rates and tax enhan enhancement allocation, it's 436 million. This is for the rates and taxes for the municipalities. I believe the MEC in her opening remarks, she did touch on that. And then the next one is the infrastructure enhancement allocation, which is 30 million. Then the EPWP integrated grant for the province, it's 6.2 million. Then you'll see here on the revenue enhancement allocation, there is nothing budgeted for this current financial year. Then we have the COVID-19 response fund, which is 64 million. I think the 64 million will then, there's a slide there which shows basically how it's broken down, but we'll get into that later on. Chair, the next slide. It's per economical classification, which shows the compensation of employees for 2021, 429 million. The goods and services you'll see in comparison of 1920, uh, we've, we've, we've reduced. So now it's 725. Then the provincial and local governments, it's 436. Then your departmental agencies and, and accounts, it's 5 million. Household share, it's it's 4.6 million, sorry. And then buildings and other infra, uh, fixed structures, it's 66. Then machinery, machinery and equipment, it's 5.4. All in all, total, it's then it gives you the 1.7 billion, which is allocated to the department. Chair, on slide number nine, um, it's the EPWP non-infrastructure projects for 2021. This is... Uh, it's for the it's for the different programs there, which is the cleaning and greening, cash for waste, um, your com community worker stipends, contractor development, and national youth services. When we did the budget cuts, chair, I just want to mention these projects. We didn't cut on them because I think Member Seho and maybe the HOD will speak more onto it. It's that one for the which we used to for to pay the participants on the EPWP projects. So on these ones, we pay through grants and we did not touch the budget when we had to reduce. Next slide, Chair, this one shows that for the 2021, under the infrastructure project, the one that we had planned, new structure, we won't be doing it anymore, which is the community halls. We've then deferred it to the next financial year. Next slide will be other um, upgrades and additions on the infrastructure projects. You'll see for the 2021, uh, the biometrics and CCTV, the first one, we, we're not going to do it. It's deferred to the next financial year. 
but there's also a biometric system for the Fidel Castro and the Oar Tambo building, which is 2.5, 2.5 million each. Um, these ones is for the CCTV cameras that have has to be installed in those two buildings. Then you'll see, Jay, then the other projects that will be taking place or that we're planning to do thereof. It's the Oar Tambo, uh, the fourth floor and eighth floor upgrading, Tusanon office, Tabancho, Fidel Castro, Opis, Community Hall, and the Community Hall upgrade, sorry, and then the Oar Tambo, first floor, uh, the storeroom upgrading of it. Chair, the slide also continues is for the infrastructure projects, but these are the rehabilitation and refurbishments. It's then the Fidel Castro plant room, Fidel Castro, uh, and then the Copano building, Coco offices, I think the list is there, Chair, whereby you can see that with some of the projects like your Fidel Castro r and we won't be doing it this financial year. We had to reprioritize it. It will be deferred to the next financial year. And the Coco Office's re rehabilitation, we won't be doing it in this financial year. But these other ones, Chair, you can see that the, we, we budgeted for them, so we're planning to, to, come to, to do them this financial year. And the slide continues, it's still the infrastructure project. It's the Redesberg House for Agriculture. I think the first two is for Agriculture, Redesberg, and the small field. Then it's the Education and Sasa buildings. All these we're planning to do this year, and you can see here that there the is budget allocated for all those projects. Next chair, it's the slide number 14. This is the infrastructure projects, the maintenance thereof. Um, for the government facilities, you can you will see there on the source of funding. It will be the equitable share for the first for the first one, which is the 7.6 million, and then the next one, the infrastructure enhancement allocation, will be for the 10 million. But these other ones here, which is the copies, Harib copies, Philip Sanders, Sanfeld, Sudori, Jason Defir, and Willem Pretoria. These are the results that the department is doing on behalf of Gistia. Uh, so as as you know, Chair, that as public works, we provide in the quarantine site. So these projects are there of that we maintain in this, um, not as refurbishing these buildings uh, so that they can be handed over to health in, in assistance of the quarantine sites. Um, Chair, I'd just like to mention, um, if you do a calculation of these results, you'll see that doesn't amount to the 64 million that we've been allocated for, for the budget for the COVID-19. The 64 million is for these projects. And then we also facilitate the private security to the private accommodations that we provide as public works. And there's the condition assessments that were done on these projects, on these facilities thereof. And then there's also the disinfection of offices. So all those chair, the amount to the 64 million we've been given by provincial treasury. Chair, when we get to the township revitalization projects, you'll see that most of our, it's like 15 to 17, you'll see that most of our TRPs, we won't be doing them. I think as a department, we had planned to do 26, but because of the reprioritization that we had to do, we'll only be doing four, and this four, it's the one that's emanating from the previous financial year. Those projects are Allen Ridge, Odendals Res, Aling, uh, sorry, and then Botabel. The next one will appear in this in this slide, the stems race. And then all the other ones, Chair, you can see that there's no budget, so we had to reprioritize our funding. Chair, um, the slide 18, slide 18 to slide 9, 20, sorry, it talks, it's still the TRPs, but the training thereof. So because the projects won't be taking place, the training is linked to this. So we won't be able to do the training also. So I'll just move through the these slides because it's linked to the previous ones. Um, Chair, the last slide, which will be on the revenue, the department we had budgeted for 82 million for this financial year, but uh, we had discussions with provincial treasury whereby we did indicate that we won't be able to collect all the 82 million that we had budgeted for initially. 
due to the pandemic that we in. And then Provincial Treasury did indicate that they will reconsider the reduction that we had proposed to them during the October adjustment. Chair, next slide. Oh, that was the last one. If I may, Chair, thank you very much. I think I'll just hand over to the HOD. Thank you, CFO. <clears throat> HOD, is there anything to add or should we continue with members? Oh, we can continue with members, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I have noted a hand of uh, Honorable Khachau. Honorable Khachau, members. Uh, no, that's uh, Honorable Khar Radebe. Honorable Metlena. <coughs> Honorable Meku. Honorable Mesa Moleki. Honorable Van Firen. And Honorable Chair of Chairs, Honorable Booty. In that sequence, Honorable Members, thank you. Honorable Khachau. Thank you, Chairperson. And thank you to the, o to, uh, to the acting CFO for the presentation on behalf of the present, uh, on behalf of the department. Chair, I have four questions. The first one relates to the information given on slide seven. On the slide. Majake, I've noted you, sorry. Honorable Majake, you are noted. Thank you, Honorable Khachau. Okay, thank you, Chair. So, yeah, Chair, so my first question relates to slide seven. The breakdown there speaks to the budget breakdown for source of funding. So, the, the classifications there show that prop rate and tax enhancements allocation weighs more than the infrastructure in enhancement allocation for the department. Could the department just give clarity on what informed this and what the, the breakdown of why is it that that breakdown is so deep or so, so, so much? So the, the, the difference between the allocation is, is quite a lot. So I would like to, to, to understand how that is the case. I also note that the COVID response funds also amount more than the infrastructure enhancement allocation in the department. So um, can we get clarification on why the breakdown looks that way? Why, what informed that decision? The second question deals with slide seven, slide eight, the next slide, Chairperson. So when you look at the classification on building and other fixed structures, you look at that in conjunction with provincial and local governments, um, the, the breakdown there, together with other compensation of employees, you get to realize that the compensation of employees literally is um, more than double the amount of money uh, allocated for building and other fixed structures. So can we, can we, can we get a breakdown or a clarification from the department on why is it that this looks the way it does? Um, yeah, so, 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 so why? And then the third question is on slide 14, Chairperson. Slide 14 deals with the maintenance project that the department has undertaken in response to COVID. So these are your quarantine and your isolation facilities that the department is supposed to have up and running. These facilities are, have up until the uh, end of March um, year to be... Oh, Jay, how So just a, a date breakdown on, on those on those facilities. So when do they intend to, to finish them? Because my understanding is that they're supposed to be finished for COVID. So it can't be that end of March next year, we still have to deal with the maintenance of these these, these buildings. The last one, Chairperson, just the date owed to municipalities. 
I saw on slide eight, they showed the provincial and local government amount that has been allocated, how much of that amount deals with the debt that the municipality owes to municipalities, the department owes to municipalities. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Honorable, uh, Honorable Metlina. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm just looking at slide number six. Um, where you've got the budget per program, and we can see here that the program EPWP has been cut by 100 million from last year. This is absolutely devastating. Our people out there, we've just read a survey that has came, came out yesterday or the day before, which said that 3 million people in South Africa have lost their jobs. Most of them are women um, since the, the initial lockdown. Um, people are actually now starting to starve. We've got widespread hunger everywhere. And this EPWP program was did bring a huge amount of relief to unemployed people who had no other option. Now, if you think that the EPWP program was only 45 rand, it's roughly 45 rand per day. So I'm absolutely devastated to see this figure here. Isn't there anywhere else that we can at least keep up that program to the amount that we had last year? Um, to add 100 million there, I, I don't know where it's going to come from, and it's an impossible situation, but if there is anywhere that we can cut to bring some relief to the people who are now truly hungry, I would urge that the department will please look at that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Plenums. Honorable Majake. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Can, can the slide be removed, Greg? Uh, <laughs> I prefer watching myself on TV. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the last time we did uh, Thank you very much, uh, IT and, and the chair. Chair, three things. So I want to, to sum up my issues. Firstly, I will request the department to I will request the department to pay municipalities. As a person who comes from there, I know how much we rely on that money in terms of what must happen in municipalities. So I will, I will plead and urge that you uh, do everything possible from your side as the department to pay municipalities. Uh, and I want to appreciate that almost 96% of the municipalities are paid. It's only uh, 4 or 5% which constitute those municipalities mentioned there, Yomanga, Umarita, Popu, Machabi, and Sentlo. So I, I want to appreciate the fact that at least uh, 96 or so percent of municipalities have been paid. Secondly, Chair, isn't it about time that we, we need to abolish uh, EPWP and absorb these people in, 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 in various government departments, uh, in various municipalities where they reside and all of that? Isn't it a, a right time that we should, we should do that? Taking into account the question of COVID-19 and all of that, with the stipends that they're getting, when when the when the thinking in the in the country is living wage and all of that, can can is it not the right time? Can't we turn the corner and perhaps uh, abolish PWP and absorb them? Lastly, chair, as I stop off on the issue of community halls, ish. I will, I will, I will ask you and uh, try to pursue the department to look it in another way. 
it is important for community, our communities to have community halls. Look, in the past, we, the communities, we relied so much on schools, halls, and all of that. With an understanding that uh, uh, schools are centers of community, but uh, with challenges that schools are facing nowadays in terms of collect, collection of revenue and, and all of that, the price that they charge our communities are exorbitant. Uh, a school next to my house, uh, if we are to go and hire a hall there, it's, uh, it's, it's exorbitant. So I will, I will urge that uh, let that community halls, uh, building of community halls continue and all of that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Majaki. Honorable Khadebe. Uh, thanks, Chair. Very quick, two questions. Uh, the first one is on slide four. If my memory serves me well, and uh, it speaks to the line item, earmarked revenue. I'm not sure this earmarked revenue is what you're going to collect or what does the items talk to? And the secondly, it, it increased from a million to 51.8 million. Uh, 51 .8 million. Uh, can you give motivation as to why this uh, exorbitant is some kind of a jump in terms of the increment? Uh, two, uh, the budget processes, there are steps to follow. You assess the variance before the actuals and the budget figures. You identify and prioritize business needs and objectives. And the last thing you do, there's some kind of a focus, focus and evaluating income revenue. Now, I just want to understand, based on the questions that have been asked, uh, uh, decrease and increase and all of that, is it within the confinement of the process steps of the budget? Or, or was it a, a pressure coming from uh, the widespread pandemic that we are faced with? I pause, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Meko. Chair, thank you. Let's, let's welcome the presentation and the entourage, MEC and the team. Um, five questions, but very short, Chair. Uh, straight to the question. Number one, on the infrastructure enhancement allocation, there's a reduction of 77 million. Uh, this is specifically the township revitalization budget. Uh, why so much decrease? Was there nowhere you could find the saving? That's, that's question number one. Question number two, Chair, is on the quarantine sites. If, if, if the MEC could just give us a, a precise and concise perspective of the department, where are they now? Uh, are we able to secure enough? I think that's per the plan and anticipation. Uh, and, and is the budget allowing us to do so? And I will cut it there, Chair, so that I don't, I don't, I don't waste my time. The issue of municipality debt has been raised. I'm covered. But I think the detail, Chair, is that uh, uh, I know that public works takes, assumes the burden of the entirety of provincial government. The debt is not only responsibility of public works. Are they able, Chair, to just give us a sense of it? Who are the main culprits here and on which services in terms of that particular debt? Uh, the other one, Chair, EPWP, I'm covered, but I think my, my angle is that uh, these cuts, uh, does it entail that we are going to reduce the future intake or people are going to have to be released from the project? Uh, I wouldn't agree that uh, EPWP people must be employed full time because the conceptual basis of EPWP then will be missed and contradicted. Uh, and I don't want to waste time Chair, to explain it. I'm sure MEC will explain it quite better, but I'm worried that during the time when the country is struggling to balance between saving lives and the economy, it becomes us government who also contributes negatively towards our people losing small stipends, 
uh, of course, for them to survive. If they are going to sit home, we've got problems. But I'm sure I'm willing to understand when the HOD, acting CFO, and, and the MEC uh, deals with it. Lastly, Chair, uh, I did not pick up, probably if uh, acting CFO would have indulged us or me, uh, to give us the percentage of salaries to the budget. Uh, I know that I have a question, Chair, but uh, I think my question is historical, Chair. My passion around that issue is historical. The, the big chunk of all departmental budgets are going towards uh, the salaries. And I think it's an issue that uh, uh, it may not be for discussions now. And that's why I would fundamentally disagree that EPWP people must be as um, consumed uh, to department for full time and all of that. But if I could get that percentage, I don't have ca capacity where I'm seated to calculate it, Chair. Uh, but we compiling that statistics department by department says that at the later stage, as a committee, we need to build an argument and a perspective in terms of how we think government must be restructured and we must relook really look into the issue of uh, uh, these salaries. Thank you very much, Chair. Maybe just to give it a write up, uh, CFO, the Honorable Member wants to know the percentage of the COE in terms of your department. Uh, and then it will be Honorable Mesara, and then after that it's Honorable Fanfire, and then Honorable Buti. Percentage, I think I have only uh, three questions. One is the, uh, maybe the department, if you can tell, yeah, oh, I want to agree the MEC and the HOG and the, in the interage of the MEC. And uh, I also want to welcome the presentation. Number one is the building and other structures that they have mentioned there. I just want to ask which one, which one uh, are, are being rented out and which one are being sold. And those are being rented, are they paying every month? And uh, those are being sold, uh, or did the department buy the new or other houses or, or uh, so that they must have? A, 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 a good structures. The, the the other one is the EPWP. I think I'll I'll concur with Honorable Majaki. For those who have long service as EPWP into uh, 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 officials, maybe few of them, ten or or twenty, uh, each each in every area. They can be taken full time, and those who are new, they will be also taken maybe after two, three years from now, so that uh, the department should prepare itself. But the issue of them to be uh, part-time all the time, uh, it, is, it is discouraging. Uh, maybe uh, if the department can, can think about it and maybe implement that if they have, they have uh, uh, money and maybe advise the municipality also to do that. Uh, I think that, that that is my contribution, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Sarah. Thank you, Honorable Member. Honorable Fanfiren. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, and let me welcome the presentation. My first question is on accruals. Um, if, if we can get an indication on the total amount of accruals, but if they can split it then from... from uh, the amount owed to municipalities and the difference there. Uh, they did address us on the municipalities and the debt owed to municipalities, if we can get that total amount. But my concern, Chair, is Mangahung is the, is the first metro in the country that has been placed under administration. I know the outstanding debt owed to them by government departments is about 1.8 billion rand. Of that 1.8 billion, what does this department owe Mangaung specifically? Why I'm asking this is their outstanding debt is around about 700 million. So if 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 they get 700 million, they sort of out of the clear in owing uh, their debts to water board, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is quite an important factor for me. Then on slide 14, the the Philip Sanders. 
I know there's 6.1 million in terms of COVID being spent there, but they are still busy with, I think, a court case in trying to recover some of the money from the previous implementing agent. And that can be seen as a, a potential income also. How far are we in that process in finalizing that, the recovery of that money? Chair, and then I welcome the fact that they actually reprioritize money away from training. And that's exactly the, the, the point that was made, I think, by Honorable Klein as the previous, in the previous department, where there's a lot of money being spent on training this year. This year, we can't spend money on training. We, the, the, it's not the, the, a normal situation, and we need to change that. So I think all the departments actually had to think differently. That's why I was also cross about the, the erecting of uh, the statue, because we need to f think differently during this time. And I welcome that, um, contrary to a lot of the other departments. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Chair, thank you, Honorable Van Fieren. Uh, thank you once more, uh, Chief Whip of the Legislature and of the ANC, uh, the Chair of the PROPEC, and the Chair of the very new committee of ad hoc. Uh, your titles are so many, they will take uh, the entire three minutes that you've allocated me. <laughs> And uh, greetings to the MBC and the acting HOD. My question is... see you. The MBC said she can't see you. No, no. The MBC must leave that. She can't pick up my calls. <laughs> uh, number is forever off. I don't know. She has decided to block me or, or, or what. So she can't no, expect to see my face. Contact. I have a new contact. I'll leave it with the chair. Please, my dear sister, let me get them. Nothing can separate us, man. Yes, yes. I will. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Chair. Let me just shoot straight. Uh, it is indicated that uh, the department has earmarked a revenue, that the revenue will increase from uh, 1 million to, to 51.8 million. Now, can we just simply get uh, the details as to what uh, motivates uh, that uh, uh, a huge increase. Uh, secondly, on slide five, Chair, uh, compensation of employees is indicated that uh, uh, your compensation of employees shows the highest increase of all economic classification. Uh, what happened? Are there new positions that were added on the structure? Uh, just a straightforward question. And lastly, Chair, our municipalities are having trouble in terms of raising revenue, and uh, we see a huge decrease on municipal services. Uh, why is this so? Uh, just a general question, Chairperson. But other than that, I welcome the, the presentation, and I understand the condition under which the, the budget is being set. Maybe if we could just get those simple technical questions that are raised, and from there, I also wish to move that we we we, are, we consider the budget uh, chairperson. I think they they are trying their level best uh, to to drive this ship moving forward. Uh, thank you, chairperson. Thank you, chair of chairs. Uh, HOD, can we respond to questions? If uh, MEC also wants to come in, she will indicate. Th thank you, Chairperson. Um, I'm going to be quick and uh, I will indicate where additional information will be. The department, we try our utmost best to ensure that we reinvest as much as possible a budget towards rates and taxes because this is where we pay the municipalities for, for the rates and taxes. So I think it's a good thing that... Uh, you know, this expenditure is very high because it ensures that we get the maximum possible to municipalities. Uh, the other issue was, why is the COVID response also very high? This is a once-off once expenditure that uh, necessitated the withdrawal of the previous, uh, you know, uh, appropriation bill in response to the pandemic. And obviously, because it's a once-off uh, expenditure, uh, you know, and we are looking at the plans in relation to provision of quarantine sites, uh, the expenditure is what 
or the expenditure or the budget was informed by the condition assessment report that were done to say in order for us to refurbish Philip Sanders, this is how much is, is required. In order for us to refurbish uh, Velen Pretorius, this is how much is required. So the, the, the budget there was informed by the condition assessment in as far as co uh, quarantine sites are concerned. Um, and, and, and also, you know, other elements that the CFO spoke to around the disinfection of buildings and the PPE that is now necessary for us to, 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 to have as we go to work. I will go to slide eight. Uh, what is the percentage of the COE? Uh, it is 23%, <clears throat> which is in line with, uh, you know, the norm of 25%. So we can actually have this expenditure growing up to 25, but we are doing our best to cap it within 25 and as low as possible. So hence our expenditure is 23%, which is uh, highly acceptable. Um, now the maintenance budget, why is it, is it so small? It is because of the fact that as public works, and the question always comes from members to say, we see that uh, most of our buildings are not being properly maintained. You know, your schools, your, your, your hospitals, and, 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 and other you know, facilities. Now, public works is not responsible for the entire maintenance budget of the province. We are only responsible for few uh, buildings, and the major maintenance budget is sitting with various departments. And we are also not implementing on behalf of these departments because your, your, your maintenance budget and expenditure, uh, it is normally less than 15 million. Now, each and every project which is below 15 million is done at a departmental level. So if it is a hospital and there is a, you know, some work that needs to be done and they are, the cost is below 15 million, is done by health, they appoint contractors, they manage the project, they pay. So we are not involved. So in a nutshell, the expenditure budget is this small because of the fact that as public works, we are only responsible for a few of our, you know, properties that are owned by, by government of the free state. Now, with regards to the, uh, the quarantine sites, um, if, if, if I could share, um, <clears throat> I will show the, 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 the committee that all these quarantine sites that we are talking about, the resorts uh, that we are talking about, all of them have been completed. We have done the work. And I think it's for the first time in the department that we are able to do the work of that magnitude in, in, in a very, very short period of time. So um, I think as I'm responding to the questions that are following, I will just share uh, just the pictures just to show you, but I will respond to others and I'll just scroll so that the members can see the kind of work that we have done. Because we took pictures of these facilities before we started to say what was the, the condition on the ground in relation to the bathrooms, uh, in relation to the electricity supply, in relation to how the, 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 the chalets were. So we have a full portfolio of evidence that we can provide to, to this committee that shows the quantum of the work done. And we confirm to this committee that the seven resorts are completed. We have done everything, and they are now being uh, put to use by the Department of, of Health. They were all finished by the end of June, 30 June uh, this year. Now, with regards to the debt to municipalities, <clears throat> the MEC has indicated that we try our best to pay all the municipalities, including those where we are having high outstanding debts, which are the three municipalities and the one entity, Malutia Pofu, Mangaung, and, uh, and, and, um, and Machabi. Uh, now, we are paying them consistently. I know there is a question later on around how much is owed to Mangaung. We will provide it in writing so that we don't guess the figures. 
But what I can confirm to the Honorable is that on a monthly basis, we pay Mangaung the current account. And we also have a plan, a payment plan, where we have agreed how much of the arrears we are going to pay on a monthly basis. And since the beginning of March, or the end of March this year to date, we have kept to that uh, arrangement and we've been paying. So we'll provide that information to the committee in writing. Now, um, uh, stepping off uh, Honorable Hachau to go to Honorable Kleinhans in relation to the EPWP, um, uh, you know, reduction of 100 million. This reduction was informed by the COVID response. So initially, as we as we budgeted as the the municipality, uh, sorry, as the the province, we we we, we had all these uh, TRPs planned for implementation, uh, but uh, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we have to move funds uh, towards this COVID-19 expenditure, and this was an instruction from Treasury. As the department, we did not have an option. The provincial treasurer was saying to us, public works from your infrastructure budget cut by 100 million. Uh, so this is exactly what we have done because of the fact that we we had to find funds, you know, somewhere to uh, contribute to what, uh, towards COVID-19. However, uh, it is important to mention that some of the EPWP jobs are still secured under the Department of Health. For example, in the quarantine sites, we have appointed EPWP people to, to work there and clean these quarantine sites that are state-owned. The Department of Education, in this uh, going back to, to school program, they have also appointed EPWPs to clean and disinfect the schools. So there are some jobs that are being saved uh, from other departments. Now, is there an opportunity for us to consider TRPs in the near future, in the current year? Yes, the, um, the commitment that we received from EXCO is that come the adjustment budget process in November, the Department of Health has been given most of the savings that uh, were allocated to, to, to different departments towards COVID-19 you know, pandemic. And the commitment of EXCO is that if the Department of Health fails to save or fail to spend 100% of what is given to them, or they realize some savings that can be taken back to various departments, EPWP will be the, be the first recipient through the TRP implementation. So I am hoping that come the adjustment budget, perhaps maybe there will be some funds that we can save uh, or that, that that will be redirected back to public works for EPWP uh, under TRPs. Now, uh, going to the questions, uh, Honorable Majaki, municipalities, we pay them religiously every month. However, we have budgetary constraints with Mangaung and Malutia Pofung and others, as explained, but we continue to pay them on a monthly basis. And we also have a payment plan in place where we are not able to pay the full account. And, and we take note of the issue around the community halls that in future we should also, you know, ensure that it is part of the plan of the department for the next five years. And I'm sure the MEC has taken note of that comment. And Member Soko will come in around all the issues of EPWP around, you know, absorption and other issues that were, were raised. I don't want to, to say much on that. And then when I go to Honorable <coughs> Adebe, <coughs> the own revenue that is increasing to 51 million, we have indicated that we made a submission to Treasury to say, Treasury, <coughs> we have had planned that we will increase revenue as public works. But because of the con con COVID-19 impact on the on, on the department that we are not able to work 100% of the time and also to put some of the plans in in, in motion uh, around enhancing the revenue <clears throat> we are going to be adjusting this figure downwards 
But the main ingredients of this figure was one, the disposal of strategic land parcels, where we are going to partner with the, the private sector for them to use some of these uh, dilapidated buildings as well as strategic land parcels towards the benefit of the local economy as well as you know, to the benefit of the department. Either we sell them outrightly or we enter into long-term leases uh, that will generate you know, rental income for, for the department. So I think uh, the MEC is still going to consider our plans around how we are going to ensure that this plan continues even under the COVID environment. And uh, the issue around the adjustments that uh, the CFO was talking about, uh, Honorable Harebe, is that um, it's not necessarily that we are talking about the adjustments now. We are just saying that the original uh, bill that was withdrawn by Treasury is different from this one that we are, we are now submitting as the department in that our expenditure or in fact our budget has been reduced to cater for the COVID-19 expenditure. So it was just the, the re at, you know, uh, the reprioritization of, of, of the budget to account for COVID expenditure. So it followed uh, the normal budget process, hence the bill was withdrawn by Treasury and retabled in, in the House. I will move to Honorable Mirko. Why have we reduced the TRPs by 77 million? The, the, the response to that is that we had to reprioritize this budget towards COVID-19, and it was an instruction from Treasury to say, from your infrastructure budget, cut for COVID-19. And obviously, because we don't have a big infrastructure budget, we had to, to go to TRPs because the, that is the area where we normally budget as the department. And then the issue of the quarantine sites, we have own quarantine sites, such as the ones that I am showing now, where, for example, we have done extensive work in terms of maintenance. But we also have uh, hotels and BNBs that we are, we are using. And uh, we have few that we are going to be assessing next week, where we are also going to add them into the list that we are having. The, 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 the fact is that given the number of infections, that we are encountering as the province. Our facilities that are state-owned are not enough. They don't have enough beds. So we must partner with the private sector. And as indicated, we are going to be signing leases with the new ones that we are going to inspect in the next week. And then we'll also be able to use them so that we don't use, you know, uh, only, you know, few of these BNBs. You must in, we must ensure that uh, the community at large the businesses at large in the free state, they benefit from, from this, uh, you know, uh, quarantine site uh, fund as well. Um, the depth around, uh, you know, what is owed by public works, I will provide it in writing. Uh, but largely what is owed by public works to the municipalities is around the services, uh, which is water, electricity. And it is also not only for the Department of Public Works, it is for all the departments which is inclusive of your hospitals, your clinics, uh, excluding the schools, because the schools are accounted for, you know, by the Department of Education and the schools themselves, because they have their own budget uh, towards, uh, you know, the services that are being provided. Now, um, I'm going to run quickly to the, uh, uh, the chair, uh, Honorable, around the buildings that are sold, the buildings that are rented. Uh, I, I request that I supply this information in writing to say, where are we leasing? How much are we paying? Are we paying on a monthly basis? But the short answer is that we are paying on a monthly basis, but I will provide the detailed report. The, 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 the land and the buildings that we are going to sell, I will also you know, provide that information once it is readily available. At this point, we are looking at various uh, land parcels and dilapidated buildings. And uh, once that process has unfolded, we should be able to share it with the, with the committee. 
Uh, we also confirm that we are in the process of purchasing two uh, houses uh, for the for the MECs, uh, uh, you know, to replace the the or to provide for accommodation in instances where we don't have accommodation. And the MEC has also requested the department to work on a plan that will ensure that all the MPLs are having proper accommodation and it is properly funded uh, in the next financial year. So we are working on that plan and it will also be shared with the members when it is ready. Uh, moving to Honorable uh, Van Furen, we will provide the list of accruals in writing, but the bulk of the accruals is around municipalities. And with regards to Mangaum, I did indicate that I will provide information, but I want to place it on record that we are paying Mangaum the current account every month. This is water, electricity, as well as rates and taxes. Where we have an arrangement with Mangaum is on the arrears. And these arrears have accumulated over a period exceeding four years. So they are not arrears from last year. And then around Philip Sanders, with regards to the, um, to the implementa implementing agent recovery, I am not able to provide information. Uh, the Department of Destia is the custodian of the resort, and they are the ones who are dealing with that matter. So public works is, is, is not involved. The last question uh, is around the, I mean, you know, I, I think I've responded to the issue of the 51 million. I responded to the percentage of compensation of employees, which is 23%. And the question is, why is it one of the highest? Uh, you will recall that uh, public works, we have um, you know, a number of security officials that are appointed, uh, uh, most of which are still on contract, but, but we are migrating them to being full-time, and they are accounted for under public works. I think it's over 400, if my memory, my memory serves me well. But we also have a number of artisans that are employed by the department that are working on maintenance issues in various uh, districts of the province. So we do have uh, quite a, a high number of people that are hands-on in making sure that we deliver services to, to the community. And uh, I think I will pause there, Chairperson, allow Mema Seho to deal with the last questions around EPWP, and we should have responded to all the issues. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, honorable members. Before I deal with the issue of the EPWP, perhaps I must also indicate to the HOD that he forgot that in our executive meetings with regard to compensation of employees, we had initiated a, a, a project as well to indicate the portfolio of client departments projects that we are responsible for so that the link between the internal compensation of employees is also uh, analyzed in the context of what other job do these people do for other department. So because the project budgets for other departments is within us, it gives a distorted picture in terms of our actual compensation of employees. I think uh, HOD will not hammer me for that. Uh, in terms of EPWP, Honorable Chair, it, indeed, there's a huge pressure, especially in the local sphere, and we are, in most of the cases, called in as well to explain the conditions of the program. This happens mainly when the, pro, when the contracts are coming to an end, and we understand this because of desperation. Our people thinking of the small stipend that they end during uh, working in the project and having to go back at home. It's not easy to accept just like that. However, we have done initiatives as well to educate councillors through workshops in the different municipalities on what EPWP is and what it is not. The EPWP objective mainly is to provide poverty and income relief through temporary employment. 
It has never been there to solve the structural nature of unemployment in the country. Where possible, in, especially in the infrastructure project, we invest in training so that at least during participation in the EPWP project, these participants receive a, a formal skill that they'll be able to use beyond participation in the project when it comes to an end. But unfortunately, the objective is not successful, mainly because after the project, even if they have a skill, most of them go back to the situation where they were. Hence, we have this pressure. I want to also share some best practices within the department. You know, planning for absorption is encouraged where we have services that are outsourced to external service providers. But because we also have this pressure from uh, government to say that we are having this problem of unemployment, let's insource. That's when we decide to say, when we stop maybe out outsourcing the service of cleaning, then we can train people to become cleaners. And then the vacancies that are already available on the structure can be reprioritized for those people that we have trained, but not only 100% closing it for them and accommodating other people that can compete for the same job. Uh, it's painful, Chairperson, because even in artisan development, government is investing as a scarce, scarce skill. Uh, we have a lot of e electricians that we have assisted, trade tested, and because they, the economy is not creating jobs, some of them fall within the cracks. They are not able to secure permanent employment. Uh, in conclusion, just to practicalize the, the possibility of absorption, uh, it, it, it is very impractical. In, in the department, the EPWP participants that we have are way above the existing organogram, the structure of the department. So it, all, it already tells you that when we plan the EPWP project, it won't be necessarily possible, but we are agreeing with the honorable member that where possible, programs should be aligned for permanent employment so that at least we can assist people to, be, to have sustainable uh, employment opportunities. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, any follow-up? Honorable Hakam? Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, my follow-up uh, to the HOD relates to the budget um, allocation made for, for the maintenance, for building maintenance. So the response given by the HOD is that the reason why the amount is so low in comparison to everything else, or just on its own, is because the department is responsible for a few buildings, and therefore they don't have to, to do a lot of work. So having that response been afforded to the committee previously in the previous financial year, the same question was posed to the HOD, and the HOD complained to say that their budget is not enough, um, given the number of buildings that they're going to, that they're given the number of buildings that they have to do maintenance. Now this year, they don't have a lot of buildings. When in the previous year the budget that they were given. They couldn't do it project even though to lack of the resolution of the maintenance is not there and we know this we see it as painful. So if the HOD is cognizant and has all years been cognizant of the fact that the amount has been so low, how is he comfortable today to say what a the budget day because ah, in any case, we don't have a lot of building. It disturbs me, Chairperson, or perhaps I did not hear him properly, and if I didn't, then can he clarify what he was trying to say? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair of Chairs. Thank you, Honorable Khaham. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, now that uh, all questions were answered, uh, I have already moved my brother that we consider this uh, budget. Can, can, can that process also be considered? Thank you. Honorable members, can we then move for, and then I will allow the MEC to respond and HOD? 
Thank you. I see you, Honorable Messara. Honorable Messara. Give us a closing remark. No, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, let me respond to the one uh, clarity uh, around the issue of maintenance. Uh, to clarify myself uh, on that matter, that one, we agree that uh, you know the budget is not adequate for maintenance in the province and also the buildings that we are, you know, uh, we are responsible for. Um, so we do condition assessments, you know, annually. And out of that, we just prioritize the most urgent because of budget, budget constraints. Now, I, I'm not uh, necessarily saying that uh, the budget that has been provided is, is, is adequate for our needs, even with a few buildings that we are responsible for. But what I was emphasizing was that had the budget for maintenance of all the provincial assets being you know, reinfenced in public works, the amount could have been bigger. So that is basically what I was trying to say, to say currently you have maintenance budget which is scattered around all the departments. You have a portion of it under health, you have a portion under you know, public works, you have under social development, etc. cetera. But uh, uh, I, I just wanted to correct to say, yes, uh, indeed, we are not saying that we the budget is adequate. Uh, for us, even as a department, we can still do better, provided that Treasury allocates us more. And lastly, just to, to, do, uh, to make a correction to say, on the compensation for employees, I think I gave the percentage before the cut which is 23%. So it was before the cut, but after the cut, it is 28%, which is obviously now above the norm of, uh, of 25%. But obviously, uh, you know, the reason for that is that as the department, we lost a lot of money that went to the Department of Health for COVID. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Yeah, we can't hear you. Honorable Meku, I saw your hand, sorry. Honorable Meku, I saw your hand. Are you fine? Yeah, I was, I was saying that at that time we we're, were not hearing you. Just oh, let's sorry. Appreciate, let's appreciate that the uh, response has uh, been very comprehensive. Um, just a small one, Chair. I did not pick up where the HOD was dealing with the issue of uh, EPWP. Part of my questions, um, Inelore, is the card going to amount to people being released, or is the card going to be a not retake of new people uh, in the future? Uh, I, I think it was it was simply that follow up, Chair.
around the follow-up that he was submitting to the HOD. I will therefore humbly request HOD to clarify Honorable Meku around the question of the EPWP that he put on the table today. Thank you, Chair. Okay, HOD. Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, the, we, we, as, as we had presented, we have two types of projects that are where EPWPs are involved. The one part of it is the greening projects, where we said on those ones, we are going to continue with the EPWPs that are there, and we are not going to reduce. So the status will remain, the numbers will remain. Where we are saying our numbers will be affected is the EPWPs around the TRPs, the Township Revitalization. So this talks to new participants that would have been recruited for the TRPs. So we are not sending anyone home. It's the ones that were plans, planned for the future that uh, we are no longer going to, to realize. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay, thank you very much, HOD. Uh, Amy uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me welcome all the inputs that had been submitted whilst we are presenting the appropriation bill before the committee today. Let me indicate that we are very delighted for, for the input, the progressive inputs from the committee, the submission and the questions that had been forwarded to us as the Department of Public Works. Chairperson, really, uh, like the HOD had indicated earlier on around the budget that will be unfolding during the 2020 and 2021, uh, COVID-19 had hit the department very seriously, especially with the quarantine facilities around refurbishment thereof. My submission to the committee chair will be that uh, when the committee sits maybe with other departments to put emphasis around maintenance of various buildings that belong to different departments. Because maintenance is not solely relying, reliant on the Department of Public Works. Now, most of the budget, when we're refurbishing those facilities, we incurred much cost around such refurbishment. And furthermore, my submission, Chair, will be around the sustainability, the sustainability of our facilities. And again, the revenue uh, income thereof of such facilities, to make an example, the resorts that are within the province, how are we going to generate a, 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 the revenue in assisting our municipalities? And like the HOD had also indicated that, yes, it is a call for concern, Chair, for around question of maintenance. We are sitting here with a historical challenge around maintenance. But we are committing ourselves as the Department of Public Works that we are definitely going to put more effort going forward around maintenance. 
One will set an example, even though it is not on the table, but the HOD had just highlighted on it. The, the, the accommodation of our members of provincial legislatures, of which we are today sitting here with a historical issue, whereby there are challenges. And we are looking forward, Chair, to come up with a plan like the HOD had indicated earlier on, because it is, it is not well for honorable members to be sitting here with challenges of accommodation. And with this words, Chair, I would like, like to thank you as the Chair and the entire members of the committee. Thank you very much. Much. Thank you very much, uh, MAC and the HOD and entire members and officials. Uh, but this issue of EPWP, Honorable MAC, it's also my cry. We need to persuade the other departments that EPWP uh, it can also assist during this time of a pandemic. Uh, I know that you don't have enough budget for on your side. But it's one area of our resolutions as a committee that uh, it needs to be looked into. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, MEC. Honorable members, we may release the MEC. Thank you. Bye bye, MEC. Hello. Chairperson, I, may I please be excused, Chair? Um, for the remainder of the meeting. Thank you. We are left with one department, uh, Department of Human Settlement. We will still have the same MEC. Uh, uh, let's, let's not waste more time. Uh, I don't know you. you it's fine, Honorable Thank you. Honorable members, can we run over this department? You are welcome back again, Honorable MSC. Uh, Honorable Ace Hatebe said this committee is a marathon. So this department is a marathon. <laughs> uh, let's welcome the acting HOD. Uh, Maybe we might, we might, we might, we must, might as well, MEC, if you allow me, just to give us a, a opening remark under this department, uh, and then allow the your acting HOD to then take us through who are the people who are here, and then I will also allow uh, Ramotiva to take them through the ministering of oath and affirmation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, Chair and honorable members that are in the committee. Chair, let me upfront also officially indi indicate to the committee that today I'm sitting here with the acting HOD. Acting HOD uh, advocate Tsepotswait. And let me upfront also report that we all know that the HOD team of Hesi had been suspended. Hence, I am today with the acting HOD advocate, Swait. Chairperson, the purpose of today's meet, uh, our the purpose of today's meeting is around the appropriation bill again on the 2020-2021. And up front, let me also indicate that there are focus points that the department will be embarking on during the budget process. One will be the sites where we'll be installing new infrastructure projects. But Chair, because of the COVID that had hit hard, we are challenged again 
with the incomplete project of infrastructure. It means during this financial year, we'll be undertaking the incomplete uh, infrastructure projects alongside with the new infrastructure projects. Again, another focus point will be around the units. When I talk about the units, Chair, I'm referring to the top structures, whereby there are those that are not yet being completed. And the process will go concurrently on those that are completed, and again, on those that are not yet completed. And also the town planning, upgrading of informal settlement, like we had indicated also to the NCOP that our priority chairperson mm -hmm. is, will be again on the upgrading of informal settlement. The challenge that the committee had been indicating to us previously as a call for concern again around the title deeds. Let me indicate, Chair, that there are backlog on the title deeds, and we are anticipating even this current financial year, the 2021, to make sure that we attend to that backlog of the title deeds alongside with the new title deeds are being reflected on the business plan. And Jefferson, I believe it is quite imperative again to report to the House today that because of the COVID-19, we received a cut of 100 million on the Human Settlement Development Grant and a further 20 million on the title deeds. And it means the department is going to face a serious financial challenges going forward around the projects that we are anticipating to complete during this current, uh, this current financial year, that is the 2020-2021. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, can you take us through the administering the oath and affirmation? Oh, it's Mekoni. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chairperson. Good afternoon, Honorable Members and MEC. Uh, Mekoni just requested to be released quickly, Chair, and then I'll take over from here. Um, Advocate Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Are you going to take an oath or an affirmation? Oath. May you please state your full name? Sepo Tsaedi. Do you swear that what you are going to tell the committee is the truth and nothing else but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you, Advocate Saidi. Are you the only one who will be presenting to the committee? No, ma'am. I'm having Menozi Paul Mudikwe, who is our Chief Financial Officer. Okay. And Ntate Tabiso Makepe, he's our Chief Director, Project Management Unit. Thank you. Ma'am Mudikwe, CFO. Good day, Mayor Connie. May we please see you on your camera? I have just switched it on. Good afternoon, ma'am. Are you going? Thank you. Yes, I can see you. Thank you. Are you going to take an oath and affirmation? I'll take an oath, ma'am. May you please state your full name? Nozipo Mudikwe. Do you swear that what you are going to tell the committee is the truth and nothing else but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you. That did I be so? Yes, ma'am. I'm on the line. Good afternoon, sir. 
Can you Afternoon, please switch on Afternoon. your camera? Oh, yes, Sarah. Sarah, are you going to take an oath or an affirmation? I'll take an oath. May you please state your full name? Tabby Somagate. Do you swear that what you're going to tell the committee is the truth and nothing else but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you, Ndete. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Nekoni. Uh, advocate, acting uh, HOD, you can, you can then give us the, the, I don't know who's going to do the presentation. Is it yourself or you'll then indicate? I'm giving you this platform. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Let me greet the Honorable Chair and members. Uh, Honorable Chair, I will then hand over to the CFO, Memu Dipwe, to assist with the presentation of the department. department. Okay. Thank you. Memu Dipwe. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and good afternoon to all the Honorable Members of the Committee. Um, I am now on slide number two. I'm not too sure if the presentation is projecting. Will you project from your side, Chairperson? We don't see it as yet. Uh, I don't know if uh, are they sharing it with us. IT, can you assist us? I will have to look for it, Chair. Memo Dikwe, didn't you send it to, uh, to, to, to them? You can share I, it with them. I did send the presentation, Chair. Oh, okay. We now have the have it uh, CFO. No, Chairperson, this is not our presentation. Oh, this is public works. Oh, I couldn't see it. It's a wrong one. This one is a public works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. ah, yeah. So when you fall, you are I, I think you can just take us through. I'm sure honorable members, they do have copy, the, copy. the presentation on, on their cell phones. Uh, otherwise, we are going to take another one hour before we get it. I, 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 I don't know if members are fine with that. Uh, I don't know if honorable members are OK. Uh, that's how I see it. Okay, yeah, no, thank you. 
Okay, Chairperson, um, I think in the interest of time, I will get right into the presentation. Please allow me to skip uh, slide number two. It was just the presentation outline of the things that would be yes, This is the presentation. Thank you. Okay. okay. Can I have slide number three be projected? <clears throat> Yes, this is the slide <clears throat> basically that summarizes the overall impact of the budget cut. The impact that the reprioritization of the budget the department has suffered um, is to a tune of 142 million. Um, I'll just then indicate the breakdown in terms of the provincial funding. Uh, the MEC in her opening remarks, she did uh, make a, a high level a comment in terms of what the impact has been. But in terms of the provincial funding, um, we have suffered a loss of um, close to 19 million. And the national funding, uh, we have suffered a loss of um, 123 million. The biggest cut in the department or in terms of the conditional grants is obviously on the title deeds, um, conditional grants like the MEC indicated. Um, the loss thereof is to the tune of 65%, which is equivalent to 22 million. Um, in terms of the main conditional grant of the department, which is the Human Settlements Development Grant, we have suffered a loss of 11%. If the chairperson allows me, I would like to skip uh, the next two slides, which is slide number four and five. These two slides were already presented at our previous um, committee seating. Um, it just indicates the last year's performance as well as this year's allocation of budget. Can we please move to slide number six, which is the depiction of the MTEF per program. The department has a total so, of... Sorry, sorry to interject. Okay. Uh, Let's not mix committees. Uh, maybe you went to your own committee of human settlement. You are now in the committee of finance. Uh, we have never seen the two slides. Can you just reflect on them? I don't know which presentation you are saying you made it from the, the committee. I'm sorry about that. I'm sure you are mixing committees. Okay, Chairperson, we can then move back to slide number four. Sorry about that. We just have to follow, just, uh, yeah. Okay. Slide number four. Slide number four, it is a breakdown of the current year's financial year, which is the 2020-21 appropriation, which I've just alluded to in the previous slide. And then on the right-hand side, it is the financial year 2019-20 budget performance in terms of how the department um, had performed in the previous financial year. We can see in terms of the programs, I've already indicated that we have a total of four programs in the department. Um, program one had slightly over spent its budget by 3%. This was um, due to the over expenditure on the compensation budget. And then program two um, against a budget allocation of 18.7 million um, as at the end of the financial year, there was also a slight over expenditure, which is also as a result of the compensation of employees. The overall budget um, performance of the department without necessarily going through each program, we managed to achieve a 96% performance against that which was allocated in the department um, amounting to 1.3 billion. That was the adjusted allocation for that financial year. And then the, the next slide, it is um, the same information, but it is now depicted in terms of the expenditure per economic classification. I am now on slide number five. If you could please move the slide. Yes. Um, this information just also um, relates to mostly the 2019-20 financial year. Um, as I've already indicated in the previous slide, um, the compensation line item, um, it depicts an, over, an overall ex, over expenditure in the department of 6.7 million. Um, goods and services, we achieved 65%. Transfers and subsidies, 
subsidies, which is the allocation of the Human Settlements Conditional Grant. We had spent 98% of the conditional grant. And lastly, um, the classification of machinery and equipment, we had achieved a 87% performance. I'm now moving to slide number six, which is um, 2020 21 MTEF pay program. And um, we can see um, honorable members on program three, which is the main program of the department. It constitutes 86% of the entire allocation. Uh, this is the program where all the, the projects um, are implemented such as your, your BNGs, which are your actual houses, your CRUs, uh, which is your community residential units, uh, programs such as FLISP and so on and so forth. So this is just the depiction in terms of the allocation per program. I'm moving on now to the classification. Um, let me not even spend time on it. This is just a, a repetition of what I've already said from slide number one but it's just the information on the economic classification. I am now moving on to the main conditional grant of the department, which is slide number eight. Um, in slide number nine, we are giving a, a breakdown in terms of how the expenditure is going to unfold from the national HSDG allocation, from the normal project allocation, we are gonna be spending 368 million and um, UA, UISP component, which is the informal settlements allocation, we have set aside 262 million and 219 million of that amount will go to the mining town component. Okay, so I want to move the slide. Okay, now also in the opening remarks of the MEC, she did allude to the, the main focus of the department being the installation of the infrastructure. We have that item um, indicated there as site. The department is expected to deliver um, 2,578 sites um, to the tune of, of 196 million. Um, and then an amount of 2,581 top structures, which is the formal um, BNG houses. Um, the department has set aside 405 million. And then lastly, the portion of the title deeds, which had the most significant budget cut. Um, we are anticipating that the department will be able to deliver 5,330 title deeds to the tune of um, 6.7 million. And then following that, it's just the breakdown on how other line items within the, the business plan will be spent. I will not go into line by line. So we move on to slide number 10. Slide number 10 is just a, a presentation of the information that which I have already presented on the previous page. We are giving um, the delivered the delivery targets per district. Uh, this information is presented in a graph format. Um, we can see the first district there uh, being Fezalet Dabi has been, or will get 16% of the pie. And um, Lejuele Butwa is the district that gets the highest cut in terms of the allocation, followed by Mangawun closely with the 24% allocation. And then second last, it is um, the district of Tabung Pusanyana um, has been allocated um, 127 million. And then lastly, um, Harib district uh, gets to get 6% of the entire allocation. The next page is just also a geographic split in terms of the information. Um, some people tend to remember when they see pictures. So the information is basically still the same. We are now moving to slide number 12, which will indicate the projects which have been reprioritized to accommodate the reduction of budgets. I am now on slide 13. 
I will definitely not be going into each and every single project. I uh, would request that if there are any questions um, on specific projects, then the members can ask the questions. But this is a complete list of the projects that have been affected by the the budget reprioritization. We have indicated in each slide the original budget allocation as well as the adjustment and by how much the project has been um, reduced by. And then uh, the list of projects then takes us to slide number 19, which is obviously a summation of um, the previous slides. Um, yeah. This is the end of my presentation, uh, Honorable Chair. I thank you. Thank you, uh, CFO. Uh, honorable members. Honorable members, presentation. Any questions seeking clarity? Sure. Uh, it's Honorable Majake. It's Honorable Van Fieren. And myself, uh, Chair. It's Honorable Booty, Chair of Chairs, and then it's Honorable Khatebe. Those are the hands I've noted. Thank you. Honorable. Uh, sorry, sorry. After Honorable uh, Van Fieren, I, I saw Metlene Hans. Sorry, uh, she has firstly raised her hand. Honorable Majake, Honorable Van Fieren, Honorable Metlene Hans. Myself, Honorable Chair of Chairs, and then Honorable Chair, and Honorable Mesara. Thank you. In that the order. Slide, sir. The slide in front of me. <laughs> Honorable Majake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will avoid. Uh, I will avoid to get in figures and all of that. Not because I'm tired, but because uh, from where I'm sitting, there are two tony issues on my flesh, which I think uh, this budget could have gone a long way to to address. Uh, and I'm not uh, naive to the fact that we're in COVID. Uh, Thank you. Uh, first one on project. I just want to ask a simple question to the department. When last time uh, did the department build houses in Free State? When last time? And where? How many houses? Secondly, Chair, uh, on the project, uh, unfinished houses, how many are they, when, when is the, uh, uh, when, when are you contemplating to finish them, those unfinished houses, how many are they, when are you intending to finish them? At what cost? At what cost? What is the way forward uh, or the plan to ensure that at least our people have their have hoops on their head, particularly in this period of COVID-19 and all of that? So if those, answer, if those questions can be answered in terms of the project. I'm going to sum up issues. Secondly, on am take my last issue and then I stop off. I will avoid figures by all means necessary. Is it not a, is it not about time that the department in consultation with the municipalities rezone, rezone all, rezone all informal settlement in our townships, so that uh, uh, going forward, our people, our people will be able to be housed and all of that. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Honorable Van Fieren. 
Thank you, Chair, and uh, let me welcome the presentation to HAD. Chair, just a couple of questions. The first one will be on the 190 million that was surrendered back to National Treasury due to the underspending of that grant. How does that, obviously those, that project already started um, and some of the houses was built. I apologize for the dog barking at the back. But I, uh, um, this project was already started. So how does that impact? on this current budget. So obviously it had to be incorporated. So, so this, this project has to be fin finished. How does that impact, impact now? Then Chair, on the title deed grant, the reduction of that. The problem is that the department already had a huge backlog on this. So now National Treasury came and they reduced this grant. And, and this is an unbelievable important grant to people, especially people that hasn't had the opportunity to own a piece of property, to get the dignity, to actually go and get a bond on the property and get some your hands on, on uh, part of the economy, to say that in that way. But the problem is they lost this because they didn't spend the money. They didn't transfer these properties. And that's negligent from my side, on the side of the department. Then, Chair, on slide four, if they can please explain to me the housing assets, the 204 variants, or is it overspending, if I read it correctly? Why, did, why is there 204% there? And then on slide nine, the professional fee, service uh, fees. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a huge amount. I think it's 199 million rand, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if we can get a breakdown of that, why, why is it so high? If you, if you look at that, that breakdown that they gave us there, it's a huge amount of money that's spent on professional fees. Um, and why is that so high? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, it's Honorable Chair of Chairs. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, uh, MEC, once again, and uh, acting HOD and the CFO for a, a very nice presentation. You know, this is one difficult department because of the uh, a poor poor performance for a number of consecutive years. But with this budget that has been presented now. I think they are giving us a, a very good signal. Uh, probably we should hope for the best. Now, Chairperson, on goods and services, <clears throat> uh, the department's uh, actual was uh, 71 million rands. And uh, your budget allocation for this economic classification is 53 million. So what was the greatest contributor to this reduction? And uh, above that, Chairperson, uh, I think I'm, 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 I'm happy with, uh, with the budget. Uh, we know the circumstances under which the department is operating. So we are hoping that uh, maybe things will change for better. Uh, if it was according to my will, uh, this young man, this young acting HOD, it should just be given the reins to, to bring life to this department. We need energy now. We need a, a clear focus now. Uh, thanks very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Chair of Chairs, Honorable Khatebe, and then Honorable Mesa Rambeleki after. Honorable Khatebe. Now, uh, thank you, Chair. Let me also welcome a, a, a sweet and short presentation, but loaded. I think uh, if uh, even the, the presentation that preceded this one could have taken this approach, I think we could have long been uh, home. Uh, uh, but you are home, Moses. 
not I'm not home, uh, uh, Chair. <laughs> I'm not home. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, don't expose him, Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a no, 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 thanks, Chair. Uh, two questions on an on slide four, you showed us your current actuals. How much in commitment is there per program as at the year end? Uh, you were underspending on all your economic classification, except for compensation of employees. Why was there overspending on this specific one? Are there positions in your structure that are not funded? Uh, Chair, uh, I'll pause there. But uh, uh, really, generally, uh, I, I, I accept the presentation. I would also urge every member to, to actually go along with this sentiment. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Khatebe. Uh, it will be Honorable Mesara, and then I've seen the hand of Honorable Meku. He will close. Chairperson, I want to the MEC for the second time as she, as she occupied uh, two departments and uh, also I want to welcome the new acting MM and wish uh, him the best uh, on his new uh, job. Chairperson, the issue of the title deeds is going to be a serious issue to our community members. But that, I think it is still more the responsibility of public because not the, the grant is still more the, 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 the Department of Culture. I think must work together with the municipalities to, to assist and to, to make sure the municipalities, the, the budget also for the future I remember when this, uh, uh, the, the presentation was done in Bufontaine, uh, Bufontaine Hotel. We, they said we have only one surveyor in the free state, one. And one surveyor cannot uh, uh, assist all municipalities at once. It will take time. It's not uh, like we, we have two or three surveyors who can assist with the, with the issue of the title So I think that the National Department did not uh, think about that, although they have taken the grant away from the department. So I, I think uh, the quarter, Jefferson, must assist the municipalities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mesara. So my apology, I, I raised my hand so late. I didn't see that uh, I'm giving a question uh, for the department. I was not going to talk at all. Uh, the question says that uh, kindly assist the committee to understand what is the first state government spending on demolition and construction of two roomed houses, uh, as well as the fact that are we going to demolish the existing ones and rebuild? Or what if we are going to demolish and rebuild? Has the department held anyone responsible, including going to court to recoup their funds for such poor quality of houses? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, may, maybe I must just uh, ask just one question. In fact, in fact, um, I want to emphasize an echo on what the uh, Honorable Van Firen has said. Maybe you will pardon us, uh, 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 advocate the acting HOD, uh, because now we, we are being taught that when you are being deployed to any work, you then inherit all the problems of that department. Uh, it is unfortunate that uh, we will have to ask you these heavy questions. I am not, I am not, I'm one, I'm one person who is not happy on how the province of the free state have been spending the conditional grants. 
over all the departments, honorable MEC. It's not only your department. We are too and my worry, we can't blame the political leadership. We must blame the leadership of administration. For an example, what Honorable Pantura is saying is very true. For the people of Free State who are poor and poorer and don't even have title deep, what are we saying? What message are we have decided to discontinue this type of deep condition. Who, who are the officials of human settlement who are carrying out this process of we can't be blaming HOD. It's fine that the HOD is the accounting officer in terms of the PMFMA. But what is happening with the second commanding chain in within the department? What is the role of the CFO there? What is the role of other chief directors who have been playing a role of not using this conditional grant? Because how are we going to make sure that our people get this title deed when we are no more going to have money to pay the conveyances? Because well, this grant was actually helping the departments to pay conveyances and other related work of giving out those title deeds. Now, I want to know, HOD, have the consequence management been implemented to those people who have made sure that we, as the free state people, we are now suffering because of their lack and lack of commitment to do their work. As a committee, we are going to follow up on this matter. We are not going to leave this matter unattended to. We want to know from the HOD to the CFO to whoever is the chief director responsible to deal with the issues of the process of title deeds. If we can't allow it, we, we are being get the other national departments on how we are conducting our work. It can be. Not all of us, we are leaders who don't understand. We do understand what is happening, and it is unfortunate that the MECs are now taking over departments that have all the years been having this challenge. But we can't be blaming politicians every day. So this is an embarrassment in, in, a, in, a, in a small way. We can't allow it. Uh, I don't want to talk about other conditional grants. Members have spoken to them. But because I know in my area where I come from, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a child of Kwakwa, uh, and I'm proud of the community of Freestarter. People of Brugambush are still crying even today. But what will Brugambush, Kadi Elenga Mane, they have been staying in those loan houses for more than 20 years without title deeds. Now, today, we must then be able, MEC, allow this matter not to be attended to. We need answers, even if it's not now. We are going to come there as a department to do our oversight. We are actually going to ensure, through our own mechanism of oversight, we investigate further to get the result of consequence. Who is responsible? Gone are those days where we leave out officials to do as they wish because they know that no one can do anything. We are a finance committee. We are protected by the constitution of the country and we are going to enforce management one way or the other so that people must account in doing their work. So I, I want to emphasize that one, Honorable MEC, even if we don't answer it today. Program three, that the CEO has related to, lastly, she talks about the issue of fleece. I'm very disappointed myself. It was a book initiative that was introduced by the then premier, who said, 
le batho ba sna mogone go ba ka thola di loan banking they must be able to be assisted through this list program which the department has failed the people of the free state decimally even today we you can check all the people ba sa khone ba kholang less salaries manana ba sebeletsa government we have not received a report that is convincing whether this is is or not and who is this individual who is so powerful that even the hod to not allow this program to affect our people of free state who is this person who has been dealing with this program we want to know and why this program has not been affecting our people but we are not today banze ba batla di rdp houses in ba sebeletsa muso ka ba kala ba kgone ho thola di loan from the bank as cited from my side honorable chairperson thank you thank you sipo uh members may i give over to the mc Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, it was not an easy road today, especially in human settlement. But let me once again acknowledge the questions and the inputs that had been submitted by honorable members. Chairperson all the submission that you submitted i think th this means this shows that it's a collective effort in ensuring that the department render the mandate that is bestowed upon it and that mandate is services to the poorest of the poor mm -hmm. and one will not shy away from the fact that the department had faced most of the challenges and those are historical challenges and i will align myself with what uh, honorable clean hands had just had in alluded to with regard to question of the title deeds and the department had come up with a different approach in ensuring that it gives the it gives the beneficiaries the title deeds accordingly and i will set an example initially what was happening in human settlement the department was waiting first to build the houses then the processes of title deeds will follow up and it will take some time and when you go there you will find that the beneficiary had passed on then it becomes a dispute within the families because the deceased will find that the deceased had not registered the dependents uh, on the register at the municipality now that was the challenge of the human settlement chairperson let me indicate to the committee that a title deed is not around a house once you own a land it means you must have a a a, a title deed but following that the process thereof should be the building of top structures in that particular land that has services it means it must be infrastructure you need to install infrastructure when we are done we must go to the national housing needs register and those beneficiaries should appear in the now uh, housing needs register then the process should go concurrently immediately when we advertise for the houses it means the beneficiaries that are residing there even if we have not yet built the houses it means they need to have their title deeds 
to not to have this dispute that the department had incurred for some years. And it affects honorable cleaners and honorable members that uh, the route that we took initially, this is how we it, it was not how we we're supposed to take that particular route. And furthermore, the, the weakness of the department, you ask a valid and genuine question, who is responsible solemnly in the department around the title deeds? And during this current financial year, the 2020-2021, the department had committed to appoint a specific convenience who will specifically focus on the title deeds only for us to report accordingly. Let me set an example, a practical example. We have just tabulated our budget around the infrastructure that is going to be installed. It means we must start now. We must not wait, uh, but working hand in hand with the municipalities. Mm -hmm. the, the challenge that the department is sitting with, it is around the dispute, like I had indicated. And the department didn't have that mandate around the litigation. Now, we had been granted that permission for our conveniences around litigations to go to, to court. And I can assure you, Chairperson, that I can even submit a proof of evidence where we called all the conveniences of our department that had been appointed to establish again a steering committee that will work hand in hand with the department in ensuring that we attend to the issue of the title deeds. It's a call for concern, even to myself as the, as the uh, MC. You raised a valid question alongside with honorable members around the top structures, the BNG houses or the houses that had been built. Let me also indicate that it is not only the BNG houses. We're having different types of houses that the department must commit itself to. To set an example, your, your CR, CR, CRU, the social housing units, because our people on the ground, they vary according to their needs. Now, it is upon us as the department to submit to the committee the progress report from 2019-2020. The progress made, hence you are questioning the acting HOD that no, don't go there. It's upon us to give you the progress report with regard to the units that we had uh, uh, commented ourselves during the 2019-2020, during our inception, even though we were deployed very late in May, August, uh, Chairperson, then we'll submit a comprehensive report thereof. But again, the approach, like I had indicated, that we need to appoint a conveyancer that will deal with the matter of the title deeds, a team of conveyances, steering committee thereof. And furthermore, Chair, when we dish out the, the title deeds, I remember Honorable Saramale Lake once said to us that when we dish out the title deeds, let us not do it alone as the department. We must also involve you, the, the, the portfolio committee of human settlement. And I'm submitting that we are definitely going to commit ourselves around that matter. Whenever we dish out the title deeds, we must invite our honorable members to can be part of us. And Chairperson sitting here as the MEC, I fully uh, welcome the submission. It is the input genuine and valid uh, input. Let me set an example around in the spending. Uh, Honorable Van Friend asked a question. He asked us that we forfeited some money 
close to 108 million, of which it's a fact. And it's upon this department again that immediately when we had passed our budget, you must start now. You must not start late in appointing the contractors to start with the projects because there are climate, there are weather conditions that might uh, uh, delay the process a lot. In summer, it's raining. Now, if we don't start now as a department, we are not going to achieve our targets. But I am committed to this department that we are going to try our level best in ensuring that we take this department to another level. You asked again a genuine question around the title that's in work. Oh, what is happening in work? Whereby, especially in the rural area, I think we need to give you a proper, detailed, comprehensive report around the challenges that the department is, face, is facing with. Because when we submit to you, you'll be able again to can advise us from your side that let us take this route because at the end of the day, it is our mandate, a collective mandate, to give the services to the poorest of the poor. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything, Chairperson, including honorable members. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable MEC. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable MEC. Uh, HOD Advocate, welcome uh, to the tough times. Uh, where you are there, it's not going to be easy. And I hope that uh, the criticisms of today must build you as a young man like me. Uh, you must never tire my brother. This is part of working for the society. It's not going to be easy. You are not going to be loved by everyone in that department. And uh, that's what you must prepare yourself for. And we wish you all the best. And now that is why personally I felt that I might be able to stop you because you are very close to my heart and I don't want to see you losing the integrity at an early stage. We still need you and we wish you all the best. It's not an easy department, but I know with the experience you have and the vigor and the militancy you have in, in trying to work, you will keep it that way. Uh, all of the best. And I also Thank just you. like to... Honorable members, any follow-up? Sure. Sure. Oh, Honorable Majake. Sure. Uh... Unlike, unlike, thanks again, Chair. Unlike the previous uh, department, when we started this process, where I will either know or decide to, to keep quiet. With this department, I want to express outrightly my rejection of not supporting this budget. And I'm sure it's the only department that will change the world in a minute. It's because if we can't do more or anything in agriculture, like the debate we had in the, during the day, and if we can't do anything or more in this year like we did as you in previous days, at least if there is one thing that can, we can give our people as dignity, it's a roof, it's a roof on their top, on top of their head, it's a roof on top of their head. And we can't fail on that one. If we, if we have failed on the two others, we can't fail on this one. And the uh, first thing standing now, I can see is uh, we're not going to win it. With that 180 that we lost the other time, we're still going to, to lose another one uh, in a manner and fashion and the pace we are moving. So I said, you know, I, 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 I don't want to be able to do not noting it, I, I don't keep quiet, I just forget it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Jackie. Honorable Messer, you want to come in? Yes, Chair President. Yes, Mama. If you allow me, yes, Chair President. Yes, Mama. Now I say we don't have a view that the department is uh, experienced and uh, I think they would work for uh, uh, everything should be fine. And uh, because it's a, a 
budget of the department. We must support the budget to go through uh, so that they can be able to change wherever they, uh, where they want to change uh, the things in the department. I thank you very much. It's hard, thank but you. we will try. They will try, definitely they will try. Thank you, Honorable Besara. Honorable members, can you allow that I close? Thank you. Uh, I would like to remind you. I would like to remind you uh, before I extend my thanks, uh, honorable members, to your good self that we will be having the our next meeting on the 21st of July, remember, uh, at 9 o'clock to consider the draft report of the Division of the Revenue Amendment Bill. And possibly if we had received the minutes of the select committee, I'm sure uh, uh, on appropriation, I'm sure we will we'll definitely deal with them. And to check whether our negotiating mandate of the province have been captured correctly. It's important, honorable members, that our, our, our negotiating mandate are captured. And further, uh, I would like to, in fact, we, will, we must also consider the responses, I think, from the National Treasure. We must, we must not forget that one. And then after, we must confer the voting mandate in the House, uh, sitting scheduled for 10 o'clock. I think it is on the 21st, if I'm not mistaken. So finally, let me thank uh, the Honorable MEC, uh, members of the committee, all members of the parliament who are here, the provincial treasurer. Thank you very much, Kunta Telebogone, Kunta Stephen, for being with us. Not forgetting the Auditor General, Matthew Yashi has been with us through thick and thin. She has been here, committed. Kunta uh, Telebogone, thank you very much. We are humbled by your presence. Uh, and it's important that all that we are, we are raising here, we must note that Stephen, thank you. Uh, uh, and everybody who has been here, the support that we are getting from our legal service, Mepiseleto, Mekoni, the researchers, we do have very active researchers in our committee, Bum Mekoni, Bum Thank you very much, and Tate, Godfather, the committee coordinators, thank you very much for the hard work. I know it's not easy. Uh, I'm, I'm so humbled by everybody. MEC, thank you very much. It's not easy to run the two departments. Uh, I know it's not easy, but you, you, are, you are trying your level best. Siabonga. Uh, Everybody whom I did not recognize, Godfather, I didn't recognize you. Wonder the Tabo for us coming from IT. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 and everybody, uh, I think Bobongani, uh, we all love you. Uh, please take care of yourself. Corona is a vibe out there. I've lost two people who are very close to my heart today due to Corona. So I. I'm not well where I am sitting uh, because while I was having this meeting, I've received just two uh, uh, messages that uh, we have lost with them due to difficulties of grieving and what not. So please take care of yourselves. Uh, this thing is serious. We need to pray for it more than anything else. Let's join hands together in our different corners and, and always try to call from heaven uh, the help that God must at least assist us. So, uh, thank you very much, Vale uh, Morgan, the MEC. God bless you and your team. Thank you. Honorable members, Mesara, Ukhana, Anke Moum, Date, Khate, Kibono, Moskha, Kibono, Lambe, Kibono, Khate, Moskha, Pito, Gente, Lamba, En, Chamo, Udwale, Hapo, Nau, Yale, Bajel, Lahane, Father, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>